Hello and welcome back to Koala Moon, a podcast of original children's bedtime stories and meditations designed to make bedtime a dream. Now, this episode is extra long, so you can listen to it the whole night through or on a car journey or aeroplane. Wherever you are, you can have Hector and Sunny there with you. So snuggle down in your beds, and without further ado, let's begin as Hector and Sonny meet Sydney the Squirrel for the very first time. Chapter One Hector and Sonny in Dreamland On a warm morning in June, A smiling golden retriever by the name of Hector jogged into the local park with his owner. Being a very friendly dog, Hector said hello to every single dog he met along his journey. The park was busy that day, and there were a lot of dogs to say hello to. Hector didn't mind at all, and his tail wagged non-stop as he joyfully greeted every dog like a friend. But even as he said hello to the dogs, he kept looking left and right across the park. He was searching for his best friend, Sunny. She came to the park every day just like he did. So where was she? She must be here somewhere. Uh Aha, there she was. A beautiful cocker spaniel with golden brown fur and blue eyes the color of the sky trotted towards Hector and barked out a happy hello. The dogs were thrilled to see each other and wagged their tails in delight. The dog owners said hello to each other and then took their dogs over to a bench at the side of the path. The owners sat down and let the dogs off their leads. Hector and Sonny raced off across the field. They looked back now and again to make sure their owners were okay without them. The two dogs loved running around the park together. They loved the feel of the grass beneath their paws and the wind rushing through their fur. They adored joining in with people who were playing games, such as football and frisbee. When Hector had been a puppy, he'd discovered he was particularly good at football and was brilliant at kicking the ball as far away as he could, sometimes into trees. Sunny was good at football too, but she was better at frisbee and loved jumping up high and catching a flying frisbee in her mouth. Once she caught it, she would run around the playing field as fast as she could before hiding the frisbee under a bush or under a bench. It was great fun. Of all the super things to do at the park, the dogs loved, just loved, chasing squirrels. The squirrels loved it too, and would often wave at Hector and Sonny before scampering away expecting the dogs to chase after them. It was the best game of all. That morning, as the two dogs ran around the playing field, they looked out for squirrels to chase. Hector spotted one and pointed it out to Sonny. Sonny frowned and said, That squirrel looks different to the other ones. He's got silver fur. Hector didn't care what colour fur the squirrel had. All he wanted to do was chase it. He set off running after the silver squirrel. The squirrel smiled at Hector and sprinted towards a large tree. Sunny ran after Hector and soon caught up with him. The squirrel looked over his shoulder and gave them a cheeky smile. You're never going to catch me, he said. We will, Hector called out. He sped up. So did Sonny. The two dogs were so busy chasing after the silver squirrel that they didn't notice they were getting closer and closer to the large tree ahead of them. Until it was too late. Sonny spotted the tree first. Hector, look out for the tree. The dogs were going too fast to slow down. They reached the tree and went right through it. Hector 
and Sunny entered a different world. A world full of magic and wonder. Hector didn't notice at first because he was too busy looking for the cheeky silver squirrel. Where did you go? Hector asked Sonny. That squirrel must be here somewhere. Sonny wasn't listening. She was staring at the scene in front of them. Hector, look. Look at what? Hector asked. He saw Sonny looking at something ahead of them. He looked too. He said, Sonny, where have all these animals come from? And what are they doing in our park? Have they been in the park all this time and we haven't noticed them before? Sonny shook her head. They've never been here before. She pointed to a group of grey elephants nearby, who were squirting water at each other and laughing. I would have noticed those elephants before. They're enormous. And look, over there, there's a couple of lions playing tennis. Hmm. I didn't even know lions could play tennis, but I have only ever seen them on the television, so I'm not an expert on lions. Hector didn't know what to make of it all. It's like we're in a totally different park. You are, said a voice behind them. The dogs turned around and saw the silver squirrel standing there. He waved at them and said, Hi, welcome to Dreamland. The dogs gave him confused looks. The squirrel continued talking. Let me explain. First of all, my name is Sydney, and it's a pleasure to meet you two. I've seen you in the park many times, but I don't think you've noticed me before. Hector said they hadn't seen Sydney before, because he would have remembered him. Hector remembered all the squirrels he chased. Sydney said... I've heard your owners call out your names, Hector and Sonny. Is that right? It is, Sonny replied. Please tell us about Dreamland and how we got here. Sydney explained the dogs had run through a magical tree that led to Dreamland. The tree had always been in the park, but the dogs had never run into it before. The squirrel knew they'd like Dreamland, so he made sure they chased him towards the enchanted tree. He said, This place is where animals live out their dreams. Animals get to this place in many ways, and for you too, it was that tree in the park. Dreamland is full of magic, and anything you dream about can come true here. Anything? Hector asked. Sydney said, Yes, anything. What do you dream about, Hector? Hector sat down, and a faraway expression came into his eyes. I dream about huge puddles made of gravy. Lots of puddles and lots of gravy. I put my face in the puddles and drink it all up. Yum, yum. He licked his lips and smiled. Sydney asked Sonny what she dreamed about. Lots of things. I dream about collecting sticks and making a really big house out of them. And inside the house, the furniture is made of sticks too. I dream about running round and round in circles and never running out of energy. But my best dream is about an adventure course for dogs I went on once with my owner. There were seesaws and climbing frames, tunnels to run through and big tyres to jump in and out of. Oh, I dream about that a lot. <sighs> she sighed and smiled. Sydney nodded and said those were wonderful dreams and they could happen for the dogs in the magic park. 
all the dogs had to do was believe in their dreams and then look out for them in the park. Hector was only half listening to Sydney because he was thinking about chasing squirrels again. He thought about chasing squirrels a lot. Hector asked Sydney if there were other squirrels in the magic park. There are, Sydney said, and they love being chased by dogs. If you look over there, you'll see some squirrels wearing racing shoes. They're warming up and getting ready to run around the park. If you ask them nicely, they'll let you chase after them. Hector couldn't believe his luck and wondered if he was actually having a dream right there and now. Sydney smiled at him. I know what you're thinking, Hector. Nope, you're not asleep. This is all real. It was lovely to meet you both, but I have somewhere to go, so I'll be off now. Why don't you explore the park and talk to some of the other animals? And don't forget to look out for your dreams. Sunny asked if their owners would be okay in the other park without them. Sydney explained time had frozen in the other park and their owners would still be in the same place when the dogs returned. How do we get back to the other park? Sunny asked. The silver squirrel told them to bark three times and they would return immediately. He said goodbye and scampered away. Sonny sat next to Hector and asked him what they should do first. Should they talk to the other animals or start searching for their dreams? We should say hello to everyone, Hector replied. That's the polite thing to do. I always say hello to everyone I meet. Sonny nodded and said that was a good idea. The two dogs stood up and began to explore dreamland. They walked towards a group of pink flamingos who were standing in a circle next to a tree. The birds were wearing silver trousers and shirts covered in rainbow-coloured sequins. They were standing as still as statues and looked like they were waiting for something to happen. Hector and Sonny said hello to the colourful flamingos and asked what they were doing. The nearest flamingo explained, We're waiting for the disco music to begin. We flamingos love nothing better than dancing to disco tunes. We dream about it every night. When we found out about dreamland and how to get here, we all decided our dream would be to disco dance all day and all night. And once the music begins, we're going to start moving. Sunny looked around and asked where the music would come from. The tree, of course. The flamingo replied. She's going to start singing to us soon. You can join in with our dancing if you want to. Hector and Sunny had never danced with flamingos before, and they'd never heard a tree sing. So they decided to stay with the birds to see what would happen next. A second later, the tree began to sing. It was a joyful song, and as soon as the flamingos heard it, they began to boogie and bop to the beat. The leaves on the tree swished back and forth, creating a happy rhythm to accompany the tree's words. Hector and Sonny couldn't help but join in with the dancing. 
They twirled and whirled in and out of the pink birds and around the singing tree. It was tremendous fun. The dogs danced for two more songs and then decided to move on and meet some more animals. They said goodbye to the flamingos and went on their way. They soon came to an ice skating rink that was in the shape of a star. Penguins dressed in woolly scarves, hats and mittens were skating easily across the ice. The dogs said hello to the happy penguins. They didn't ask what their dream was, because the smiles on the penguins' faces clearly meant they were having a marvellous time on the ice and living out their dreams. A couple of penguins skated over to the dogs and asked if they wanted to join them on the ice. Hector and Sonny said yes, but they weren't sure their paws would be okay on the frozen water. The penguins pointed to something behind the dogs. Hector and Sonny looked over their shoulders and saw some ice skating boots on the grass. The boots hadn't been there a second ago, and it seemed they had appeared like magic. The boots looked the perfect size for the dogs. With a bit of help from the penguins, the boots were placed on the dogs' feet, and then off they went, skating across the ice. Hector and Sonny were a bit wobbly at first, but the kind penguins helped them, and soon... The happy dogs were skating easily around the rink. They even managed to perform pirouettes. After a while, the dogs decided to explore the magical park further. They said goodbye to the penguins and stepped off the ice and onto the grass. Their ice skating boots magically disappeared and the dogs wiggled their toes into the soft grass. Hector and Sonny continued exploring. Hector sniffed the air and said, I think I can smell gravy. Can you smell it, Sonny? Sonny had a good sniff, but said she couldn't smell any gravy. The dogs came upon something very peculiar next. There was a huge bouncy castle, right in the middle of a playing field. Cheerful shouts and laughter came from inside it. Hector and Sonny walked closer to the inflatable castle. They looked inside it and saw lots of chuckling kangaroos bouncing merrily. Some kangaroos were even leaping into the air and then turning somersaults. The dogs said hello to the kangaroos. The nearest kangaroos waved and invited the dogs in. Hector and Sonny didn't hesitate to join them. They leapt into the castle and began to bounce up and down. It was so much fun that the dogs laughed with joy. Hector and Sonny absolutely loved the bouncy castle and would have stayed there a lot longer. But Hector caught a whiff of gravy again and told Sonny he had to find out where it was coming from. You can stay here, Sonny. I don't want to spoil your fun. Sonny said, I always have the best fun when I'm with you, Hector. Let's go and find the gravy together. Hector and Sonny waved goodbye to the kangaroos and jumped off the bouncy castle. 
using his amazing sense of smell. Hector lifted his nose and followed the delicious scent across the field. Sonny was right behind him. They soon came to something so spectacular it made the dog sit down in surprise. They could not believe what was in front of them. Hector could hardly speak. His voice was a whisper as he said, Sonny, does that look like a stream made out of gravy to you? Sonny nodded. The dog slowly stood up and moved closer to the glorious golden brown water that flowed slowly in front of them. The mouth-watering scent of gravy drifted towards them, making their mouths water. Hector dipped his toes into the stream. It was pleasantly warm. He lowered his head and stuck his tongue into the liquid. It was gravy. Thick, delicious gravy. He smiled happily. His dream had come true. Sonny took a sip of the gravy too. Yum! This is the best gravy I've ever tasted. Hector, I know you love running through puddles. This stream isn't deep at all. Do you want to run through it? Hector nodded happily. And then in a flash, he jumped into the gravy stream. He ran up and down the stream and covered himself in the delicious gravy. Every now and then, he would lick some off his paws. It was scrumptious. Sunny stayed at the side of the stream and watched her friend. Seeing how happy he was filled her heart with love and she forgot about her own dream. But Hector hadn't forgotten about Sonny's dream. As he was running through the gravy stream for the tenth time, he looked over at Sonny and noticed something had magically appeared behind her. He took one last drink of the delicious liquid and then jumped out of the stream. He gave himself a good shake and sent gravy droplets flying through the air. Hector jogged over to Sonny and told her to turn around. Sonny did so. Her mouth fell open in astonishment. Before them, stood an amazing adventure course. Everything had been painted in bright colours and each item was covered in glimmering gold glitter. The adventure course was more magnificent than Sunny had ever dreamed about. Hector and Sunny walked towards the course and stopped at a red seesaw. Hector stood to one side and told Sonny to go on it first. Sonny placed her paw on the seesaw and grinned. Up she went, and then down she went. It was such great fun that she went on it five more times. Sonny ran on to the next part of the course. Hector ran up and down the seesaw and followed his friend. They ran through a green tunnel made of wood, their paws trip-trapped over its surface like a drumbeat. 
They jumped over a purple fence with ease and grace. They leapt in and out of large orange tyres, laughing cheerfully as they went. The dogs jumped through sparkling blue hoops and launched themselves over walls made of pink bricks. Just for the fun of it, Sunny ran round and round in circles until she fell to the grass in pure happiness. The friends played on the adventure course for a while longer, having the time of their lives. Just when they thought they couldn't have been any happier, a huge pile of twigs, sticks and branches magically appeared at the side of the gravy stream. They had a wonderful time moving the pile from one side of the stream to the other. It was very satisfying. Before long, the dogs began to feel tired. Hector yawned first, and then Sunny yawned. They decided they should head back to their owners soon, but they didn't want to leave the magic park just yet. They wanted to see more animals before they went back. They left the gravy stream and the adventure course behind. They had a feeling they'd be able to return to them again one day. The sky was turning darker and the sun dipped towards the horizon. It was getting late. Hector and Sonny walked on and came to a couple of llamas who were wearing fleecy pyjamas. The llamas yawned loudly and so did the dogs. Hector asked what the llamas had been doing that day in the park. Lots of things, the smaller of the llamas said. Playing and singing, jumping and dancing. But now we're ready for bed. I love getting into my cosy warm bed and going to sleep. It's my favourite thing to do. I love sleeping so much that I even dream about sleeping when I'm asleep, (laughs) he giggled. His giggle turned into a yawn. The dogs yawned too. A big comfy bed floated down from the sky and landed in front of the animals. The llamas got into bed and snuggled down into it. They said goodnight to the dogs, and closed their eyes. They were asleep in seconds. The bed looked so inviting, that the dogs were almost tempted to climb into it too. But they wanted to see more animals, and then go back to their owners. They carried on through the park and came across a dozen cute koalas snoozing peacefully in the boughs of a tree. Seeing their sleepy faces made the dogs feel even more tired. They didn't want to wake the koalas, so they tiptoed past them. The sky turned even darker. Hector and Sunny blinked their eyes sleepily. All the animals in the magical park were tired too, and everyone was getting ready for bed. Tired tigers were brushing their teeth. Sleepy sloths were washing their faces. Baby animals were listening to bedtime stories being told to them by their parents. 
Hector and Sonny said good night to every animal they passed and wished them a good night's sleep. The tired dogs could not stop yawning. It's time we went back to our owners, Sonny said sleepily. Hector agreed. They moved away from the other animals and then barked quietly three times. And just like that, they were back in the normal park, standing in front of the large tree they had run through earlier. The sun was shining brightly and their owners was still sitting on a bench and chatting. Hector and Sonny walked slowly over to their owners and flopped at their feet. They yawned. Their owners gave the dogs a confused look and wondered why they were so tired. They shrugged. Their beloved dogs were a mystery to them sometimes. The owners carried on chatting. Hector and Sonny smiled happily at each other. Hector said, I wonder if something magical will happen to us the next time we come to the park. I think it will. What do you think, Sonny? Sonny didn't answer, because she was already fast asleep. Hector fell asleep too. The two dogs dreamed about the wonderful day they'd had, and how their dreams had come true in the most magical of ways. Chapter 2 Hector and Sonny Meet the Easter Bunny It was a warm day in April and the sun was shining down on two dogs who were playing in a garden. Their owners were relaxing in deck chairs on the patio and chatting to each other. One of the dogs was a beautiful golden retriever called Hector. He was visiting the home of his very best friend, a cocker spaniel with reddish brown fur and eyes the colour of a summer sky. Her name was Sunny, and she was showing Hector around the garden and telling him all about the fun times she'd had playing in it. Sonny smiled at Hector and said, Having you here is the best fun of all. I feel like there's an adventure waiting for us, Hector. Can you feel it too? Hector raised his nose and sniffed. He nodded and told Sonny he could smell an adventure in the air and his nose never, ever let him down. He didn't know what the adventure was yet, but it was definitely on its way to them. Sunny smiled at her lovely friend and continued showing him around the garden. She pointed out the places where she'd hidden things that she had taken from the house. Sunny loved hiding things, and her owner loved finding them. Sunny took Hector over to a tree at the bottom of the garden and giggled. She said, <laughs> I threw an oven glove into the branches of this tree a few weeks ago, and my owner still hasn't found it. I keep barking at this tree to give her a clue, but she hasn't seen the glove yet. Hector chuckled and said Sonny was very good at hiding things. Sonny said he was too. A voice behind them said, That's just the kind of help I need today. Animals who are good at hiding things. The two dogs turned around and saw a white rabbit 
standing on the grass near a patch of daffodils. The rabbit wasn't like any they had seen before, and she was wearing a gold waistcoat that had pictures of silver eggs on it. Her ears and bushy tail were silver, and they sparkled brightly in the spring sunshine. The rabbit waved her paw at the surprised dogs and said she was the Easter bunny. She asked the dogs if they had time to help her with something that day. The dogs nodded and asked what kind of help she needed. The Easter bunny said, I have a lot of Easter eggs to deliver, more than usual, because many baby animals have been born recently, and they need an egg too. Could you help me deliver them, please? The dogs nodded again. The Easter bunny thanked the dogs and said, First, we have to make the eggs. It's great fun. My factory is below the ground, and we can get to it through this rabbit hole. She moved to the side and pointed to a small hole in the ground. Hector shook his head. I don't think I'll be able to fit through that hole, but I'll give it a go. If I get stuck, my owner will pull me out. I've been stuck in many places before, and he always rescues me. The bunny gave Hector a big smile and said, You won't get stuck, because I'm a magic rabbit, and I can make you as small as me. I can stop time, too, and your owners won't even notice you're gone. Would that be okay? Hector and Sonny grinned and said yes. Their next adventure was about to begin. The Easter Bunny put a paw on the dog's heads and twitched her nose. In a flash, Hector and Sonny were as small as the rabbit. To their delight, they were also wearing gold and silver waistcoats too, just like the Easter Bunny. The rabbit asked the dogs to follow her. Hector and Sonny looked back at their owners and saw that they had been frozen in time. Even though their owners couldn't hear them, the dogs waved and barked out a goodbye. The Easter Bunny hopped over to the hole and jumped into it. Hector and Sonny didn't know if they were supposed to hop too. They gave it a go, but soon discovered hopping wasn't for them, so they ran to the hole instead. They jumped into the hole and went down into the tunnel that was lit by lanterns hanging from the ceiling. The floor was covered in soft, springy grass, and fresh air flowed warmly through the tunnel. The Easter Bunny hopped onwards, and the dogs followed her. The tunnel opened up into a huge room full of machines, tubes, and rolls of shiny paper. The rabbit stood next to the largest machine and asked the dogs to come closer. Hector and Sonny were only half listening because delicious smells wafted towards them and made their mouths water. Hector said, Sonny, can you smell gravy? I can. He sniffed the air and licked his lips. It smells amazing. Sunny had a huge smile on her face because she could smell all her favourite foods. But where were the aromas coming from? They soon found out. They padded over to the Easter Bunny and asked about the yummy smells. The bunny pointed to the tubes and explained they were full of food that animals loved, and that's what they would be using to make the eggs. Hector's eyes grew big and round. He asked the bunny if there was gravy in one of the tubes. With a smile on her furry face, 
The Easter Bunny nodded and asked Hector if he'd like to make a gravy egg. The joy that swept over the beautiful golden retriever was too much for him, and he had to sit down for a moment to take it all in. He asked Sonny if he was dreaming. Sonny sat next to her friend and said he wasn't dreaming. They grinned at each other and stood up ready to get to work. The rabbit showed them how to make gravy-flavoured eggs using the tubes, a couple of levers and some egg-shaped containers. It was very easy and the dog soon made a dozen gravy eggs. Hector's eyes twinkled and Sonny knew he was going to ask a cheeky question. She started chuckling. Hector was so funny. Hector looked at the Easter Bunny and said, Should we try one of the gravy eggs to make sure they taste as lovely as they smell? The Easter Bunny said that was a good idea and asked them to choose an egg. Hector told Sunny to choose hers first. Sunny looked at the eggs and picked two that were the same size. She gave one to Hector. The dogs bit into the gravy eggs. Yum! They were so delicious that Hector had to sit down again. He let out the biggest sigh of happiness that Sonny had ever heard. The dogs soon finished their eggs and licked their paws clean in case any of the tasty gravy had fallen onto them. The Easter Bunny asked the dogs if they were ready to make eggs for the animals who lived on the nearby farm. Hector and Sonny said they were. They made many eggs in different sizes and different flavours. Each egg was covered in glimmering gold and silver foil. The Easter Bunny was busy making eggs too, but they were larger than the others, and the dogs could see there was something different about them. The Easter Bunny noticed the dogs giving her curious looks, and explained the eggs were for new parents, because they needed some extra help that year. She waved her paw over the eggs, and explained she had put a wish inside each one, and when the eggs were eaten, the parents' wishes would come true. Sunny wanted to know how the wishes got into the eggs. Like this, the rabbit explained. She looked at the egg nearest to her and twitched her nose. Tiny silver and gold stars rose from her nose and drifted down onto the egg. They twinkled for a moment on the shell and then disappeared. The rabbit said the wish was now inside the egg. The Easter Bunny lightly touched Hector and Sonny's noses and said they could make wishes too. The dogs were too amazed to talk and shook their heads in disbelief. They had never had magical noses before. They watched the rabbit putting another wish into an egg and then they copied her. Tiny silver and gold stars came from the top of their noses and drifted into the waiting eggs. It made the dogs feel all warm inside to know an animal was going to have their wish come true. A few minutes later, the Easter Bunny said they had enough eggs and it was time to deliver them. She filled up a basket with eggs and said she was ready to go. The dogs wondered if she had enough. The Easter Bunny said her basket was a special one, and when one egg was delivered, 
another one would magically appear in its place. She told them it was time to go and hopped towards a tunnel on the other side of the room and went inside it. Hector and Sunny followed her. They soon came out of the tunnel and into a field. The dogs saw lots of cute lambs jumping and bouncing over the grass. They were having a lot of fun. Some sheep were sitting at the side of the grass and kept yawning as they watched their lambs at play. The Easter bunny said the sheep were new parents and looked like they needed some help straight away. She hopped over to the sheep. The dogs followed her. The sheep smiled at the visitors. We have something for you, the Easter Bunny said. She took some of the special wishing eggs from her basket and gave them to the sheep. She explained how each egg had a wish inside and they could use them straight away if they wanted to. One of the sheep said, Thank you so much. I know exactly what I'd like to wish for. She looked over at her friends and could see they were thinking the same thing. Hector asked what they were going to wish for. The sheep said, Our lambs are too busy having fun running around this field that they forget to take their afternoon naps. And they need their naps because they always feel better after taking one. Our lovely sheepdog sends us to sleep on a night by singing a sleepy song. I'm going to wish for a special nap time song that I can sing to my babies to make them fall asleep for a while. Her woolly friends nodded, because that's what they were going to wish for too. The Easter Bunny told the sheep to think about their wish as they ate their eggs. The sheep bit into their eggs, which had been made from sweet, freshly cut grass. They smiled as they savoured the delicious taste of it. The sheep closed their eyes and made their wishes. They opened their eyes and began to sing a new naptime song. It was a soothing lullaby and it was carried on a breeze over to the frolicking lambs. The lambs stopped bouncing and jumping. They listened to the lovely tune and began to yawn. They settled down on the grass, snuggled up to each other and fell asleep. Their mothers barred softly and thanked the bunny and the dogs for the wonderful eggs. Then they fell asleep too. The rabbit and the dogs walked across the field until they came to other parents who needed their help. They saw a couple of goats chasing after their kids as they zoomed around the field. The kids looked like they were having a marvellous time, but their parents didn't look quite so happy. Hector and Sonny were good with young animals and young humans too, and they knew what they could do to help. They bounded over to the baby goats and joined in the chasing game. The dogs told the parents they would look after their kids for a while because the Easter Bunny had something to give them. The parents thanked the dogs and walked over to the rabbit. A few moments later, the goats were tucking into the special eggs. 
They tasted of the goat's favourite vegetables, carrots, celery and cucumbers. Hector and Sonny continued their chasing game with the kids and wondered what their parents had wished for. From out of nowhere, a gold guitar and a silver saxophone floated down from the sky and landed in the waiting arms of the goats. Without wasting any time, the goats began to play the instruments. The beautiful sound floated over to the running kids and made them stand still. Then the young goats began to dance. They twirled and whirled and boogied over to their parents and danced in front of them. The tune coming from the guitar and saxophone was so joyful that Hector and Sonny danced over to the goats too. The Easter Bunny told the dogs the goats had wished for the instruments because even though they loved playing games with their kids, running around the field all day was making them dizzy. They thought dancing would be more fun instead. The dogs agreed that dancing was a lot of fun and wiggled their bottoms in time to the music. The Easter Bunny wiggled her bottom too. The rabbit and the dogs danced for a while longer and then moved on. They saw some chickens in the farmyard. They were surrounded by a fluffy yellow cloud of chicks who were cheerfully cheeping. The chickens flapped their wings at the chicks and asked them to hush a little. But the chicks just cheeped more loudly. Hector and Sonny came to the rescue again. They ran over to the chicks and began to playfully chase them around the farmyard. The chicks loved the game and chirped in delight. The Easter Bunny hopped over to the chickens and gave them the special eggs. She told them about the wishes that were inside them. The chickens knew what they wanted to wish for. One of them told the rabbit how their little chicks loved listening to bedtime stories, but the mothers had run out of stories and didn't know any new ones. She said she was going to wish for lots of new stories to tell her babies. The other chickens said they would too. The chickens nibbled the delicious eggs which were made from yummy seeds. As soon as the eggs had been eaten, the chickens got ideas for new stories and called their chicks over to them. As soon as the little fluffy animals were sitting down, one of the mothers began to tell them a story about a little koala who lived in a magical forest. The chicks listened and didn't make a single cheep. Hector and Sonny listened to the story too. It made them feel a bit sleepy. Sonny asked the rabbit if other parents needed their help. No, but I still have work to do, the Easter Bunny said. She asked the dogs if they still wanted to help her. The dog said they would love to. The Easter Bunny said, We have to hide the rest of the eggs in different places so that the farm animals can find them. Can you help me do that? Sunny couldn't stop herself from smiling. She told the rabbit she loved hiding things and could do it all day long. 
the Easter bunny smiled and said it wouldn't take that long. She twitched her nose and two baskets full of eggs magically appeared in front of Hector and Sonny. The bunny asked the dogs to hide the eggs around the farm. Hector asked if the eggs had wishes in them too. No, the rabbit replied, but you can put some in it if you like. You still have some magic in your noses. Hector was hoping the rabbit would say that because he loved using his magic nose. Sonny did too, and the dogs twitched their noses until the gold and silver stars appeared and then drifted into the eggs. When all the eggs had wishes safely inside them, Sonny picked up her basket in her mouth and bounded away across the yard. She hid her eggs in as many different places as she could find. At the back of the horse's stables on the soft straw. Lined up next to some baby carrots nestling in the soil. Carefully balanced on the rungs of a ladder inside a barn. On top of a plant pot outside the kitchen door and inside a pair of socks that were hanging from the washing line. Sonny finished hiding the eggs and then helped Hector hide some of his too. When all the eggs had been hidden, they ran back to the Easter Bunny and asked if there was anything else they needed to do. The Easter Bunny said, No, thank you. All the eggs have been hidden and I know the animals will have fun looking for them and they'll have fun making their wishes come true. But how will they know there are wishes inside the eggs? Hector asked. Do we have to tell them? The Easter Bunny smiled wisely and said every animal had wishes deep within their hearts that were waiting to come true. When the animals ate the special eggs, their dearest wishes would come true straight away. Hector and Sonny would have liked to see those wishes come true, but they kept yawning and knew it was time to return home. The Easter Bunny noticed how tired the dogs were. She twitched her nose and a rabbit hole magically appeared in front of the dogs. She told them it would lead straight to Sunny's garden and once they climbed out of the hole, the dogs would grow back to their normal size and time would become unfrozen. Hector and Sonny were about to move towards the hole when two new eggs appeared in their baskets. The Easter Bunny said they were for the dogs and they had wishes inside them. Hector and Sonny looked at the eggs. They thought about how they could use their wishes. Sonny smiled at Hector and said, I can't think of anything to wish for. I have everything I want, and I've got you as my best friend. I don't need anything else. Hector said he felt the same way. The dogs looked at the kind-hearted Easter Bunny and said they wanted her to have the eggs and the wishes inside. The Easter Bunny was touched by their kindness and said she'd never been given wishes before. She smiled and admitted she'd love to go skiing, so she might use one of her wishes for a skiing holiday. 
Hector and Sonny said goodbye to the rabbit and then jumped into the hole. They ran along the tunnel and came out in Sonny's garden. Their gold waistcoats disappeared and they grew back to their normal size. The dogs yawned and settled down in the shade of a tree. They thought about the lovely day they'd had and the animals they had met. Sunny smiled sleepily at her best friend and said, Hector, I'm so glad I get to have adventures with you. Hector said, Me too, and I think there are more adventures waiting for us, he yawned. Sunny did too. Their owners walked over to their resting pets and smiled down at them. Sunny's owner looked up at the sky through the branches of the tree. She chuckled when she saw her missing oven glove resting on one of the branches. Hector and Sunny fell into a restful sleep and dreamed about the day they had met the Easter Bunny. Chapter 3 Hector and Sonny find a magical stick On a beautiful morning in summer, a golden retriever called Hector was walking along the streets with his owner. Hector was a friendly dog, and he made sure to bark out a cheerful hello to every dog he passed on his way. Most of the dogs barked back in reply, but some of them had sticks in their mouths, so they wagged their tails instead. Dogs loved carrying sticks, and so did Hector, so he began to look for one. Underneath the trees was always a good place to look for a stick, because branches sometimes fell to the ground during a strong wind. There were plenty of trees at the side of the pavement where Hector was walking, so he began his search for the perfect stick. Hector was so busy looking beneath the trees that he didn't realise his owner was leading him along the street where Hector's best friend lived. But as they got closer to a certain house, Hector saw where they were and wagged his tail in delight. They stopped outside number 33, and Hector barked loudly. Within two seconds, the front door of the house opened, and a beautiful cocker spaniel, with golden brown fur and blue eyes the colour of the sky, ran out and bounded down the path towards Hector, her tail wagging furiously. The pals were overjoyed to see each other, and barked happily in delight. Their owners said hello and then walked along the street together, with their beloved dogs trotting at their sides. Sonny asked Hector what he'd been up to that morning. Hector replied, mm, Not much yet. I was looking for a stick to carry. He looked towards the trees at their side. Sonny, can you see any good ones? Sonny joined in with the search and walked next to Hector. She was extremely good at finding sticks and soon spotted a couple of marvellous ones under a tree. She stood to one side and told Hector to choose his first. Hector said thank you and picked up a bobbly stick. It was a good weight in his mouth and felt comfortable. Sunny picked up the other stick and nodded at her friend. Her stick was a good one too. The dogs carried on walking, happy with the sticks they'd found. But then, they noticed something amazing. Something they had never, ever seen before. At the side of the path was the biggest tree they had ever seen. A sign was fixed around the trunk of it. There were some words on it. But the dogs couldn't read, so they ignored the sign and let their owners do the reading. 
Beneath the tree was a collection of sticks. Not just a couple of sticks, but lots and lots of sticks in many different sizes. Some even had leaves on the end of them. Hector and Sonny stared at the sticks in amazement. What was going on? Why were there so many sticks there? They heard their owners talking and made out the words stick library. The dogs had no idea what that meant. Hector's owner knelt next to him and gently took the stick from Hector's mouth. He placed it at the side of the tree next to the collection of sticks. Sonny's owner did the same thing. Hector frowned and said to Sonny, What's going on here? Why have they taken our sticks away? Sonny tipped her head to one side and looked closer at the sticks. Hector, I think we're allowed to take one of the other sticks. Sometimes I go to a big building with my owner and she always has a book with her. She gives the book back but then gets another one off the shelf and takes that home instead. Perhaps that's what we're supposed to do with these sticks. Shall we take a new one and see if we're doing the right thing? Hector said it was worth a try. He grinned cheekily at the sticks and asked Sonny if they should only take one stick or should they take more, because he was certain he could carry three or four if he tried. Sonny said they had brought one stick with them, so perhaps they were only supposed to take one away. Hector nodded. That made sense. But now, which stick should he choose? Then he remembered his manners and stood to one side and told Sonny to pick hers first. Sonny walked back and forth in front of the sticks and gave them a close look. One of them looked a bit different to the other ones. It wasn't brown in colour and looked almost silver. Sunny moved closer to the stick and pressed her nose against it to get a really good look. Yes, it was definitely silver. She sniffed it. It smelled different too, but she couldn't work out what the lovely fragrance was. Sunny picked the stick up. The stick tingled gently in her mouth, and her blue eyes grew wide in surprise. She put the stick down and told Hector what had just happened. Hector said, It might be a magical stick. Do you remember when we went into Dreamland last week, and we got there by following a silver squirrel called Sydney? Sonny said she would never, ever forget that amazing day. Yes, Hector could be right about the stick being magical. She quickly looked at the remaining sticks, leaning against the tree. There was another silver one. Sonny pointed it out to Hector. Hector picked it up and his eyes widened in surprise too, because his stick gently tingled in his mouth just like Sonny's had. Sonny picked her silver stick up again and looked at her friend. And then, something magical happened. The world around them froze in time. Their owners became as still as statues. The same thing had happened the previous week, when the dogs had gone into dreamland. Time was standing still for everyone except the two dogs. Hector and Sonny didn't know what to do next, so Sonny suggested they wave their sticks about to see if they would make something happen. They waved their sticks. In an instant, the two dogs were transported into another world. They found themselves in the middle of a forest and were surrounded by trees that were covered in sparkling silver leaves. Beneath the trees were dozens and dozens of glimmering gold flowers. The dogs put their sticks down. 
Hector said. Where are we? How did we get here? Sonny gave him a small smile and said, I think this is my fault. Just before we started shaking our sticks, I thought how lovely it would be to visit an enchanted forest. I think the stick must have heard my thoughts somehow. Hector, look at these trees and flowers. Aren't they beautiful? They're so twinkling and glittery. Hector nodded and said the flowers looked like bells. As soon as he said that, he thought how wonderful it would be if the flowers sounded like bells too. And wouldn't it be amazing if the leaves made music too? In a flash, Hector's stick turned into something else. It was now straight and smooth. Hector thought it looked like one of those sticks music conductors used when they were in front of an orchestra. He'd seen a TV programme once where lots of people played instruments and the person at the front waved a special stick at them to make the music go faster or slower. Hector picked up the smooth stick. He waved it back and forth in front of the silver trees and the golden flowers to see if anything magical would happen. The sparkling leaves started to softly jingle and jangle. The glimmering flowers began to chime like bells. It was a lovely sound, and it made Sonny dance from side to side. Hector danced too and continued waving his music stick back and forth. Sonny thought about the music stick in Hector's mouth and how much fun it would be to have one too. And all of a sudden, her stick turned into one like Hector's. She picked it up and waved it at the tree and flowers too. The happy music carried on playing, but some of the leaves and flowers floated free and drifted upwards. They turned into silver and gold butterflies. The beautiful butterflies fluttered towards the dogs and danced gently around them in a twinkling cloud of sparkling wings. The butterflies sang a soothing song that made the dogs feel all warm and happy inside. The sight was so amazing that it caused the dogs to stop waving their sticks and gaze at the butterflies in wonder. Sunny put her stick down and said, Hector, wouldn't it be lovely if we could fly too? Hector put his stick down too and agreed that yes, that would be lovely. To their astonishment, their music sticks immediately turned into large broomsticks with silver and gold bristles. The two broomsticks rose from the ground and hovered next to the surprised dogs. The friends didn't know what to make of the broomsticks, but after a quick discussion, they decided the broomsticks must be able to fly, and if they stood on them, they'd be able to fly too. Hector and Sonny jumped onto the broomsticks. The broomsticks were wide and there was plenty of room for their four paws. Slowly and steadily, the broomsticks rose higher above the ground. The dogs grinned at each other. Up and up they went, high above the silver-leafed trees. The broomsticks stopped rising and moved slowly forward over the enchanted forest. The dogs soon worked out they could control the flying sticks by leaning left and right, and if they leaned forward, they made the broomsticks go faster. Going faster was a lot of fun, 
and the dogs chuckled in delight as they flew over the forest. The wind ran through their fur and made their ears flap. Onwards they travelled, over many fields and houses. Everything looked so small to them from up high on their broomsticks. Sunny spotted something ahead and called out, Hector, look, the sea is over there. Shall we go towards it? Can we splash in the water? I love splashing in the sea and running into the waves. Hector loved playing in the sea too. They guided their broomsticks towards the sparkling blue sea. When they got closer, the dogs saw people standing on boards in the water. Big waves curled up behind the people and carried them towards the beach. Even from up high, the dogs could see how happy the people on the boards were. Some were even whooping in joy and waving their arms in the air. Sonny looked over at Hector and said, That looks like fun. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Hector nodded. They guided their broomsticks towards the beach and landed softly on the sand. The dogs looked at the broomsticks and thought how lovely it would be to ride on the waves. The broomsticks changed shape and turned into silver and gold surfboards. The dogs climbed onto them and waited. Nothing happened. Sunny looked at the people on the boards in the sea. She watched as they came to a stop on the beach and saw how they picked up their boards and ran back into the water. She told Hector they had to carry the surfboards into the sea. The dogs were concerned the surfboards might be too heavy, but when they picked them up, the boards were as light as feathers and were very easy to carry. The dogs ran into the sea with their boards, and when they were far enough into the water, they climbed onto them and lay on their tummies. Using their front legs, they doggy paddled in the sea until they were a good distance from the shore. They saw a wave curling towards them. Hector and Sunny stood up on their surfboards and waited for the wave to catch them. The wave moved under the surfboards and carried the laughing dogs smoothly through the water and towards the shore. It was tremendous fun, and they felt like they were flying again. They barked in utter joy and waved their front legs in the air. As soon as the dogs landed on the shore and came to a stop, they picked up their boards and rushed back into the sea. Over and over, the two friends surfed the blue waves of the sea until finally they flopped onto the beach in happy exhaustion and agreed they'd done enough surfing. The sand was soft beneath them and the sun was warm on their backs. The dogs yawned and agreed they could do with a little rest before continuing with their adventure. Hector saw a line of beach huts behind them. People were sitting in the shade of the open doors of the huts and sipping cold drinks. He said it would be lovely to have somewhere cool to rest for a while. Sunny agreed. The gold and silver surfboards immediately disappeared and the dogs wondered where they had gone. Hector noticed that a new beach hut had appeared. It was silver and gold, and there were a couple of dog bowls in the open doorway that were full to the brim with water. 
Hector said the hut must be for them. The dogs padded over to the beach hut and lapped at the water in the bowls. The liquid was refreshingly cold and was just what they needed. Once they'd had enough to drink, they went into the beach hut, lay on their tummies, and looked out at the sea as it flowed gently back and forth. The dogs closed their eyes and listened to the soothing sound of the sea. They felt so very peaceful and relaxed. After a while, the rested dogs felt ready to leave the hut. Sonny asked, What should we do next? What do you like doing, Hector? Hector said he liked doing everything. The two dogs walked away from the beach hut and wriggled their toes into the soft sand. They watched what was happening around them. People were lounging on blankets and reading books. Others were playing a game with a ball and a bat. A couple of children were making sand castles using a spade and bucket. Hector and Sonny smiled at each other. They knew what they wanted to do next. They thought how lovely it would be to build a sandcastle just like the children were doing. The beach hut behind them instantly changed into a silver spade and a golden bucket. The dogs took the items in their mouths and were soon busy building a sand castle. It was enormous fun, and they loved seeing how the castle grew bigger and bigger with each bucket full of sand they tipped over. Sonny saw that the nearby children had made a moat around their castle and then filled it with water. She told Hector about it, and very soon they had a water-filled moat around their castle too. They added some shells to the sandy building as well, to make it even more amazing. Once they had finished, the dogs stood back to admire their wonderful castle. They thought it was perfect. Sonny asked Hector if they should build another one, but Hector was only half listening to his friend because he'd spotted something in the distance. His mouth dropped open and he blinked several times because he just could not believe what he was seeing. Sonny turned around to see what Hector was looking at. When she saw what it was, her mouth fell open too. An enormous see-through ball was rolling across the sand. There was a young woman inside it. She was running inside the ball and making it move across the sand. Sonny told Hector it looked like the hamster wheel that was in her house. Hector didn't know what a hamster wheel was, and he wasn't really sure what a hamster was either, so he asked Sonny to tell him more. Sonny did so and mimed the action of running on a wheel. She said the family hamster loved going on it, and it was the first thing he did every day. The gigantic ball came closer to them. The dogs agreed they would love to go inside something like that, but they weren't sure their magical sticks would change into such huge objects. Sonny sensibly said, there was only one way to find out if they could make it happen. The two dogs closed their eyes and thought how lovely it would be to run inside a large see-through ball. When they opened their eyes, they were overjoyed to find they were inside their own 
giant inflatable balls. Hector moved his paws up and down on the bouncy surface beneath him. His ball began to move slowly forward. He looked over at Sunny and told her to do the same thing. Sunny did so, and her ball moved too. The dogs walked inside the inflatable balls until they got the hang of how to move them. Then they began to jog. And then they started to run. The surface beneath their paws was soft and springy. It felt like they were running on a bouncy castle. Over the sand they rolled laughing and wagging their tails in delight. The two dogs had an amazing time rolling over the sand all the way to the end of the beach. When they got to the end, they turned around and rolled right back to the other side. The people on the beach stopped what they were doing and looked in surprise at Hector and Sonny. When they saw how much fun the dogs were having, the people smiled and waved at them. The dogs waved back. After a few more journeys across the sand, Hector yawned and told Sonny he was getting tired and perhaps they should head back home. When they'd been to Dreamland the week before, Sydney, the silver squirrel, had told them that when they wanted to return home, they should bark three times and they would be home in an instant. Hector asked Sunny if she was ready to go home. Sunny said she was, but she wanted one last adventure. She closed her eyes and smiled as she thought about something. The inflatable balls merged together and became one. Hector and Sunny were now standing next to each other. A long string appeared on the outside of the ball and it looked like the string of a kite. Sonny told Hector they were going to fly back to the enchanted forest and return home from there. The ball rose from the ground and floated through the air like an enormous round kite. The string flapped behind them gently in the breeze. The dogs waved their paws at the people below who were watching them. The huge sandcastle they had made looked smaller and smaller as they went higher and higher. Over the sparkling sea they drifted, watching the surfers ride towards the beach. Back over the fields and houses they floated. The sky grew darker as they travelled towards the enchanted forest. The silver leaf trees came into view, and the dogs heard the distant sound of tinkling leaves and chiming flowers. A couple of silver butterflies flew closer to the floating ball and guided the dogs down to the ground. The ball landed on the soft ground and the dogs stepped out of it. The ball swiftly turned into two silver sticks, the same sticks Hector and Sonny had picked up earlier. It was time to go home. Hector and Sonny barked three times and picked the sticks up. A second later, they were back at their owner's side. 
their owners became unfrozen and carried on chatting to each other, unaware that their dogs had been on an amazing adventure. Hector and Sonny carefully put the silver sticks back where they had found them, ready for other dogs to have a magical adventure too. They picked up the sticks they had found on the way to the big tree and looked at their owners to let them know they were ready to carry on walking. Hector and Sonny walked back to their homes. They took their sticks into their houses because they wanted to keep them a little longer to remind them of their lovely adventure. Before Hector and Sonny said goodbye to each other, they said they just couldn't wait to meet again. And perhaps, just perhaps, they would go on another adventure again. Chapter 4 Hector and Sonny in Adventureland It was early afternoon and two dogs were walking along the side of a river with their owners. The sun shone down brightly and the fresh smell of summer filled the air. A couple of ducks glided smoothly across the surface of the river, letting out a leisurely quack now and again. One of the dogs, a happy golden retriever called Hector, sniffed the air and said to his best friend Sonny, hmm, I can smell an adventure in the air. Can you smell it? The Cocker Spaniel at his side looked at him with her beautiful blue eyes and replied, I can smell the plump black breeze on that hedge over there and the flowers in the field, but hmm, I can't smell an adventure. Hector gave her a wise look and said there was definitely an adventure in the air. An adventure just waiting for them. He could feel it in his ears. Sonny nodded. I trust your ears. I wonder what kind of adventure it will be. The dogs carried on walking with their owners. They headed away from the river and strolled into the town centre. Hector barked a happy hello to everyone they passed. Sonny gave them all a smile. The dog's owners stopped to look at a large poster on the side of a bus stop. The dogs looked at it too. The poster was of an amusement park. There were many colourful rides in the park, and the smiling visitors were having a fabulous time. Hector chuckled and said to Sonny, <laughs> that looks like a fun place to be. I wonder what it's like to go on all those rides. Do you think dogs are allowed to go on them? Sonny was wondering the same thing and sighed wistfully. At that moment, two silver tickets floated down from the sky and landed in front of the dogs. Hector and Sonny stared at the silver tickets. They looked at their owners to see if they had seen them too. Their owners hadn't, and were pointing to rides on the poster and discussing whether they should visit the amusement park soon. Sonny said, Hector, do you think these tickets are for us? Hector said he did, and he added with a grin, he was certain the tickets would take them on their next adventure. The two best friends smiled at each other. Then they picked up the silver tickets in their mouths and waited for something magical to happen. Their owners froze in time, and so did all the other people around them. Hector and Sonny were transparent 
transported to another world, a world of wonder and magic. The dogs were in a wide open field. In the distance, they could see an amusement park. It looked just like the one on the poster. With their silver tickets secured in their mouths, the two happy dogs ran joyfully towards the park. They soon arrived at the entrance. Their good friend Sydney, a silver-furred squirrel, was sitting on a chair at the entrance. He waved happily to the dogs. Hector, Sonny, how wonderful to meet you again. I see you got my tickets. Welcome to Adventureland. You can go on any ride you like, they're all free. And when you're ready to return home, you only have to bark three times like you did before. Sidney held his little paw out for the tickets. The dogs dropped them into his paw and said they'd never been to an amusement park before, and asked where they should go first. Sydney advised them to head toward the horses on the carousel, and ask them for help. The dogs nodded, even though they had no idea what a carousel was. They would figure it out later. They thanked Sydney for the tickets, and jogged through the entrance. They were inside Adventureland. There wasn't a single human anywhere. Instead, the amusement park was full of animals of all shapes, sizes and colours who were having a wonderful time. Hector and Sonny turned around slowly and tried to take everything in. There were lots of fun rides everywhere. The dogs saw train carriages trundling around a track. An enormous pirate ship that swung back and forth. And boats speeding across a lake, leaving huge waves behind them. A medley of sounds came from all directions. The chugging noise of the rides, bells clanging, water splashing, and the ever-present sound of animals laughing. The delicious aroma of cooked food drifted towards the dogs, and they caught a hint of gravy. It made them happy to know that something gravy-flavoured was nearby. The dogs didn't know where to go first. Should they go on the nearest ride? Or have a walk around to discover where the food was? They remembered Sydney's words about the strange-sounding carousel and looked around hoping to see something that might have such a peculiar name. Hector raised his paw towards something and said, Look over there, Sonny. I don't know if that big circle thing is a carousel, but there are lots of horses on it. They might be the ones to help us. The dogs ran over to the ride. It was in motion, and the golden-maned horses neighed joyfully as they carried passengers upon their backs. Hector and Sonny sat near the ride and waited for it to stop. A rabbit hopped by, and Sonny asked her if the ride was called a carousel. It is indeed, the rabbit said, with a twitch of her whiskers. Sometimes this type of ride is called a merry-go-round, too. Isn't that a lovely word to say, merry-go-round? The dog said the word too and agreed it was fun to say. The rabbit said goodbye and hopped away. The carousel came to a stop and the passengers jumped off. The nearest two horses smiled at the dogs 
and asked if they'd like to climb on. Hector and Sonny said yes, thank you. Once they were seated in the saddles, Hector said to his horse, This is our first time here. We're not sure where to go or what to do. Hector's horse looked over his shoulder and said, We can help you with that. Would you like a tour of the park? Hector and Sonny nodded eagerly. The horses told the dogs to hold on, and then they swiftly leapt off the carousel and landed on the ground. The gold-maned horses proceeded to take the dogs around the amazing amusement park. They showed Hector and Sonny many rides, including the log flume, the bumper cars, three different sized roller coasters, and something called a fun house. The horses took the dogs over to a line of red and white stalls. Each stall offered a fun game to play. The horses and the dogs stopped at the first stall and watch two tigers throwing hoops over some bottles. One of the tigers got a hoop over the furthest bottle and let out a whoop of joy. His friend held up his paw and gave his pal a high five. The horses trotted over to another stall and said the game was called Hook a Duck. A family of tortoises were holding out sticks towards some ducks, but every time they aimed a stick at a sitting duck, the cheeky duck would jump up and run away. The tortoises didn't mind at all and kept letting out peals of giggles as they watched the chuckling ducks run this way and that before returning to the game. Hector and Sonny continued on their tour around the park and saw many rides and games that looked like tremendous fun. They were eager to go on as many as possible, so they thanked the horses for their help and jumped out of the saddles. The horses neighed, shook their golden manes in the air and cantered off in the direction of the carousel. With a familiar twinkle in his eyes, Hector looked at Sonny and said, I know where I want to go first. What about you? Sonny chuckled and said, I want to go on the log flume. It looks like great fun. Hector agreed and said that's what he was thinking too. The two dogs ran towards the log flume ride and waited in a small queue behind a couple of ostriches. When it was their turn, Sonny and Hector climbed into a hollowed out log and put their seatbelts on. Water swirled around the bottom of the log, making a soothing, swishing noise. The log moved forward in the water. Hector and Sonny woofed in delight. They waved to some Dalmatians who were standing near the ride and eating pink candy floss. The Dalmatians waved back. The log took Hector and Sonny slowly up a hill of running water. When they got to the top, the log paused for a few moments, and the dogs had a wonderful view of the park. They looked towards the end of the ride and saw a huge pool of water below them. Two elephants were standing in the pool and helping passengers to climb out of their logs. Then the log rushed downwards. Down and down it went. Hector and Sonny barked in utter joy. The wind rushed over them and made their ears flap. 
The dogs had huge smiles on their faces. Water splashed up from beneath the log and covered the dogs in a cooling spray of moisture. They couldn't help themselves from sticking their tongues out and trying to catch the water. With a whoosh, the dogs reached the pool at the bottom of the ride and an enormous wave of water washed over them, drenching them from the tips of their noses to the ends of their tails. Hector and Sonny couldn't stop smiling and laughing. One of the elephants helped the dogs out of the log and told them to have a good shake. Hector and Sonny did so and sent droplets of water flying off in all directions. The other elephant said a photograph had been taken of the dogs on the ride and she would make sure they saw it later. Hector and Sonny leapt out of the pool, big grins on their faces. They were ready for the next ride. The two friends went on the bumper cars next. They got into different cars and looked at the steering wheels in confusion. Hector said he didn't know how to drive a car because his owner always did that. The gorilla in charge of the ride said Hector didn't need to know how to drive. He only needed to know how to steer. He gave Hector and Sonny a quick demonstration. It looked easy enough. Once every bumper car had an occupant, the gorilla pressed a button and the cars began to move. It took a minute or two for Sonny and Hector to realise it was okay to bump into other cars. And once they discovered that, they had great fun bumping into the other cars and loved it when someone bumped into them. Hector and Sonny enjoyed steering the cars. And when the ride came to an end, they asked the gorilla if they could queue up and have another go. The kind gorilla said that because no one else was waiting to go on the ride, the dogs could stay right where they were and have another go. The ride began again, and the dogs were off with their paws on the steering wheels. Hector had watched racing cars on the television with his owner and thought that with all the steering he'd been doing that day, he would make an excellent racing car driver. The ride came to an end, and Sonny said they should go on a roller coaster next. Yes, but which one? There are three of them, Hector said. They had a look at all three roller coasters and decided the dragon-shaped one looked the most exciting. The dragon roller coaster was just pulling to a stop when Hector and Sonny jogged over to it. The grinning dogs got into the first carriage. The other carriages were filled and the ride set off. The dogs were taken slowly up a steep track. Up and up they went. They reached the top, were still for a moment. And then the roller coaster zoomed off down the track. Hector and Sonny cried out in delight as the wind rushed past them. Their barks of joy mingled with the hoots and cheers coming from the animals behind them. The roller coaster wound its way around the track, up and down, side to side, curving around hills and rushing over water. After a while, the roller coaster slowed down and eventually came to a stop. 
The dogs agreed it had been one of their favourite rides, but after all that excitement, they wanted to go on something slower. Why don't we go on that big wheel? Hector said. What did my horse call it? A ferris wheel? Sunny said yes, it was called that, and she'd like to go on it too. They padded over to the ferris wheel and climbed into a carriage. The carriage rose so smoothly that the dogs didn't notice they were moving until they saw the animals below them getting smaller and smaller. The ferris wheel was a relaxing place to be. It took the dogs above the happy noise of the park until all they could hear was the passing call of a bird as it flew by. Hector and Sonny looked at the amusement park below them. Hector said it looked like a map and asked Sonny where she would like to go after the Ferris wheel. Sonny smiled and said, Everywhere. I want to go everywhere and do everything. Hector said he would do his best to make that happen. The two dogs settled back in their seats and enjoyed the wonderful view of the park below them and the endless blue sky above them. The air was warm and the sun shone brightly. It was quiet and peaceful in the carriage. Sonny yawned. So did Hector. Sonny said she loved sharing adventures with Hector. Hector said he loved sharing adventures with Sonny too. The ferris wheel moved ever so slowly and smoothly, and a while later it returned the dogs to the ground. They climbed out of the carriage and headed towards the fun house. They entered it and had a marvellous time jogging over moving paths, running through rotating tunnels and walking over wobbly bridges. They climbed a ladder rope and entered a room full of mirrors. When they saw how funny their reflections in the mirrors were, Hector and Sonny burst into uncontrollable laughter. They laughed so much that they tumbled gently to the floor and rolled around laughing. They laughed until they couldn't laugh anymore. They wiped their tears of joy away and stood up. They climbed another ladder, which led them to the top floor. There was a huge helter-skelter in the middle of the floor. Hector and Sonny went over to it and sat on a mat. They set off down the winding slide. They came to a soft landing at the bottom and grinned at each other. They went on the teacup ride next and had a lovely time twirling gently around. Hector chuckled and said he felt like one of the sugar lumps his owner popped into his teacup sometimes. Thinking about Hector as a sugar lump made Sonny giggle so much that she got hiccups. As the teacup ride came to an end, a delicious aroma of gravy drifted towards them. Hector licked his lips and said, I don't know where that is coming from, but I'm going to find out. Sonny, are you hungry? Sonny's tummy rumbled like thunder. She said she was very hungry. The two dogs expertly followed their noses 
and came to a food stall that made ice cream in many flavours, and to the dog's delight, one of those flavours was gravy. The penguin behind the counter told the dogs the ice cream was free, and they could have as much as they liked. Hector and Sonny couldn't believe their good fortune, and thought they were the luckiest dogs in the whole world. They asked for two scoops of gravy-flavoured ice cream in a bowl. They remembered to say please and thank you. They took their bowls over to a picnic area and sat on the soft grass, the sun warm on their backs. Hector and Sonny lapped at their ice creams and enjoyed every last bit of them. They licked their bowls clean and declared it to be the best ice cream they had ever tasted. Eating had made them tired, so they lay on the grass and closed their eyes. They let out contented sighs at the very same time. They rested their eyes for a full five minutes, and then sat up. Sunny yawned, and said she was feeling tired, and if Hector didn't mind, she had changed her mind about going on every ride. Hector said he felt a bit tired too, and suggested they pick a few games to try before going home. I'm sure we can return to Adventureland another time, Hector said with a smile at his best friend. And then we can go on all the rides we missed this time. Sonny smiled and said it would be fun to come back some day. They stood up and took their empty bowls back to the ice cream stall. Sonny and Hector spent the next part of their day playing games at some of the stalls. One of the games involved throwing doggy treats into empty bowls. Sunny went first and managed to get most of her treats into the bowls. When it was Hector's turn, he held his empty paws out and said he didn't have any treats to throw because he'd eaten them all. I just couldn't help myself, he said with a cheeky smile. The next game was the one they'd seen earlier, where a hoop had to be thrown over a bottle. The dogs often played frisbee with their owners, and their throwing skills were awesome. With great ease, they slipped the hoops over the bottles. Each hoop slipped easily over a bottle. The rhinoceros who was in charge of the game said they had won a prize. He pointed to the line of prizes at his side and asked which one they would like. Hector and Sonny chose big glittery hats as their prizes. Hector picked a blue one and Sonny chose a bright orange one. They put the hats on and decided they looked very dashing. Their good luck continued, and they won more prizes at other stalls. From the prizes on show, Hector chose an oversized pair of sunglasses and a teddy bear. Sonny picked a sparkly headband and a tartan neckerchief, which Hector tied around her neck at a jaunty angle. They played a few more games, and just for the sheer fun of it, they had their faces painted. Sunny was transformed into a zebra, and Hector became a koala. The day drew on, and the tired dogs started yawning more and more. They knew it was time to head home. Hector said he'd like to say goodbye to Sydney 
before they left, but the park entrance was far away, and he was very tired. Sonny sighed. I wish there was an easy way to get there. Out of nowhere, train tracks appeared on the ground in front of them. As the dogs stared at the tracks in surprise, a red train magically appeared. The driver was a walrus who had a long silver moustache. He invited the dogs on board and said he was going straight to the entrance. The grateful dogs climbed sleepily into the carriage and settled themselves on the seats, which were covered in soft cushions. The walrus blew a whistle, and the train moved smoothly along the tracks. The gentle rocking motion of the carriage soothed the tired dogs, and they felt themselves becoming sleepier and sleepier. A few minutes later, they arrived at the park's entrance. Hector and Sonny thanked the driver and waved goodbye as the train went on its way to collect other visitors who were ready to leave Adventureland. Sydney was closing up for the day and asked the dogs if they'd had a good time. We have had an amazing time, Sunny said. She let out a long, long yawn. We're ready for home now, Sydney said. You know what to do. Bark three times. Sunny opened her mouth to bark, but Hector stopped her and said they couldn't return home with their faces painted or with the prizes they had won because their owners would wonder what they'd been up to. Sunny nodded in agreement and then asked Sydney if he could give their prizes to some of the animals who perhaps hadn't won anything that day. Sydney said he would do that and thanked the dogs for their kindness. The squirrel waved his little paw over the dogs' faces and the paint vanished. Hector and Sonny looked like themselves again. The drowsy dog said thank you to Sydney for the silver tickets and hoped they would see him again soon. You will do, Sydney said with a squirrely smile. Sunny yawned again and Hector could see that she was too tired to bark three times. So Hector barked for her. In the twinkle of an eye, the dogs returned to their own world. Their owners were still looking at the poster on the side of the bus stop. Hector's owner looked down at his dog and asked if he'd like to visit the amusement park one day. He wasn't sure if dogs were allowed on the rides, but he would ask. Before Hector could bark in reply, Sonny's owner pointed to the poster and said, Look at this. There are two dogs on the log flume. They look like Hector and Sonny. Isn't that a coincidence? Hector and Sonny shared a smile. They'd had an amazing time in Adventureland and knew that more adventures awaited them in the future. Chapter 5 
Hector and Sonny take an afternoon nap. It was early afternoon and a beautiful golden retriever by the name of Hector was looking out of the living room window of the house he shared with his owner. Hector's front paws rested on the windowsill and he looked left and right along the street. Where was she? She should have been here by now. He'd been waiting and waiting and waiting Perhaps he would see better if he looked out of the upstairs window. Hector ran out of the living room and bounded up the stairs. He barked out a loud hello to his owner, who was working in his office. His owner jumped out of his seat a little in surprise and watched Hector go dashing by. Hector raced into his owner's bedroom and over to the window. Once again, he put his paws on the windowsill and stared out of the window. Left and right he looked, then right and left, and left and right again. Bubbles of happiness popped in his tummy. She would be here soon. He could sense it. Sonny, his very best friend in the whole wide world, was coming over for a play date, and Hector couldn't wait to see her. He had lots of fun activities planned for them. A familiar car drove along the road and stopped outside Hector's house. Hector saw a dog with golden brown fur and beautiful light eyes sitting in the back seat. It was Sunny. She was here. Hector's heart danced and he howled with joy. His tail wagged furiously and he spun around three times in utter excitement. Hector ran out of the bedroom and into his owner's office. He barked twice to let his owner know Sonny was here, and then he bounded downstairs and sat right next to the front door with a big doggy grin on his golden fluffy face. There was a knock at the door. His owner came down the stairs smiled at Hector and asked him to kindly move to the side so he could open the door. Hector moved a little bit. His owner opened the door and in bounded Sonny. Her huge smile matched Hector's. Hector barked and said, Hi, I'm so glad you're here. I've been waiting ages and ages and ages. What do you want to do first? Sonny said, I don't know. Can I have a look around your home, please? I know I've been here before, but I like to have a nosy in case there's anything different. Have you got any new toys? Any of those squeaky ones? I've got some, and my owner keeps playing hide and seek with them. (laughs) Sonny chuckled in that sweet way of hers and added, No matter where she hides my squeaky toys, I always find them. Hector chuckled too. He asked Sonny to go with him, and he'd take her on a tour. Sonny barked a goodbye to her owner and trotted after Hector. Sonny's owner said to Hector's owner, Are you sure it's okay to have Sonny all day? Of course, he replied. She's no trouble at all. Hector loves having her here. Sonny's owner nodded and said thank you. Sonny is due for a nap soon. I've brought her special blanket in case she needs it. She loves having a nap. Sometimes, when it's a hot day, she sleeps on her back with all four legs in the air and they twitch as though she's running. It's so sweet. Hector's owner said Hector sometimes curled up when he was asleep, and he looked like a golden croissant. He said, Hector loves having naps too, and falls asleep very easily. I expect they'll both have a nap soon. They chatted a little longer, and then said goodbye. 
Hector's owner went in search of the two dogs and found them in the living room. They were standing with their front paws on the windowsill. They were barking quietly to each other and kept making a noise that sounded like a laugh. Hector's owner smiled fondly at the dogs and wondered what they would say if they could talk. He went into the kitchen to make himself a cup of tea. Hector said to Sonny, Mrs. Brown over the road goes shopping soon, so we should give her a wave and say hello. And the postwoman will be here later on, so we'll give her a wave too. We might see a little boy coming back from his playgroup with his mum. They live down the road. We should give them two waves, maybe three. That's a lot of waving, Sonny said. I'd better practice. She waved her paw at some cats in next door's garden. They waved back. Hector noticed a door opening across the street. Oh, look, there's Mrs. Brown. Hello, Mrs. Brown. He waved his paw at the elderly woman who was coming out of her front door carrying empty shopping bags. Sonny waved at Mrs. Brown too. Mrs. Brown waved happily at the two dogs and blew them a kiss. She went on her way down the road. Hector said, We don't have to do any more waving for a while. Let's go into the kitchen and I'll show you my den. The dogs trotted into the kitchen just as Hector's owner was coming out. Hector and Sonny barked out a hello and padded past him. Hector led his friend over to the kitchen table and said it was a special den and sometimes he pretended it was a car that changed into an aeroplane and the aeroplane sometimes changed into a magic bed that flew through the stars. He said, Do you want to play at pretend now? You can drive the car. Sonny was about to say yes, but when she opened her mouth, a little yawn came out. Oh, Hector, I'm sorry about yawning. I feel a bit tired. I usually have a nap about this time. Oh, she yawned again. Hector said he usually had a nap too, but he hadn't finished showing her around the house yet and they hadn't even started to play with the toys he'd hidden in his basket. Sonny blinked tiredly and said, In that case, she would have a nap later on. She followed Hector out of the kitchen, back into the living room. Hector's owner was sitting in the middle of the sofa. He patted the cushion next to him and gave Hector an expectant look. Sonny asked her friend what was going on. Hector said, He wants me to have a nap. He likes it when I snuggle up next to him on the sofa. He's left room on the other side for you. But I'm not having a nap yet, Sonny said. She yawned. I'm not at all tired. Hector yawned. Oh! <sighs> I'm not tired either. Come on, let's have a look out of the window again. The postwoman will be here soon. Sonny, let's chase each other round the sofa on the way. Sonny was too tired to run around the sofa, so she walked slowly instead. Hector walked too, because his legs had run out of energy. The two friends returned to the window and were just in time to see the postwoman walking along the garden path. The dogs gave her happy waves. She waved back to them and put a parcel through Hector's front door. Hector barked in delight and told Sonny that racing his owner to the post was one of his favourite games and he told Sonny to do it too. 
the two dogs were fast. But Hector's owner was faster, and he got to the parcel first. He picked it up and put it on a shelf out of Hector's reach. His owner knelt next to the dogs and smiled gently at them. He began talking in a deep, soothing voice. Sonny yawned twice. Hector, what's your owner doing now? Why is he talking like that? Hector tried his best not to yawn, but he just couldn't help himself, and a huge yawn escaped from him. He told Sonny that his owner was using his soft, nap voice, and it always made Hector fall asleep. His owner continued talking in his deep, soft voice. The dogs couldn't stop yawning. They felt more and more tired. Sonny said, Perhaps we should have a nap now. I always feel better after a nap, don't you? Hector said, I do. I think napping is like a superpower. And I feel like a new dog when I've had one. Let's go into the living room. The rug in front of the fire is lovely and soft. It's the perfect place for a nap. On legs that were very, very tired, the dogs walked slowly into the living room. Sunny flocked onto the rug, her heavy eyes already closing. Just a minute, Sunny. You need a shoe. I'll get you one. Hector rummaged about in his basket and found a pair of shoes that he'd decided his owner didn't need any more. He gave one to Sonny and said, I always sleep better when I'm resting my chin on a shoe. I don't know why it works, but it does. Have a go. Sonny rested her chin on the shoe, smiled sleepily at Hector and said the shoe did feel comfy there. Hector laid at her side and put the other shoe under his chin. He let out a contented sigh and closed his tired eyes. He heard his owner coming into the room and sitting on the sofa. He was quietly humming a happy tune. Sunny and Hector felt warm and relaxed. Cosy and happy. They felt themselves drifting towards sleep. Hector let out another long yawn. Sunny yawned too. But to her utter surprise, her yawn turned into a loud snort. Hector's eyes opened. What was that strange noise, Sunny? Did you hear it? It was like a yawn snort. Sonny blinked. It was me. I don't know where it came from. It just popped out. She gave him an embarrassed grin. Hector grinned back at her. <laughs> it was a funny noise. Do it again. Sonny tried to make the same noise, but other sounds came out instead. Grunts, snuffles, wheezes, and a couple of hiccups. Each noise made the dogs giggle more and more. Hector sat up and made some strange noises too. Hoots, huffs, whistles, and to their astonishment, a meow. Sonny sat up and laughed and laughed at her funny friend. Hector's owner gave the dogs a puzzled look and wondered why they were suddenly wide awake. His brow wrinkled up as he tried to make sense of it. Then he smiled and looked like he'd had the most marvellous idea. He stood up and left the room. He returned with two dog leads and said the magic words. 
Let's go to the park. Hector and Sonny got to their feet and wagged their tails happily. A few minutes later, Hector and Sonny were walking with Hector's owner along the familiar streets that led to the park. Sonny said, Hector, what shall we do when we get to the park? She yawned and blinked tiredly. Hector yawned too. He said, If anyone is playing frisbee or football, we can join in with them. If there are any squirrels, we can chase them. Oh, he yawned again. Sonny nodded and told him not to forget about collecting sticks and giving them to Hector's owner to take home. Hector said he wouldn't forget that. He yawned again and added, We don't have to do all those things today, though. I'm a bit tired. Perhaps we should have stayed at home and had a nap. Sonny gave him a sleepy smile and said, We can have a nap later, after we've had some more fun. Hector agreed. They arrived at the park and walked along the path through the trees. A gentle breeze drifted leisurely through the trees, making the leaves rustle softly. The flower beds were abundant with colourful blooms and silver-laced ferns. Delicate aromas of lavender and rose perfumed the air. Hector's owner arrived at a bench and unfastened the dog's leads. He sat down and gave them a look, as though expecting them to run across the grass like they normally did. But Hector and Sonny were too tired to do any of that. They saw people playing frisbee and football, but they didn't join in. They saw lots of squirrels scampering around the trees, but they didn't chase after them. They saw a couple of sticks on the grass, but they weren't tempted to pick them up. And when they saw their dog friends playing on the grass, they didn't run over and have a chat with them like they usually did. They were just too tired. Hector and Sonny sat down in front of Hector's owner and gazed softly at the park. Hector said, I wish I could have a nap, but my mind is too busy thinking about all the fun we could be having. I don't want to miss out on having fun, but I'm too tired to move. Sonny said she felt the same and suggested they try having a nap again. Hector sighed and said, I don't think I can, Sonny. I've got too many thoughts running inside my head. How can I get rid of them? Sonny said she didn't know and she had lots of thoughts running around her head too. At that moment, a silver-furred squirrel appeared in front of them. It was Sydney. He was a friend of theirs, and he'd helped the dogs go on many amazing adventures. Sydney smiled at the dogs and said, Hello again. I couldn't help but overhear your conversation. I often have many thoughts in my head too, but... I found a way to get rid of them. Have you? Hector asked. Could you show us how to do that, please? We really want to have a nap. Sidney said of course he could show them. He sat down in front of the dogs and crossed his legs. In a slow, soothing voice, Sidney said, 
Settle yourselves down on the soft, comfy grass. You can lie on your front or your back, or even curl up on your side. Whatever feels comfortable for you. Gaze softly at whatever is in front of you. Notice the little details of whatever that is. Let your focus soften some more. Your eyes are feeling so very tired and heavy. Gently close your tired eyes. Now imagine there are some little white feathers in front of you, bobbing gently in the air. Watch them. See how they dip and bob in front of you. Imagine those feathers are your thoughts. Thoughts bobbing gently in front of you. Take a deep breath in and slowly blow it out towards your thought feathers. Watch as some of your thought feathers are blown away. Far, far away until you can't see them anymore. Take another deep breath in, slowly let it out, blow some more of your thought feathers away, watch them float away, far, far away until you can't see them anymore. Another deep breath in, and slowly blow it out. All your thought feathers are floating away now, further and further away, until you can't see them anymore. Take another deep breath in. Slowly breathe out. Breathe in. And out. Breathe in. And out. Your eyes are so very tired and it feels wonderful to keep them closed. A warm feeling of relaxation flows over your body like a warm wave of sunshine. You are peaceful and calm and so very relaxed. It feels wonderful to rest, to sleep for a while. Let that warm feeling of relaxation wash over you again like liquid sunshine. You are so very relaxed and sleepy. You drift easily into a relaxing nap. Sydney the squirrel stopped talking. Hector and Sunny were fast asleep and enjoying a restful nap. Sydney settled down next to his friends and he had a nap too. Chapter 6 Hector and Sunny's Magical Bus Ride It was a warm morning and a beautiful golden retriever by the name of Hector was on a walk with his owner. They strolled along the streets together and Hector made sure he barked out a cheery hello to everyone they met. Hector's owner stopped in front of a bus stop and gave it a puzzled look. He said to Hector, Hmm, I've never noticed this bus stop before. Have you? It must be new. Hector barked a reply and said he'd never seen it before either. His owner didn't speak dog but seemed to understand Hector's reply. Hector moved nearer to the bus stop and sniffed it. It didn't smell of anything and that was unusual. 
because in Hector's expert opinion, everything had a smell. Hector looked closely at the new bus stop. He noticed tiny silver sparkles on it, which twinkled in the sunlight. The silver reminded him of a certain squirrel called Sydney, who had magical powers and had taken Hector and his friend on exciting adventures. Was the bus stop magical? And if so, how did it work? Hector wished his best friend Sunny was there to answer his questions. He hadn't seen her for a whole day and was missing her a lot. At that moment, something familiar happened. The world around Hector came to a standstill and his owner froze in time. Something magical was about to happen. Hector heard the sound of a bus approaching. He looked along the road and saw a bus driving towards him. It was silver and a dog was driving it. The bus came to a stop right next to Hector. With a whoosh, the doors opened and the driver a Jack Russell wearing a blue cap gave Hector a big grin and said, Hello there, my name is Rascal. Would you like to take a ride on the Magical Bus Express? If so, climb on board and my brother Gizmo will show you to your seat. Hector said, Oh, I'd love to get on your bus, but can we pick up my friend Sonny, please? She's my best friend in the whole world, and I don't want to have an adventure without her. Still smiling, Rascal replied, Of course, our next stop will be at Sonny's house. My good friend, Sidney the Squirrel, told me about your previous adventures together, and he thought it was time you had another one. Climb on board. Hector took another look at his owner. He was still frozen in time and would stay like that until Hector returned. Hector jumped onto the bus and padded down the aisle. Another Jack Russell wearing a blue cap was waiting for him and said his name was Gizmo. He showed Hector to a window seat and said they would be picking up Sonny next and also that other dogs would join them further along. Hector said, Where are we going on our journey? Gizmo grinned. Anywhere you want to. And it depends where the other passengers want to go, too. You might be able to help them with that. Hector settled down further in the seat and looked out of the window. Another adventure. How exciting. And he would get to see Sunny again, too. The bus set off and trundled down the road. It turned a few corners and came to a stop outside Sunny's house. There was a new silver bus stop outside her house, just like the one Hector had seen. Sonny's owner was frozen in time in front of the bus stop, a puzzled look on her face. And Sonny? Well, Sonny was standing at the bus stop. Her beautiful blue eyes glowed with happiness when she saw Hector on the silver bus. Like a flash, she leapt through the open doors of the bus and bounded over to her best friend. Hector, hi, Sonny beamed at her friend. We're going on another adventure. Do you know where we're going? Hector told Sonny what Gizmo had said. Sonny nodded and said it all sounded very exciting. Hector and Sonny heard a noise at the front of the bus and saw two dogs climbing on. They looked over at Sunny and waved to her. 
Hector had never seen the dogs before, and asked Sonny who they were. It's Robbie and Lola, Sonny replied. They moved onto my street yesterday afternoon. I had a lovely chat with them and told them about our magical adventures. They liked hearing about how we had met Sydney and followed him into dreamland. They said they would love to go there one day. Robbie and Lola said hello to Hector and Sonny and sat in the seats behind them. Robbie leaned forward and said eagerly, Do you think this bus is going to dreamland? I really hope it is. A thoughtful look fell over Hector's face. Sunny smiled at him. She knew he was about to come up with a wonderful idea. She was right. Hector beckoned Gizmo over and asked if the bus driver could take them to Dreamland. Gizmo said of course, and his brother knew where to find Sydney, the silver-furred squirrel, who would lead them into the magical place. The bus set off and the passengers gazed happily out of the windows. A few minutes later, the bus came to another silver-coloured bus stop. This time, a dog and a cat got on. They walked down the aisle and said hello to everyone. The dog said, My name is Peanut Butter, and this is my best friend, Jelly. We saw that new bus stop appearing a few minutes ago and had a feeling we should stand there. And then... This bus came along. Does anyone know where it's going? Hector told Peanut Butter and Jelly it was going to Dreamland. He then told them that it was a place where dreams came true and they could go to it too. How wonderful, Peanut Butter said with a big smile on his furry face. He looked out of the window. Oh! Our friends are running towards the bus. Can we wait for them? Can they come to Dreamland with us? The driver of the bus, Rascal, had already spotted another cat and dog running towards the vehicle. He opened the doors and gave them a welcoming smile. The new passengers climbed on board. The dog was called Bella and the cat was called Sunday. When they heard where the bus was going, they broke into huge smiles and said they couldn't wait to visit Dreamland. The dogs and cats settled down in their seats and the bus set off. It soon arrived at the park where Sydney, the silver-furred squirrel, lived. Hector and Sonny weren't at all surprised to see the squirrel waiting for the bus. Sonny said to Hector, It's almost like he knew we were coming here. Everyone got off the bus, including Rascal and Gizmo, who said they were going to buy some gravy-flavoured ice creams. Sydney said hello to everyone and that he knew why they were there. He said, If you'd like to follow me, I will take you into dreamland. You can return at any time, and the silver bus will collect you and take you home. Hector, Sonny, are you coming with us? Hector and Sonny shared a look. They were thinking the same thing. Hector said, hmm, Not this time, thank you. We want to go back on the bus and see where it goes next. Sunny was about to agree with him, but she noticed a little corgi looking at them. His name was Mika and he was a good friend of theirs. Hector and Sunny 
often played running games with Mika. And even though he had little legs, the corgi always ran as fast as he possibly could. Mika had told them that he often dreamed about winning a running race. But, alas, he didn't think his dream would ever come true. Sonny waved at Mika and asked him to come closer. He jogged over on his little legs and said hello. Sonny explained about Dreamland and how the dogs and cats in front of her were about to enter it. She said, You can go there too, and your dream of winning a running race will finally come true. Mika's little mouth fell open in delighted surprise. Sonny gave him a gentle nudge and the corgi moved towards the others. Sydney waved goodbye to Hector and Sonny and took the animals through a magical tree and into dreamland. Hector and Sonny knew their friends would have a wonderful time there. Hector and Sonny climbed back onto the bus. Rascal and Gizmo returned with ice creams for all of them. The dogs chatted whilst they ate their delicious treats. Rascal got back into the driver's seat and off they went down the road. At the next silver bus stop, a Labrador wearing sunglasses and a denim jacket got on. He sauntered casually down the aisle and sat in the middle of the back seat. Hector and Sonny silently stared at the cool-looking dog, impressed by his jacket and sunglasses. Hector whispered to Sonny, Who is that cool dude? I've never seen him before. Sonny whispered back. He's called Maverick. I've seen him at the park, but I've always been too shy to talk to him. Hector looked over his shoulder at Maverick and smiled. Maverick took off his sunglasses and gave Hector a friendly wink. Because Hector had to say hello to everyone he met, he just couldn't help himself from walking over to Maverick and sitting next to him. He introduced himself and asked Maverick where he was going. Sonny joined the two dogs and smiled bashfully at Maverick. The Labrador told them he was a lover of art, and when he saw the silver bus, he got on, hoping it would go in the direction of an art gallery. He asked Hector if he knew where the bus was going. It can go anywhere you want it to, Hector replied. He waved to Gizmo and asked if they could go to an art gallery. Of course, Gizmo replied. There's one further along this road. We'll make a stop there. The bus soon came to a stop outside an art gallery. Hector, Sonny and Maverick got off. The bus driver and conductor said they would have a nap whilst they waited for the dogs to return. Hector and Sonny walked with their new friend into the art gallery. It was one that was dedicated to dogs. Once through the door, they saw some marble statues. One was of a dog holding the world on his back, and another was of a dog sitting down with a look of deep thinking etched onto his marble face. Sonny said to Hector, That's what you look like when you're having deep thoughts. 
Hector copied the pose and made them both chuckle. The three dogs looked at the oil paintings on the walls. There was a picture of King Charles Spaniel I, King Charles Spaniel II, and King Charles Spaniel III. They all looked very regal, and Sunny couldn't help herself from curtsying in front of them. She'd seen someone on the television doing that in front of the Queen, and she felt like it was the appropriate thing to do. Hector tried to curtsy too, but he fell over. The dogs looked at a painting of a dog with long hair who was smiling gently. Her smile was so lovely and kind, and it made the dog smile back at her. The next painting they saw was made of tiny golden squares and showed a couple of dogs holding hands and gazing at each other in a soppy way, like they were about to kiss. Hector and Sonny giggled like puppies at the painting. Maverick shook his head good-naturedly at them. They continued to look at other paintings and statues, and then Hector and Sonny decided they had seen enough. They asked Maverick if he wanted to go back to the bus with them. No, thank you, he replied. I want to stay here a bit longer and absorb the artistic air of this splendid building and its resplendent displays. Hector and Sonny had no idea what he was talking about, but they nodded wisely as if they understood. They said goodbye and went back to the bus. Gizmo and Rascal woke up from their nap and welcomed Hector and Sonny back. The silver bus set off down the road once more. The next passengers they picked up were two dogs called Dakota and Nymeria. They were wearing rainbow-coloured T-shirts and carrying instruments, which they told the other dogs were called sitars. They sat behind Hector and Sonny and asked if they'd heard of a fairy called Bliss. Hector and Sonny hadn't and asked who she was. A faraway smile alighted on Dakota's face. She's a fairy who travels the world, teaching everyone about the importance of peace, love and music. We've created some soothing songs and want to play them to her. I hope we can find her somewhere. Sonny came up with an idea and said, From what I've heard, fairies usually live in forests. I'll ask Gizmo if we can go to the nearest one, and you can ask the animals who live in the forest about bliss. What do you say? Is that a good idea? Dakota and Nymeria thought it was an excellent idea. Sonny talked to Gizmo. He said she was in luck because they were about to drive past a place called Sleepy Forest and he knew that many magical beings lived there. Sleepy Forest appeared on the horizon and the silver bus pulled up next to it. Nymeria and Dakota asked Hector and Sonny if they wanted to go with them, and even though the thought of meeting a fairy called Bliss was tempting, they said no thank you, and wished the other dogs a successful journey. Hector gazed at Sleepy Forest, and told Sunny they should explore it one day. Sunny agreed. The bus continued along the road. 
Two more dog passengers soon boarded the bus. They were wearing superhero capes made out of tea towels. Their names were Thor and Parker, but their superhero names were Thor the Thunder Dog and Parker the Spider Dog. The new passengers got talking to Hector and Sonny and asked if they knew of any dogs who needed rescuing. Thor the Thunder Dog explained, We need to practice our superhero skills, and the best way to do that is by rescuing other dogs. Hector noticed an adventure park coming up ahead and asked Gizmo if they could stop there for a while. The bus came to a stop at the adventure park, and Hector asked the superheroes and Sonny to join him outside. They got off the bus. Hector said, Sonny and I can pretend we need rescuing, and then you can practice your skills. The superheroes thought that was a fabulous idea. They closed their eyes and told Hector and Sonny to get into position. Sonny climbed onto a rope bridge and pretended to be scared of heights. She wasn't at all scared, but did an excellent job of pretending she was. Hector wriggled into a tyre and pretended he was stuck. It took him all of two seconds to realise that he really was stuck. He called out to Thunderdog and Spiderdog and asked for help. The superheroes raced over to him and pushed and pulled. Then they pulled and pushed but Hector remained stuck. From up on her rope bridge, Sunny smiled and shook her head at the rescue attempts. She leapt easily off the bridge and ran over to Hector. She knew her friend very well, and she knew how ticklish he was. She tickled Hector behind his ears. Hector giggled and wiggled his way right out of the tyre. Once he was free, he thanked Sonny for rescuing him. Thunderdog and Spiderdog said they had probably loosened Hector first. Sonny smiled gently at them and said they probably had. Hector and Sonny decided to return to the silver bus. The superhero dogs said they would play at the adventure park a bit longer and see if anyone else needed rescuing. The silver bus set off down the road again. Each time new passengers got on, Hector and Sonny would help them find the perfect place to visit. First of all, they helped a mother and daughter called Bella and Giggy and their friend Penny go on an adventure to the city. They had never left the countryside before and were eager to see what the city had to offer. Hector and Sonny took them to a movie theatre, a restaurant, and then a shopping centre. The three country dogs decided to stay at the shopping centre and buy some new clothes. The next two dogs to board the bus were called Oreo and Howie. They were looking for a birthday present for one of their friends. Gizmo knew the perfect place to go and told his brother to head towards a toy shop that was just for dogs. It didn't take them long to get there. 
The toy shop was in the shape of a huge kennel, and inside it were the most amazing toys and treats that any of the dogs had ever seen. There were squeaky toys in the shape of pizzas, dinosaurs, and spaceships. There was even one that looked like a stick. Hector and Sonny loved that one. They saw lots of chew toys and balls in all shapes and sizes. The dogs were utterly amazed to see a ball that returned itself to whoever had thrown it. Hector kept throwing the ball into the distance, and a few moments later, the ball would roll back to him. Hector had to sit down because it was too amazing for him to take in. Oreo and Howie said they would stay at the toy shop a while longer because there were so many toys to choose from and they didn't want to rush. Hector and Sonny went back to the bus. The last passengers of the day were two dogs called Winnie and Greta. They were wearing their best dresses and finest hats. Winnie said hello to Hector and Sonny and asked if they knew any fancy hotels where they could have an afternoon tea. She had heard her owner talk about having an afternoon tea many times and thought it sounded like a delightful experience. Neither Hector nor Sonny knew what afternoon tea was, so Winnie explained it was a delicious treat of sandwiches and cakes, all washed down by cups of refreshing tea. The thought of food made Hector and Sonny's tummies rumble and they asked if they could join Winnie and Greta. Greta said, of course, but we still need to find a fancy hotel. Leave that to me, Sonny said. She talked to Gizmo, and he knew of the perfect place. Not only did it have a wonderful dining room, but the hotel also had a golf course. Gizmo said, My brother and I love playing golf and keep our golf clubs in the bus, just in case we need them. We can play a round or two of golf whilst you have your fancy afternoon tea. The silver bus drove towards a grand-looking hotel and pulled into the car park. Gizmo and Rascal collected their gold clubs and went off to play golf. Hector, Sonny, Winnie and Greta headed into the hotel and towards the dining room. They were greeted by a friendly-looking dog dressed in a suit. He said his name was Frank, and he would be their waiter. Frank led them to a table that was covered in a delicate lace tablecloth. The dog sat down and gave their order to Frank. Frank hurried away and returned less than a minute later with plates overflowing with soft sandwiches, scrumptious scones and cream-filled cakes. There was a huge pot of tea and a jug of cold water. Hector and Sonny tried the hot tea but didn't think much of it and had water instead. The afternoon tea was utterly delicious. Hector and Sonny ate their portions and licked their plates clean. Winnie and Greta 
couldn't eat all of theirs, and asked Frank for doggy bags to take the rest of their food home. With full tummies, the four dogs returned to the silver bus. Gizmo and Rascal had finished their game of golf and were putting their clubs away. Everyone climbed onto the bus. Having a full tummy made Hector sleepy, and as soon as he sat down in his comfy seat, he closed his eyes and fell asleep. Sunny leaned against her friend and fell asleep too. Sometime later, Sunny and Hector were gently woken up by Gizmo. He told them they were nearly home. Hector asked if they had picked up the other dogs on the way back. Gizmo said, We did. Everyone's had an amazing day. I know they'll sleep well tonight. He looked through the window. Sonny, this is your stop. It's been wonderful having you on board. I hope we'll see you again soon. Sonny said goodbye to Hector and got off the bus. She stood next to her owner, who was still frozen in time. The silver bus pulled away. Hector waved at his best friend. Hector was the last passenger on the bus. When it was his time to get off, he said thank you to Rascal and Gizmo for such a lovely adventure. Hector jumped off the bus and waved goodbye to the bus driver and conductor. The silver bus drove on down the road. Then, in a cloud of silver sparkles, the bus disappeared. The silver bus stop vanished too. Hector's owner became unfrozen. He blinked in surprise and said, Hector, I thought I saw a new bus stop here, but now it's gone. <laughs> what do you make of that? Did I imagine it? Hector barked and told his owner he hadn't imagined it at all. His owner gave Hector a long look and said, Sometimes, Hector, there's a knowing look in your eyes, and I think you're trying to tell me something. Come on, pal, let's go to the park. Perhaps we can call on Sunny on the way and see if she wants to come with us. Hector smiled. Seeing Sunny twice, in one day, would make his magical day even more magical. Chapter 7 Hector and Sunny and the Aztec Mystery It was a cosy, dark evening in early November and Sunny's owner was having a party at her house. Everyone was invited, including Sunny's very best friend, a beautiful golden retriever called Hector. When Hector arrived at the party with his owner, he was amazed at how much Sunny's house had changed since he'd last been there. His owner had told him they were going to a party, but it wasn't like any party Hector had been to before. Brightly coloured paper squares hung from the ceilings and doors. 
they had been cut to create scenes of happy ancestors, dancing and playing guitar, or to create images of flowers and carriages and candles. Sunny's owner had explained to Sunny when she strung them up that these were called papel picado, decorations to celebrate the Day of the Dead. Sunny didn't really know what that meant, but she thought they were very pretty. Green, red and white blooms bobbed above tables and chairs. Jolly music came from speakers dotted around the room and two long tables were covered in food and drink. Hector padded over to Sunny, said hello to her and asked her what kind of party it was. Sunny said, It's a Mexican-themed party. I watched a TV program with my owner a few weeks ago and we saw someone having a party just like this one. My owner said it was just the thing to do to brighten up the late autumn nights. I helped her get everything ready and barked when she had the balloons in the right place. I popped a few balloons because they looked too big to me. Hector said, <laughs> That was kind of you. What's a Mexican-themed party? Is it like a birthday party? Sunny explained. The party we saw on the TV was taking place in a country called Mexico. My owner said she would love to go there one day. I think I would too. Hector's nose twitched. He glanced at the food tables and asked Sunny what the food was like and if there was anything just for them. Sunny said, follow me and I'll show you what people are eating. And yes, my owner has prepared something special just for us. You know how much she loves us. Hector smiled and said he loved Sunny's owner too. The two dogs walked through the forest of human legs and stood next to the food table. When no one was looking, they stood on their hind legs and put their front paws on the table, careful not to touch any of the plates. Sunny said, Those little round corn tortillas are used to build things called tacos. You can fill them with those things that are in dishes next to them. There are dips and chips over there, and some warm food in the oven called tamales and enchiladas. There are some other things, but I can't remember the names of them all. My owner let me try some of the dips, but I didn't like them. Sunny pulled a funny face. Hector chuckled. The dogs dropped to the floor and moved away from the table. The music got louder and more people started dancing, including Hector's owner. Seeing his owner so happy made Hector dance too, and he jigged from side to side. And seeing Hector so happy made Sunny dance too. The dogs danced to the cheerful music and watched people filling up their plates at the food table. Sunny sighed and said, oh, I wish we could go to Mexico right now. I think you'd like it. Maybe we will go there one day, Hector replied with a smile. Sunny, could we have some food now, please? All this dancing has made me hungry. Sunny said of course and led Hector into the conservatory where bowls of food and water had been laid out for the dogs. Two comfy dog beds were set up too, in case they needed a nap. The door to the conservatory had been left open a little to let some fresh air in. The two dogs enjoyed the delicious food and followed it with a long, refreshing drink of cool water. They gazed out at the back garden, which was illuminated with fairy lights. The moon was bright in the sky, and the stars twinkled. Hector blinked and looked closer at the garden. Sonny, did you see that? I thought I saw a flash of silver fur out there. Sonny shook her head. I didn't. But if you saw silver fur, then that can only mean one thing. 
the dogs looked at each other and grinned. At the same time, they said, It must be Sydney the squirrel. Sydney the squirrel was a magical animal who had taken Hector and Sonny on many exciting adventures. The two dogs eased themselves out through the open patio door and bounded out onto the grass. Their lovely friend, Sydney, was there. His silver fur glittered under the light of the moon. He gave them a big smile and waved at them. Hector and Sonny barked in happiness and asked if Sydney was there for the Mexican-themed party. Sonny said he could come inside and meet their owners. He could stay a while and dance with them too. Sydney said, I'm not here for the party, but thank you for the invitation. I haven't seen you two for a while, so I thought I'd stop by and say hello. His smile grew bigger and his silver tail twitched happily. He continued, Hector, Sonny, would you like to go on another adventure right now? The two dogs said yes immediately and their tails wagged furiously at the thought of another adventure. Sonny asked them where they'd like to go. Without any hesitation, Sonny said, Mexico, I would love to visit Mexico, please. Hector, would you like to go there too? Hector nodded. Sydney said, I had a feeling you might want to visit Mexico and I have already hidden two silver sombreros in this garden. Once you put them on, time will freeze here and you'll be transported to Mexico. When you want to come back, just bark three times. Well, you know what to do. Have a wonderful time. With a flash of his silver tail, Sidney leapt onto the fence. He waved at the dogs and then jumped down into the neighbour's garden and out of view. Hector and Sonny grinned at each other again and began their hunt for the silver sombreros. It didn't take them long at all, and they discovered the hats nestled in the grass at the bottom of the garden. The hats were the perfect size for a golden retriever and a cocker spaniel. The dogs put on the silver hats and looked at each other. Before they could say how wonderful the other one looked, time froze for the party guests inside Sonny's house and the people became as still as statues. The garden faded from view and the two dogs were magically transported into another world, a world full of colour and music. It was now daytime and Hector and Sonny found themselves standing at the side of a cobbled road. Brightly painted houses and shops stood on either side of the road, and long lines of rainbow-coloured paper squares were festooned between the buildings, fluttering gently in the warm breeze. People in vivid costumes and bright face paints danced along the road, singing and clapping in time to the merry music that filled the air. The ladies wore long, bouncing skirts, covered in sequins and flowers of all colours. Some had ribbons and flowers in their hair, and some wore colourful sombreros. Many of the men wore sombreros too, and they had heeled leather boots on their feet and colourful scarves around their necks. Everybody had painted their faces to look like smiling skulls. The sound of the music was so joyful that it made Hector and Sonny dance too. The road was scattered with bright orange petals and some of them drifted towards the dogs and landed on their noses. Sonny looked closer at the petals 
and told Hector they were from a flower called a marigold. Sonny's owner was a keen gardener and often told Sonny the names of the flowers and plants in their garden. Hector shook the marigold petals off his nose and watched them flutter to the ground. He asked Sonny why the road was covered in marigold petals. Sonny replied, I don't know, but there's a little dog across the road. He might know. Shall we ask him? It was in Hector's nature to say hello to every dog he ever met, so he didn't hesitate to say yes. With their silver sombreros perched on their heads, the two dogs jigged their way across the road to the little chihuahua who was dancing there. He had golden fluffy fur that was a little lighter in colour than Hector's, and his ears and tail were snowy white. When he saw Hector and Sonny approaching him, he smiled and said, Hello there. I haven't seen you two around town before. Have you just moved here? Sort of, Sonny replied. A silver squirrel called Sidney used his magic to bring us here. Oh, the chihuahua said his little face scrunched up in confusion. Sunny gave a longer explanation and then introduced herself and Hector. The chihuahua smiled and said, My name is Tabasco. It's so exciting that you're here on an adventure. I wish I could go on an adventure, but I'm not brave enough. Hector said, My owner always tells me that people are much braver than they think they are, and dogs are too. Perhaps you will have an adventure soon. Tabasco said he hoped so. Sonny looked at the dancing people on the road and asked if it was someone's birthday. Tabasco said today is the 2nd of November, and we celebrate a wonderful festival here called Dia de Muertos. Oh, Hector and Sonny said, their faces scrunched up in confusion. Tabasco said it means Day of the Dead. It's when we remember those family members and friends who are no longer with us. We think about the lovely times we had with them, the laughter and the hugs, the singing and the dancing, all those great times we shared. That's why everyone is so happy. They're thinking about their loved ones. Hector smiled and said, Oh, that has made me feel all warm and happy inside. What a lovely thing to celebrate. Can you tell me why there are marigold petals on the road? Tabasco told them that the smell and colour of the bright flowers were there to welcome any friends or family members from the past who might want to share the special celebration. Hector and Sonny were a little bewildered by Tabasco's reply, but nodded anyway. The three dogs watched the bright procession of people dancing by them. The dogs wiggled their bottoms and nodded in time to the music. Tabasco told his new friends he was on her way to visit his granddad's favourite place and would they like to go with him. It was only a short distance out of town and they could dance all the way there. Hector and Sonny said they would love to. The three dogs joined the dancing people and they bopped on down the road. When they came to a bend in the road, Tabasco told his friends to follow him. He danced away from the people and along a narrow street that was also carpeted in bright orange marigold petals. Hector and Sonny followed Tabasco. Tabasco led them out of the town, through a field 
and towards a gently sloping hill. At the top of the hill was an old oak tree. Even though they could no longer hear the music from the town, the dogs continued to dance. They jigged up the hill and stopped beneath the branches of the tree. The dogs looked out at the town below and saw colourful ribbons of people dancing along the roads and streets. Tabasco sat on the soft grass and sighed happily. Hector and Sonny sat next to him. Tabasco said, This was my granddad's favourite place to rest. I come here sometimes to think about him. He loved looking at the town and, if you look behind you, you'll see an old temple that's been there for thousands of years. It's from the Aztec times. Grandad loved looking at that too. Hector and Sonny looked behind them. A four-sided pyramid made from pale bricks rose from the trees that surrounded it. The top of the temple was flat, and the dogs saw a small stairway running up the outside of the pyramid. They asked Tabasco if he had ever been inside the temple. With a small smile, he said, My grandad used to go there often. I've never been brave enough to explore it, but now that I've met you two adventurers, maybe I will go inside it one day. The dogs rested beneath the tree and looked back at the town. Hector shuffled about in the grass, trying to get comfortable. He shifted this way and that, but something was getting in the way of his comfort. He stood up and looked at the grass. Something small and silver was poking through the blades of grass. Hector gave the item a nudge with his nose so that he could see it better. Tabasco and Sonny noticed what he was doing. They stood up and moved over to Hector. They stared at the peculiar item. Hector said, It looks like a silver coin. And there's a picture of a temple on it. It looks like that temple behind us. Tabasco, is this your coin? Tabasco said he'd never seen it before and didn't know where it had come from. Hector gave Tabasco one of his biggest grins and said, I think it has come from that Aztec temple and we should take it back. Sonny, Tabasco, what do you say? Shall we go on a little adventure and return this coin to the temple? Tabasco barked out a loud yes and twirled around in delight. Sonny and Hector joined in with his twirling celebration. When they'd finished twirling, Sonny carefully tucked the precious coin into Hector's collar for safekeeping. Tabasco knew the way to the temple and led the others down the hill, through the trees and over to the magnificent stone structure. The three dogs stopped in front of the temple and looked up and up and up. Sonny said, Wow, it goes right into the clouds. She turned to Tabasco and asked where the entrance was. Tabasco said, I don't know. My granddad told me there was a secret door somewhere, and when I asked him where it was, he said, I should follow my nose and I would find it. I've no idea what he meant by that. Hmm, 
Hector said, a thoughtful expression on his face. Follow your nose? Maybe there's a special plant that's growing next to the secret door and it has a very strong smell. Shall we walk around the temple and see if we find anything that smells interesting? Sonny and Tabasco said yes and formed a line behind Hector. The three investigating dogs walked slowly around the temple, their noses on full alert. The dogs didn't smell anything other than stone, flowers and softly scented wild grass. They returned to their starting position and looked at each other in puzzlement. Hector said, Okay, so that didn't work, so let's try something else. Tabasco said, My nose is at a lower level than yours. Perhaps the secret door will be at my nose height and not yours. Shall we walk around it again with me at the front? and I'll have a good stare at the walls. Unless you think that is a silly idea. Hector and Sonny said it was a brilliant idea. The three dogs set off on another journey around the temple, this time with Tabasco at the front. The little chihuahua stared intently at the temple's walls as he walked along. A few minutes after setting off, Tabasco came to a sudden stop and said, I think I've found something. It's not a doorway, but there's a peculiar dip in the wall here, and... It's at the same height as my nose. I'm going to try something. He took a step forward and gently placed his little nose into the dip. It was a perfect fit. The dogs heard the sound of moving stone and a moment later, a secret door in front of Tabasco slowly opened. Tabasco grinned at the others and said, I did follow my nose, just like my granddad told me. He must have used his nose here, too. Shall we go inside? Hector and Sonny said yes, and together the three dogs walked through the secret opening of the Aztec temple. They entered a large room. There were many gaps in the walls and the sun's rays slanted through them and lit up the room. Pictures covered the walls and even though the emerald green and gold paint had faded a little over the years, the dogs could clearly see the images of people playing instruments and performing ceremonies. Hector said they should investigate the room and see if there was anywhere to put the silver coin. Perhaps they would find a treasure chest full of coins and they could put it in there. The dogs wandered slowly around the beautiful room but didn't find anywhere to put the coin. Sonny noticed some stone steps leading upwards and suggested they climb them and see where they led. The other dogs agreed with her suggestion and climbed the steps together. The steps took them up and up, and then outside and onto the flat area right at the very top of the temple. The paved surface was surrounded by a low wall, Tabasco walked over to the wall that faced the hill and the oak tree. He imagined his granddad standing at the same place he was in and looking 
at the same view. He placed his front paws on the wall. There was a little dip in one of the stones. Tabasco stared at it. The dip was as small as the silver coin and had the same circular shape. Tabasco told the others what he had found and asked them if the silver coin should go in the dip. Hector lowered his head and told Tabasco to take the silver coin from his collar and try it. Tabasco did so. He carefully placed the coin into the dip. The silver coin was a perfect fit. As the dogs looked at the coin, something magical began to happen. The sky started to change. It grew darker and darker. The full moon appeared. Star upon star twinkled into view until the sky was full of glittering light. Tabasco said, What's going on? Sunny whispered, It's magic. Something wonderful is happening. The glittering stars above them began to move closer and closer to each other and formed small clusters. The clusters of stars changed into the shapes of shimmering dogs of all sizes and species. Tabasco smiled and said, one of the star dogs looked like his granddad. Gentle music drifted through the sky. Beautiful, happy music that filled Hector, Sunny and Tabasco's hearts with joy. They swayed slowly from side to side in time to the starry music. The star-shaped dogs above them danced to and fro across the dark sky. The music continued playing. The star-shaped dogs continued dancing. Hector, Sunny and Tabasco's heart overflowed with love at the beautiful event that was taking place above them. After a while, the music slowed and came to a stop. The star-shaped dogs stopped dancing. They raised their twinkling paws to the dogs on the temple top and waved to them. The three dogs waved back. The stars faded and the moon vanished. The sun returned and filled the sky with its golden glow. The three friends shared soft looks and said they would never forget the amazing star show they had just seen. Tabasco yawned and said it was time for his nap. Hector and Sonny yawned too and said they should be getting home. Hector collected the silver coin from the wall and tucked it into Tabasco's collar. He said, Now that you know the way in, you can come back any time you want to. Your granddad must have hidden that coin beneath the tree, hoping that you'd find it one day. And come here. Tabasco smiled at the lovely thought and said, I'm so glad we met and went on our Aztec adventure together. 
Do you think you'll come back another time? I'd love to see you both again. Hector and Sonny said they would love to see him again one day. Tabasco said goodbye and jogged down the temple steps. Hector and Sonny stayed on top of the temple for a few more minutes and watched the tiny figure of Tabasco running out of the temple through the forest and up onto the hill where the oak tree was. The little dog settled down beneath the branches of the tree. Hector and Sonny imagined him smiling softly before falling asleep. The two dogs barked three times, and in a flash of silver they were back home and in the garden again. It was night time, they took off their silver sombreros and hid them at the back of the shed, in case they needed them again in the future. They went inside the house where the party was still in full swing. The dogs were too tired to join in with any dancing, so they settled down in their comfy dog beds and smiled fondly at each other. Sonny whispered, I hope we have another adventure soon. Me too, Hector whispered back. The two best friends smiled at each other again, closed their eyes and gently fell asleep. Chapter 8 Hector and Sonny Meet Coco It was a wonderfully lazy afternoon and a beautiful golden retriever by the name of Hector was at the park with his best friend Sonny, a kind-hearted cocker spaniel with eyes the colour of the summer sky. Their owners were with them, and they walked behind the dogs at a leisurely pace. After walking around the park for a while, Hector and Sonny's owners led the dogs over to a bench and sat down. The two dogs settled on the grass in front of their owners and gazed softly at their surroundings. Sonny smiled sleepily at Hector and said, it's one of those lovely days when there's nothing much to do. I love days like this. I'm so relaxed that I could fall asleep right now. She rested on her tummy and put her chin on her paws. Hector said, I totally agree with you, Sonny. I've already had three naps today, but I'm ready for another one. <sighs> he yawned and laid on his tummy too. I think we must be the sleepiest animals in the whole world. I don't think anyone sleeps as much as we do. Sunny smiled in agreement. She blinked as a thought landed lightly in her mind. She raised her head, looked at her sleepy friend and said, Hector! Do you remember that magical bus ride we went on? We met lots of dogs and a few cats. We had a wonderful time. Hector said he remembered all their adventures. Sonny continued. Do you remember one of the stops we made at a place called Sleepy Forest? The bus conductor Gizmo told us that fairies lived in the forest and we thought it looked like a lovely place, and we should visit it one day. 
the corner of Hector's mouth turned up in a half smile. I do remember that, Sonny. Yes, we should go there one day. That's a good idea. Sonny sat up. Hector, why don't we go there now? There might be lots of sleepy animals who live in that forest, and we can ask them if they love sleeping as much as we do. All thoughts of having a nap vanished from Hector's mind. He sat up and said, Yes, let's do that. Let's have another adventure. We'll need Sidney's help with that. Have you seen him anywhere? He's usually dashing about in a park. Sidney was a silver-furred squirrel with magical abilities. He had helped the dogs go on many exciting adventures. Sonny scanned the park and said, There he is, scampering down that tree. She waved her paw energetically and yelled, Hey, Sydney, hi, over here. It's us, Hector and Sonny. On the bench, Sonny's owner gave Hector's owner an embarrassed smile and said, I don't know why Sonny's barking so loudly. I thought she was about to have a nap. Hector's owner shrugged and said their dogs were peculiar sometimes. As if to prove his owner's point, Hector suddenly leapt to his feet and began barking as loudly as he possibly could in an attempt to get Sidney's attention. His barking worked because Sidney ran over to the dogs. The dog's owners shared a surprised look at the appearance of the silver-furred squirrel who suddenly appeared in front of them. The squirrel started chattering, and it almost looked like he was talking to the dogs. But that was such a ridiculous thought that neither of the humans said anything and talked about the weather instead. The humans were wrong, of course. The squirrel was talking to the dogs. Hello again, you two, he said. It's great to see you. How are you? The dogs said they were great and asked how Sydney was. The squirrel said he was super duper and thanked them for asking. His little eyes twinkled in glee and he asked if they were ready to go on another adventure. Sonny answered for them both and told Sydney about Sleepy Forest and how much they would like to go there. The squirrel said he'd been there many times and the animals who lived there were very friendly. I can send you there right now, Sydney said. Could you please take something to a friend of mine? Out of nowhere, he produced a tub of extra chocolatey hot chocolate. He asked Sunny if she could gently tie it around her neck on a soft ribbon. He said it wasn't at all heavy. Sunny said of course and lowered her head to allow Sydney to tie the tub around her. To her surprise, the tub was as light as a feather. With a smile on his little furry face, Sydney said, It's for my good friend Coco. He's a little koala who you'll meet very soon. Again, from out of nowhere, Sydney produced two small silver buttons that were in the shape of eucalyptus leaves. He gave a button to each dog and reminded them to bark three times when they wanted to come home. Sydney waved goodbye and scampered away. Time froze, and the dog's owners became as still as statues. The park faded from view, and the two dogs were magically transported into another world, a world full of trees and sunshine. Hector and Sonny had arrived in Sleepy Forest. The silver buttons they were holding 
melted away like ice on a hot day. The dogs were standing on a path that wound through the beautiful trees of the forest. Rays of sun slanted down through gaps in the branches and cast dancing sunbeams across the ground. The sweet songs of birds mingled with the gentle buzz of bumblebees and the soft babble of a nearby stream. There was a wonderful, relaxing feel to the forest, and Sunny said she could lie down on the grass and fall asleep immediately. Hector smiled, but was only half listening, because another sound had caught his attention. Sonny, can you hear that lovely tune? It sounds like someone is playing the guitar or something. It's coming from the end of this path. Shall we find out where it's coming from? The two curious dogs walked along the warm, sun-dappled path and followed the sound of the soothing tune. Before long, a cosy wooden cabin came into view. There was a porch at the front of the cabin, and on it were a couple of rocking chairs and a swinging bench. Wooden steps led up to the patio, and sitting on the top step was a young koala. His eyes were closed and there was a dreamy smile on his little face. He gently plucked the strings of something that looked like a small guitar. The instrument was in a soft shade of pink. Hector and Sonny gazed at the little koala and listened to the lovely song he was playing. They took some small steps closer to him. The koala came to the end of his song. He opened his little eyes and looked at the two visitors. His little eyes grew wide and he gave them a huge, huge smile. The koala put the instrument down, leapt to his feet and ran towards them. Hello, he cried out joyfully. As he approached them, he stopped in front of the dogs and grinned at them. Are you Hector and Sonny? I met some friends of yours recently. They came to Sleepy Forest on a magical bus. They told me all about their journey and how you two had helped them. They described you very well. I was hoping you would visit Sleepy Forest one day. His eyes crinkled up as he smiled even more. The dog smiled back at the little koala and said, Yes, they were Hector and Sonny. They asked if he was Coco. Coco nodded. The two dogs and the koala couldn't stop smiling at each other. Sonny said, This is a strange thing to say, but... I feel like we've been waiting to meet each other. Coco said he felt the same way too, and they already felt like friends to him. Sunny suddenly remembered the tub of hot chocolate around her neck. She told Coco about it and who had sent it. Coco chuckled and said Sydney was a regular visitor to the forest. He untied the tub from Sonny's neck and thanked her for bringing it. Coco said, Would you like to go into my cabin? My family would love to meet you. Or I can show you around the forest first and we'll come back here later. Hector said, Could we look around the forest first, please? We love sleeping and wondered if any other animals might love sleeping as much as us. Coco said, Everyone in Sleepy Forest loves sleeping, especially me. 
let me take this tub of hot chocolate inside. And then I'll show you around the forest. I'll take my ukulele inside too. Sonny asked what a ukulele was. Coco pointed to the pink instrument on the steps and said he was still learning how to play it and hoped he'd be as good as his grandpa one day. You sounded amazing to us, Sonny said. I loved that tune you were playing. Coco blushed and said thank you. He ran over to the ukulele, picked it up and ran inside the cabin. He came back out a few seconds later and ran back to the dogs. Coco said, I'll introduce you to my friend Fudge. She's a sloth and you won't believe how much she sleeps every day. Follow me, it's this way. Coco skipped at the side of the two dogs and asked them lots of questions about their adventures. He was a chatty koala, but Hector and Sonny liked that, because they had just as many questions for Coco. The three animals chatted and laughed, and laughed and chatted as they walked through the beautiful forest. By the time they arrived at the tree where Fudge the sloth lived, the koala and the two dogs had become the very best of friends. Coco stopped at the tree and looked up through the branches. He pointed to one of the lower branches and said, There she is, my lovely friend Fudge. She's fast asleep, as usual. Can you see her arms wrapped around that branch? She loves hugging branches when she's asleep. Hector and Sonny peered upwards and saw a young sloth with her arms wrapped firmly around a branch. She looked extremely cosy and was smiling in her sleep. Coco told them that Fudge slept for up to 18 hours every day, and when she did wake up, she would soon lay back down for a nap. Hector and Sonny were too astonished to speak and stared up at the sleeping sloth in wonder. Hector said to Coco, Do you think Sonny and I could try sleeping on a branch like your friend? Not this tree, though. I don't want to disturb Fudge. I'd love to know what it feels like to sleep in a tree. Coco said, You can have a go. I tried it once, but the leaves kept tickling my nose. He looked around and pointed to a nearby tree and said they could try climbing it. Hector and Sonny walked over to the tree. Sonny said, she would see how Hector got on first before she tried to climb it. Hector said he needed to warm up before he did any serious exercise. He stretched out his legs and rolled his head from side to side. Then he put his front legs on the trunk of the tree and said, Up I go! But Hector didn't go up at all. He stayed right where he was. He tried again. Up I go. Once again, he stayed right where he was. He gave his body a puzzled look and shook his head. He said to Coco and Sonny, My body doesn't want to climb this tree. It refuses to move. I think it's telling me that dogs are not designed to climb trees. Coco kindly said, Perhaps it's the wrong kind of tree, but I've got an idea that might help. There are some fallen branches over there. Why don't you give them a hug 
and imagine you're up a tree just like fudge. Hector said that was an excellent idea and invited Sonny to hug a branch too. The two dogs lay down next to the logs, put their front legs around one of them and gave them a cuddle. They closed their eyes and pretended they were up a tree like the sleepy sloth. They stayed like that for a full three seconds, opened their eyes and declared they knew exactly what it felt like to be a sloth asleep in a tree. Hector and Sonny returned to Coco and asked if he had any more sleepy friends they could meet. Coco nodded and led the dogs through Sleepy Forest. Very soon they met another of Coco's friends, a hedgehog called Prickles. Coco introduced him to Hector and Sonny and asked if Prickles could tell them how much he loved sleeping. Prickles smiled and said, I love sleeping so very much. Most of the time, I sleep inside my house on a bed of soft leaves. But sometimes, on a warm evening, I'll sleep outside under the hedgerows. That's what I did last night. Shall I show you where I slept? The dogs nodded and followed the friendly hedgehog over to some shrubs and bushes. Prickles curled up into a ball and rolled into a gap beneath the plants. He unfurled himself and grinned at the dogs. Prickles asked them to join him. Hector said he was impressed with the hedgehog's rolling skills but the bushes were slightly too small for him and Sonny to fit under, and he didn't want either of them to get stuck. Prickles nodded in understanding. The dogs thanked the hedgehog for talking to them. Prickles gave them a tired smile, said they were welcome, and promptly fell asleep, all snug and cosy under the bushes. Coco took his new friends over to a family of rabbits next. The mother rabbit showed Hector and Sonny the entrance to the family's underground burrow and said it was where they slept in the evenings and often during the day too when they took a nap or two. The mother rabbit invited the dogs into the burrow Hector gave the burrow a calculated look and said he could try to squeeze into it, but there was a chance he could get stuck. Or, worse still, Sonny might get stuck, and he didn't want that to happen. The dogs thanked the rabbit for her kind invitation and for talking to them. Coco and the two dogs continued on their journey around Sleepy Forest. Whenever they met someone new, the dogs would ask them about their sleeping habits, and sometimes, if they were the right size, Hector and Sonny were invited into the animals' homes to see exactly where the animals slept. After wandering around Sleepy Forest for a while and talking to the many friendly animals, Hector and Sonny agreed that the beautiful forest was the perfect place for those who loved sleeping, as there were many peaceful places to sleep at night. Talking about sleeping made the dogs yawn and seeing the dogs yawn made Coco yawn too. Coco said, Shall we go to my house now? It's getting late, and it'll be my bedtime soon. The dogs said they would love that. 
The three friends walked back through the forest. The sun moved towards the horizon, and the sky turned a delicate shade of pink. Even though the little koala and the dogs were tired, they still chatted and laughed and laughed and chatted. They had so much they wanted to talk about. The sky gradually darkened and the first stars appeared. Before too long, Coco's cabin came into view. A plume of smoke spiralled up from the chimney and drifted towards the stars. Cozy lights were on inside the cabin and the front door was ajar, as if waiting for the return of the youngest member of the koala family. Coco and his new friends walked up the wooden patio steps and went inside the cabin. Coco's parents and grandparents were in the living room and sitting next to the flickering fire. They were chatting about their day. When they saw their visitors, Coco's family stood up and said hello to them. Coco introduced the dogs to his family. Hector and Sonny said hello and waved to the koalas. Coco's family instantly made a fuss of the dogs and told them to sit on the rug in front of the fire. Food and drinks were brought out and covers were put at their side in case they needed them. Coco sat on the rug with the dogs. Hector and Sonny soon felt at home with the koalas and were happy to talk about themselves and their adventure with Coco through Sleepy Forest. They also told the koalas about Sydney, the magical squirrel. The koalas nodded and said, they knew Sydney well. Talking about sleeping again made Coco yawn, and it made Hector and Sonny yawn too. Coco's father said, Coco, it's nearly your bedtime. I'll get your bath ready, and I'll put some extra bubbles in it. He looked at the dogs. Hector, Sonny, you can have a bath too if you like. We've got more than one bathroom. Hector said, No, thank you. I had a bath last week, so I'm good. Sonny politely declined too. Coco told Hector and Sonny about his bedtime routine and said, First, I have a warm bath with lots of bubbles, and after that, I get into my snuggly pyjamas and have some hot chocolate. I chat with my family, and sometimes Grandpa will play a lullaby on the ukulele. Then, I get into bed, and someone will tell me a bedtime story. I always fall asleep during the story. The dog said his bedtime routine sounded very soothing. Coco's mother told the dogs they could stay for a sleepover if they wanted to. The dogs thanked her and said they'd better not because they didn't want to leave their owners frozen in the park for too long. Coco snuggled closer to the dogs and asked his father if his bath could wait, because he wanted to chat with Hector and Sonny a bit longer. His father smiled and said yes. Coco, Hector and Sonny cozied up next to the fire 
and chatted and laughed and laughed and chatted. Soon their laughter and chatter turned to yawns and then more and more yawns until they couldn't stop. Coco's father gently said, I think it's bedtime for all of you. Hector, Sonny, you are always welcome here. You must come back another time and stay longer if you can. Hector and Sonny promised to do so and said they'd had a lovely time with the family. The dogs and the little koala stood up. Coco put his little arms around Hector and gave him a hug. He released him and then gave Sonny a hug too. Coco smiled at the two dogs and said softly, I know we've only just met, but I know we are going to be very good friends. The two dogs said they felt the same. Hector and Sonny said goodbye to Coco and his family. They said they would return to Sleepy Forest soon. The dogs barked quietly three times. The cosy cabin faded and the dogs were back in the park and sitting next to their owners. Their owners became unfrozen and continued talking about the weather. Hector said, Sonny, I feel all warm and fuzzy inside. I loved our visit to Sleepy Forest, and I loved meeting Coco. I hope we can go back soon. Sonny smiled at her friend. I've got a feeling we'll be going back there often. She let out the longest yawn Hector had ever seen. It made him yawn too. They decided it was time for a little sleep. They settled down in the soft grass smiled fondly at each other and drifted easily into a restful sleep. Chapter 9 Hector and Sonny Help Santa Claus On a frosty morning in December, a golden retriever by the name of Hector was on his way to the park with his owner. They were going to stop at a house along the way and collect Hector's best friend, a cocker spaniel called Sonny. The dogs were the very best of friends and had been on many magical adventures together. Whenever Hector thought about Sonny, his heart danced with joy. Hector and his owner soon arrived at Sonny's house. She was standing with her owner outside their front door. When Sonny saw Hector, she jigged happily from side to side and barked out a loud hello. Hector barked back and grinned at her. Sonny and her owner walked along the garden path and out of the gate. The owners said hello to each other and then strolled along the path. The dog's owners fell into conversation and talked about the weather and how there might be snow later. Sunny walked at Hector's side. She smiled at him and said, Merry Christmas, Hector. Merry Christmas to you too, Sonny. Hector grinned at her. His grin faded and was replaced by a thoughtful look that Sonny knew well. Hector often had very deep thoughts, and she waited patiently to hear what his latest one was. Hector said, I've been thinking about this Christmas thing, Sonny. 
And I know Father Christmas delivers gifts to children around the world, but do you think he delivers presents to dogs too? Also, do you think he has a dog of his own? Sunny said she didn't know, but thought those were interesting questions. Maybe we'll find out the answer someday, she said. With a wise look in his beautiful dark eyes, Hector said, Sonny, I've got a feeling that we might find out the answers very soon. Can you sense something special in the air? Sonny sniffed the chilly air and said, I can sense that snow is on the way. Is that what you mean? Hector shook his head. No, not the snow, but I can smell that too. It's a magical feeling, one I've had before. And I think it means we're going on another adventure soon. Sonny chuckled in delight. Another adventure? On Christmas Eve? How exciting! She did a little dance from side to side. Hector danced too. Their owners looked down at the dancing dogs, shared a look of confusion and then carried on talking about the weather. A few minutes later they reached the park and began to walk along the meandering path. The bare trees were covered in a light layer of sparkling frost. A delicate lacework of frozen mist lay on the grass and twinkled brightly in the sun. Sunny whispered to Hector, I can definitely feel the magic in the air now. Hector smiled at her. The group walked along the path and towards a cafe that was next to a lake. Some tables and chairs were set up outside the cafe and outdoor heaters had been placed near them. When they reached the cafe, Sunny's owner went inside and returned shortly with two mugs of hot chocolate for herself and Hector's owner. The friendly woman who ran the cafe came out with two bowls of water for the dogs. The bowls had pictures of dancing gingerbread people on them. She put the bowls on the ground and gave Hector and Sonny a big smile. The dogs smiled back at her and barked out, Thank you. Hector and Sonny's owners sat down with their mugs of hot chocolate cupped in their gloved hands. Steam rose from the mugs and swirled in the cold air. The dogs had a quick drink of water and then looked around at the other visitors to the park. There were plenty of dogs who they knew and Hector said he should go and say hello to them all. He asked Sonny if she wanted to go with him. But Sonny wasn't listening to Hector. She was staring at something. There was a puzzled look on her face. Hector soon saw what Sonny was looking at. He frowned and said, Is that a silver ball rolling across the grass over there? Sonny replied, I don't think it's a ball. It looks like one of the Christmas baubles that hang on my tree at home. Can you hear that noise, Hector? It sounds like jingle bells, and it's coming from behind that tree near the bauble. Shall we go over and investigate? Hector said yes, and the dogs jogged towards the silver bauble. It stopped rolling and came to a stop on the sparkling grass. A silver-furred squirrel popped out from behind the tree. He was called Sydney, and the dogs had met him many times before. Sydney scampered over to them and wished them a Merry Christmas. The dogs returned his greeting. With a familiar twinkle in his eye, Sydney said, Would you like to go on another magical adventure? I have a friend who needs your help. The dogs nodded eagerly and followed the squirrel as he scampered back to the tree and went around it. 
When the dogs jogged around the tree, they were astonished to see Santa Claus standing there. He was dressed in a bright red coat, which was edged in white. His trousers were bright red too, and his black boots gleamed. Santa's beard was thick and fluffy, and merriment danced in his eyes. Sidney stood at Santa's side and grinned at the dogs. Santa let out a cheerful ho, 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 and waved to Hector and Sonny. Hector and Sonny waved back somewhat shyly. Santa Claus walked over to the dogs and knelt at their side. His voice was deep and calming as he said, Hello there, you two. Sydney has told me all about you and the adventures you've been on. It's an absolute pleasure to meet you, Hector and Sonny. Hector and Sonny gave him bashful smiles. Santa smiled warmly and continued talking. You might know that I deliver gifts to the children of the world, but did you know that I also deliver gifts to dogs around the world? Sonny stared wide-eyed at Santa and said Hector had been wondering about that very thing earlier on. Santa said, Oh, really? What a lovely coincidence. I have a pet dog called Bernie, and he helps me deliver the presents to the dogs, but we've got a lot of places to visit tonight, and Bernie said he could do with some extra help. And that's why I've stopped here. Sydney is a good friend of mine, and he's helped me with many things over the years. And as soon as he mentioned you two, I knew you'd be the perfect dogs to assist me. Hector, Sonny, can you help me? Sonny spoke for them both and said, We would love to help you. Santa stroked Sonny's head. Thank you. He stroked Hector's head too. And thank you as well. The presents are still in the workshops, having some final checks, so we need to go there first to collect them. Hector asked how they would get to his workshops, and had Santa driven to the park? Santa straightened up and chuckled. His tummy wobbled like a bowl full of jelly. He said, <laughs> I flew here in my sleigh. Let me reveal it to you. He waved his gloved hand in the air. The noise of jingle bells sounded out again, and a beautiful red sleigh appeared behind Santa. Six magnificent reindeer were fastened to the sleigh with silver reins. On the reins were dozens of tiny bells that jingled merrily. A huge St. Bernard dog was sitting inside the sleigh, and there was a small wooden barrel tied loosely around his neck. Hector and Sonny's mouths fell open as they gazed at the amazing sleigh, the reindeer, and the friendly dog who was now waving to them. They didn't know quite where to focus their attention. Santa saw their astonished expressions and suggested they say hello to the reindeer first and then say hello to Bernie. Sidney the squirrel raised his paw and said, There's one thing we need to do before that, Santa. We need to freeze time. Otherwise, the good people of this park will be wandering over soon to admire your sleigh. Sidney clicked his little fingers, and a little ring of sleigh bells appeared in his paw. He shook them 
three times. The world around them froze in time. Hector and Sonny looked over at their owners sitting outside the cafe. They had frozen in time too, and even the steam rising from their mugs had become still. Sydney made the bells vanish. He told the dogs that when they wanted to return home, they didn't need to bark three times as they usually did, but to say Merry Christmas three times instead. Sydney waved goodbye and scampered away. Santa took the dogs over to the reindeer and introduced them. This is Dasher, Dancer, Prancer and Vixen, and on the other side are Comet, Cupid, Donna and Blitzen. Hector and Sonny nodded hello to each reindeer. They had never seen reindeer before, except on the television or in pictures, and the animals were more magnificent than they ever could have imagined. Next, Santa introduced them to Bernie. Bernie gazed at the dogs with eyes full of kindness and warmth. Hector and Sonny instantly felt a connection to him, as though he was a friend they had been waiting to meet. Bernie said, It's wonderful to meet you, Hector and Sonny, and I'm so glad you're helping us on this beautiful Christmas Eve. Won't you sit beside me? Tell me, do you two like gravy? I've got some in this barrel around my neck, and there's plenty to share. I never leave home without my barrel of gravy. At the mention of gravy, Sonny and Hector leapt into the sleigh in a flash. They settled down on either side of the friendly St Bernard dog. A lovely aroma surrounded Bernie, and it reminded the dogs of fun times filled with laughter and love. It made them feel all warm and happy inside. Santa got into the sleigh and picked up the silver reins. He called out the names of the reindeer and told them to head back home to the North Pole. The sleigh rose smoothly from the frosty grass and soared upwards. Over the park they flew. Hector and Sonny took another glance at their owners sitting outside the cafe. And even though they were frozen in time, the dogs waved goodbye to them anyway. Santa flew the sleigh high above the town and over the countryside. Soon, they were soaring above the sea. As they continued on their journey, Bernie gave Hector and Sonny a serving of the hot gravy. The dogs said it was the most delicious gravy they had ever, ever had. Sonny added, it tastes like magic and laughter and fun and cuddles. She let out a cute giggle, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Hector said he did know what she meant and he completely agreed. Very soon the sleigh headed towards a land covered in snow. Bernie said to the dogs, this is the North Pole. This is where Santa and I live, with Mrs. Claus and the elves. You'll get to meet them soon enough. Mrs. Claus loves to make a fuss over visitors. Hector said he didn't mind at all because he liked being fussed over. Santa brought the sleigh to a smooth stop outside a house that looked like it had been made out of gingerbread. It smelled like gingerbread, too. Twinkling fairy lights were strewn across the roof of the house 
and around the windows, giving it an enchanted feel. Clusters of snow-covered trees stood at either side of the house, and behind them were some bright red buildings that were festooned in fairy lights. Bernie told the dogs that those buildings were the workshops, and that's where they would be going first. At that moment, the door to the gingerbread house opened, and a woman with rosy red cheeks hastened out. Her long red dress matched the outfit that Santa was wearing, as though it had been cut from the same cloth. She beamed at Hector and Sonny and moved closer to them. Hello, hello. Welcome to our home. I received a message from Sydney telling me you were on your way. I'm Mrs. Claus. You must be Hector. What a glorious golden colour your fur is. And you must be Sunny. My goodness, what beautiful eyes you have, Sunny. Are you too warm enough? Do you need something to eat or drink? Hector and Sunny said they were fine, thank you. They couldn't stop smiling at Mrs. Claus. She was so very friendly and welcoming. Santa Claus jumped off the sleigh and gave his wife a hug. He said, I'd better get over to the workshop and see how the elves are getting on. He kissed her on the cheek, making her blush. Hector and Sonny giggled. Santa asked Bernie to take their visitors to the dog's workshop. Bernie nodded in reply and asked Sonny and Hector to follow him. Bernie jumped out of the sleigh and padded between the snow-covered trees and towards one of the red buildings. Hector and Sonny followed in his paw prints. Bernie took them into the nearest building, which was made up of one enormous room. Lines of tables stretched out to the far side of the room and standing in front of the tables were groups of smiling elves who were busy making a variety of items. The elves looked at Hector and Sonny and sent a cheerful chorus of happy hellos their way. The dogs waved casually to the elves, trying to look as though they waved to elves all the time. Bernie said, We've got most of the presents ready for delivery, but some need a final test. Would you help us with that? The ones that need testing are at the back, over there. Hector and Sonny said they would be happy to help. They walked behind Bernie as he led them through the room. The elves smiled at the dogs as they went by. There was a jolly atmosphere and the dogs just couldn't stop smiling. Bernie stopped at a table at the end of the room. He picked up a clipboard from the table and peered at it. He said, Ah, the first item that needs testing is a gold-coloured football that's due to be delivered to a beagle in England. She doesn't live too far away from you two, actually. She loves playing football with her owner's children and has been dreaming about a gold-coloured football for the last few weeks. Hector had a question for Bernie. How do you know what dogs want for Christmas? They can't write you a letter like children do. Bernie lowered the clipboard and explained. Dogs often dream about things that fill their heart with joy. Dog's dreams are full of magic, and they drift towards us on evening breezes. We sort through them and see what the perfect Christmas present would be for each dog. Hector and Sonny gazed at Bernie in wonder, and said they never knew that. Bernie searched the table and found a gold-coloured football. He picked it up and said, would you test this for me, please? You can go out of that door over there 
and give it a kick around in the snow. Don't worry about damaging it. The ball is made from magical material and will never become damaged. Hector and Sonny took the football outside and began to play with it. They knew how to play football because they often joined in with games in the park, even though sometimes they weren't actually invited to play. The golden football was great fun to play with, and the dog soon returned to Bernie and told him it was perfect. Bernie thanked them, took the ball, and threw it over to a waiting elf, who expertly wrapped the item in less than two seconds. Hector and Sonny proceeded to test more items. First of all, they tried on a variety of slippers for a poodle in France. The poodle's owner wore slippers on an evening, and the poodle wanted some of his own too. But in his dreams, he couldn't decide which colour he liked best. After trying on many pairs in different colours, Hector and Sonny agreed that some red velvet slippers with pom-poms on the end were the perfect ones. Bernie agreed and nodded at a nearby elf, who swiftly whipped the chosen slippers away to wrap them up. The dogs tested some dance mats next for a Dalmatian in Australia who loved to boogie with her family. Hector and Sonny loved to boogie too and had a wonderful time dancing on the mats. Some of the elves joined them and had a fabulous time. After a lot of jiving and jigging about, Hector and Sonny reached a decision and the chosen dance mat was sent on its way to be wrapped up. More items were tested, including a set of drums and a guitar. Bernie politely asked the dogs to test them in a soundproof booth nearby. Once inside the booth, Sonny beat a catching rhythm on the drums, and Hector played a bewitching tune on the guitar. Afterwards, Hector and Sonny talked about setting up a band one day and taking their show on the road. Once all the presents had been tested and then wrapped up, Bernie said it was time to deliver them. The elves placed the presents into red velvet sacks and took them outside and placed them in the sleigh. Bernie and the dogs climbed onto the sleigh and waited for Santa. He arrived a few moments later with Mrs. Claus at his side. Mrs. Claus had some blankets which she tucked around the dogs. She asked Bernie if he had enough gravy in his barrel. He nodded and said he had filled it with magical Christmas Eve gravy that would never run out. Mrs. Claus gave everyone a hug goodbye, including Hector and Sonny, and wished them a very merry Christmas. Santa called out to his reindeer, and they were soon airborne again. Hector and Sonny waved goodbye to Mrs. Claus on the snowy ground below, and to the elves who had gathered next to her. The sky had turned darker and was full of twinkling stars. The full moon was big and bright. Santa flew the sleigh through the night sky, and it wasn't long before they arrived at their first destination. It was the house where the football-loving beagle lived. Santa asked Hector and Sonny to help him deliver the gold-coloured football. The dogs stood on the roof with Santa. He waved his gloved hand over the small chimney and made it into a helter-skelter ride that wound its way down into the house. Santa jumped onto the slide and whooshed downwards. Hector and Sonny followed him, their ears flapping as they zoomed round and round. 
there was a big cushion at the bottom of the slide, and their landing was a soft one. The beagle was snoozing peacefully in her basket, a dreamy smile on her face. Santa silently placed the present next to her and whispered, Merry Christmas. He went back to the slide, sat on the bottom of it, and whooshed backwards and upwards. Hector and Sonny did the same. More presents were delivered in the same way, and time flew wonderfully by. Hector and Sonny were having an amazingly magical time and kept their energy levels up by taking regular drinks of the delicious gravy. At one point during the starlit flight, Sonny looked out at their surroundings, sighed happily and slowly blinked. Hector asked Sonny what she was doing. Sonny said she was taking a mental picture of the magical moment so that she could remember it forever. Hector thought that was a lovely thing to do, so he did the same. In what seemed like very little time, the last of the presents had been delivered and Santa said it was time for the dogs to return to the park. Unless they wanted to help him deliver presents to children around the world. Hector and Sonny had grown more tired throughout their journey and told Santa they should return to the park. After saying goodbye to Bernie and Santa, the tired dog, let out three sleepy Merry Christmases. In a flash of silver, Hector and Sonny were back at the park and standing on the frosty grass again. It was daytime and their owners were now unfrozen and sipping their hot chocolates. Hector looked left and right. Where did Santa go? Sonny smiled and told Hector to look upwards. The two dogs gazed at the sky and saw Santa's sleigh flying above them. Santa and Bernie waved and called out a Merry Christmas which floated on the winter wind towards Hector and Sonny and wrapped around them like a warm hug. The dogs sighed happily, and agreed that their Christmas Eve adventure had been a most magical one. They padded slowly over to their owners and flopped at their feet. Their owners finished their drinks and then headed home. Later on, the snow began to fall, and inside their respective homes, Hector and Sonny snuggled up to their owners and thought about their day and all the dogs who would be waking up to presents they had only dreamed about. A feeling of warmth and happiness flowed through the dogs and stayed with them as they fell asleep on that snowy Christmas Eve. As they slept, Santa paid them a visit and left a silver bauble on each of their Christmas trees. On the baubles was an image of Hector, Sonny and Bernie sitting inside Santa's sleigh as it flew through the starlit sky on the most magical of nights. Chapter 10 Hector and Sonny Meet a Wizard A beautiful golden retriever called Hector 
was on holiday with his best friend Sonny, a kind-hearted cocker spaniel with eyes the colour of a summer sky. They had brought their owners with them. Hector and his owner were staying in a cottage by the sea, and Sonny was staying with her owner in the cottage right next door. The dogs were having a marvellous time. There were many amazing beaches to run along, country paths to explore, and lots of seagulls to chase. The seagulls loved chasing games just as much as the dogs did. On the third day of their holiday, Hector and Sonny came out of their cottages and said good morning to each other. Their owners came out behind them and said hello to each other too and talked about how lovely the weather was. Hector jigged excitedly from side to side and told Sonny they were all going somewhere very special that morning and she would never guess where. Sonny tried to guess anyway. Are we going to the fun fair on the pier? Or doggy paddling in the sea? Or playing football with those children on the beach again? I had a lot of fun doing that yesterday. Hector chuckled and said it was none of those. He puffed out his golden furred chest and announced proudly, Sonny, we're going to a castle. A bouncy castle? Sonny asked, hopefully. Nope, Hector replied. It's even better than that. It's a really old castle that was built hundreds and hundreds of years ago. Actually, Sonny, it's not even a full castle anymore. It's in ruins, but lots of the walls are still standing. Well, some of them are. Oh, lovely. Sonny couldn't hide the slight disappointment in her voice. Hector noticed and said, It's not just any old ruined castle, though. I watched a TV programme with my owner a few weeks ago about the castle. It's called Tintagel Castle, and... Hector paused dramatically. A wizard called Merlin used to live there, and a king called Arthur, too. Well, that's what people think. Sonny's beautiful eyes grew wider and wider. A wizard? And a king? Was the wizard magic? What did he do? Did he wear a pointy hat and have one of those long robes? Oh, Hector, this is so exciting. Hector nodded. It is. I don't know much about the wizard or what magic he did, because I fell asleep halfway through the program, but I can't wait to explore the castle. I've never been inside one before. Except on a bouncy castle with you, of course. I love bouncy castles. Sunny said she did too. She gazed wistfully into the distance and said, I wonder if Merlin the wizard still lives in the castle somewhere. I'd love to meet a wizard and find out what they do. Hector raised his nose and sniffed the air. A familiar look came into his dark eyes. It was a look Sonny knew well, and seeing it now filled her heart with joy. She moved closer to Hector. Even though their owners couldn't speak dog, she whispered anyway. Hector, can you smell magic in the air again? Are we going on another adventure soon? Hector gave her a wise look and nodded. We are, Sonny, and I think this adventure will have something to do with a wizard. Sonny's eyes filled with admiration for her best friend and his amazing powers, and thinking about a new adventure made her jig from side to side. Hector copied her 
and the two dogs barked in happiness about their upcoming adventure as they danced this way and that. Their owners stared down at the dogs, shook their heads, and then walked towards their cars. They decided to take Sonny's car, and everyone bundled into it. Hector and Sonny sat in the back and looked out of the window, huge smiles still on their faces. The car zipped along the country lanes, and a short time later, they arrived at the picturesque coastal town of Tintagel. As soon as their doors were opened, the dogs jumped out of the car and began looking left and right in search of the castle. Hector spotted it first. Look, Sonny, it's over there on top of that island. Can you see it? There's a bridge leading over to it. Sonny saw the remains of the castle. The early morning mist wound around the stone walls that still remained. The island was surrounded by the deep blue sea. The soothing sound of the waves lapping against the rocks drifted towards the dogs, and the cry of a seagull made them look upwards at the clear blue sky. Sonny sighed happily and told Hector that the castle looked very magical and asked if he could see a wizard anywhere. Not yet, Hector replied. Their owners walked away from the car park and along a path that led to the castle. The dogs trotted at their side. The warm sea air flowed around the dogs and ruffled their fur. Sonny looked out at the calm blue sea and said, It looks like the sea goes on forever and ever. The call of another seagull made her look upwards again. She saw two peculiar items twirling on a gust of wind. Hector, look up. Can you see something strange? Hector raised his head. Oh, yes, I can. He peered closer at the objects. Sonny, those are hats, wizard hats, and they're coming straight towards us. I think our next magical adventure is about to begin. Get ready to catch one of the hats on your head. The two wizard hats danced on the breeze towards the waiting dogs. The hats were purple with silver stars dotted around the brim. The dog's owners hadn't noticed the hats and were talking about the history of the castle. Hector and Sonny stood still and waited for the hats to come closer. The hats bobbed towards them and landed securely on their heads. The wizard hats were a perfect fit for the dogs. Hector and Sonny grinned at each other and waited for the magic to begin. The world around them froze in time. Their owners stopped in mid-walk and mid-talk. Everyone was still, except for the dogs. When they'd gone on adventures before, they had been magically transported to other places. But something different happened this time. The people around them vanished and so did the nearby shops and cars. Hector's brow wrinkled in confusion. Sonny, what's happening? Why aren't we going anywhere? Sonny smiled at her lovely friend and said, We have gone somewhere. We've gone back in time. Hector, look at the castle. It's not in ruins anymore. 
It looks new, like it was built yesterday. Hector stared at the castle in wonder. The castle looked magnificent, and there were no broken walls anywhere. People walked in and out of a huge arched doorway, wearing old-fashioned robes and dresses, and horses were tied up outside the walls, neighing lightly. Wow, Hector said in total awe. We've never gone back in time before. What shall we do first, Sonny? Sonny replied. I'd like to meet that wizard, Merlin, if he still lives here, and find out more about him. Do you think he'll be able to understand us? Hector said that if Merlin really was a wizard, then he would use his magical powers to understand them. The metal footbridge to the castle that had been there moments ago had vanished with the rest of the modern world and been replaced with a wooden bridge. The dogs jogged towards the bridge and onto it. Their paws tapped out a soft rhythm on the wood as they walked across it. Hector and Sonny stopped outside the main entrance. They looked through the opening and saw people milling about the courtyard inside and going about their daily business. Food stalls were set up and the lovely smell of cooked food floated towards the dogs. Hector spotted a man dressed in bright clothes and wearing a hat with bells on it. The man sang a joyful song and danced, making the bells on his hat jingle. Hector pointed out the happy man to Sonny, and the dogs had a little dance to his song. Just as they were about to enter the castle and start exploring it, they heard a faint voice coming from a different direction. They clearly heard the words, I will never get the hang of this magic spell. Never. Hope filled the dog's hearts, and they thought the voice must belong to a wizard. They followed the sound of the muttering voice, and walked down a set of stone steps at the side of the castle's entrance. The steps led down to a small beach that was hidden from view. In the middle of the golden sand was a little lizard. Her skin was pale purple and speckled with small circles of silver that glistened in the sunlight. She was staring intently at a shell on the sand and mumbling something about her magic not working like it was supposed to. Hector and Sonny padded across the soft sand and stopped at her side. Sonny coughed politely and said, <clears throat> Hello, excuse us for disturbing you. But are you talking to yourself or the shell? The lizard looked up at the two visitors and gave them a small smile. She said, A bit of both, I suppose. I'm trying to cast a magic spell that will make this shell dance in the air, but my magic isn't working. I'm saying the right words of the spell, the words that Merlin taught me. The dogs let out loud gasps of surprise and stared at the lizard. Hector said, You know Merlin? Merlin, the wizard? The lizard nodded. Yes, everyone around here does. He's been teaching me some magic tricks or trying to. 
I'm good at remembering the words of the spells, but I can't get them to work, no matter how hard I try. She gave the dogs a closer look. I like your hats. Are you wizards too? Sonny said they weren't wizards and explained who they were and where in time they had come from. The lizard wasn't at all surprised to hear they had travelled through time and said she could see the magic in their eyes. She told them that her full name was Elizabeth, but everyone called her Lizzie. She said she lived in a cave at the back of the beach. Lizzie explained. This beach is where I first met Merlin a few weeks ago. I saw him walking along the beach and looking out at the waves. He had such a friendly face and I walked over and introduced myself. We got chatting and he told me about his magical abilities and said anyone could do magic spells, even animals like me. I wasn't sure about that, but Merlin said all I had to do was believe in myself and practice every day. He gave me the words of many spells and said he would come back often to see how I was getting on. He called me his apprentice, which means I'll be a wizard like him one day. Since meeting Merlin, it's my dream to become a wizard like him. But I don't think that's going to happen because I can't even do one spell. Lizzie stopped talking and looked down at the shell. She sighed ever so softly but the dogs heard her. Sunny said, We don't know much about magic, but we could try to help you, if you'd like us to, of course. Lizzie looked at the kind dogs, and a smile spread across her little lizard face. I would like that, thank you. Sunny thought about Lizzie's problem and said, Perhaps you should start with a much simpler spell. When I was younger, I used to love collecting sticks at the park. I always went for the biggest stick I could find, but they were too big for me. And no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't pick them up. So I decided to try smaller sticks instead until I found one that was the perfect size for me. As I got stronger, I started to pick up bigger and bigger sticks. Hector hissed out of the side of his mouth. Sonny, I don't know what sticks have got to do with magic. Sonny grinned and said, What I'm trying to say is, you could start with a simpler spell, Lizzie. Perhaps just making the shell shimmy from side to side in the sand. And when your magical powers get stronger, then you can move on to bigger spells. Lizzie nodded. Yes, that makes sense. I do know a spell to make a shell shimmy from side to side in the sand. The lizard, who wanted to be a wizard, concentrated on the shell. She muttered some words and looked hopefully at the shell. Hector and Sunny looked at it hopefully too. The shell didn't move. Hector said, don't give up, Lizzie. Believe in yourself. We believe in you. His words made the lizard more determined than ever. She said the words again. The shell moved slightly to one side. Then to the other. And then 
It began to shimmy swiftly from side to side in the sand. The lizard and the two dogs cheered loudly. Lizzie proceeded to cast more spells over other shells, and she made them shimmy in the sand too. Her belief in herself grew and grew. She cast bigger and bigger spells, and finally she made the shells rise from the sand and dance in the air. She added some music to the dancing shells. It was quite a wonderful sight to see. Hector and Sonny loved watching the dancing shells and boogied along with them. Lizzie danced too. After a while, Lizzie brought the shells back to the sand and made them still again. Hector and Sonny said she was a wonderful wizard and couldn't wait to see what she would do next. Hector said, Before you do any more magic, I think you should have a hat and a long robe like Merlin. That's a great idea. Thank you. Lizzie magicked up a beautiful hat and robe. The hat was just like the dogs were wearing, purple and edged in silver stars. Her long robe matched her hat, and the stars along the hem twinkled brightly. The dogs admired her outfit and said she looked fabulous. The lizard wizard asked the dogs if they would like to help her with some magic spells. Hector was too surprised to speak, so Sonny answered for both of them and said, yes, please. Lizzie said, you've already got the hats and now you need the robes. Is it okay if I cast a spell on you to make that happen? The dogs nodded and said they completely trusted her magical abilities. Lizzie recited the words of another spell, and purple robes edged with silver stars appeared on the delighted dogs. They were a perfect fit. The lizard began to perform more magic. She created a beautiful sandcastle that looked exactly like the castle on the hill above them. She gave Hector and Sonny the words of a shell-moving spell and asked them to decorate her sandcastle with the shells. Hector wasn't sure he could do that, but Sonny gave him a long, kind look and said she believed in him. Her words made Hector feel all warm and happy inside, and he knew he could do anything with Sonny at his side. Hector and Sonny looked at the shells on the sand and carefully repeated the words Lizzie had given them. To their utter delight, the shells rose from the sand and floated towards the sand castle. They landed firmly on the walls of the sandy building. Hector was so astonished that he had to sit down for a moment and take it all in. When he'd got over his shock at being a wizard, he stood up and asked what they could do next. Before Lizzie could answer him, a noise from above made them look upwards. A huge purple dragon was flying through the sky, its wings slowly flapping. On the dragon's back was a man dressed in a pointy hat and a long flowing robe. The man looked down at the small beach and waved to the three animal wizards. 
Lizzie waved back and said, That's Merlin. Hector had to sit down again. It was all too much for him. The dragon flew towards the castle and disappeared from view. Lizzie looked wistfully at the empty sky and said, I wish I could fly on a dragon like Merlin, but all the dragons I know are too big for me. Sunny had watched a lot of nature programs with her owner, and she told Lizzie about an animal called a bearded dragon and how it wasn't much bigger than Lizzie. Sunny wasn't sure if the bearded dragons could fly, but if Lizzie met one who wanted to fly, maybe she could use her magic and make that happen. Lizzie shook her head in amazement at the dogs and said they were full of great ideas. Where would I find a bearded dragon? she asked Sunny. Sunny replied, Well, I know where they live in my time, but it might be different in your time. Lizzie nodded. Good point. I could magic myself to a land where they live and see if any of them want to be flying dragons and live here with me. She paused. Is my magic strong enough to do that? Of course it is, Sunny replied firmly. We still believe in you, don't we, Hector? Hector was still sitting on the sand. He stood up and said they absolutely did believe in Lizzie. Lizzie smiled at them. She used some magic words and made herself disappear. The dogs heard someone walking down the stone steps behind them. The dogs turned around and saw Merlin the wizard strolling towards them. Hector planted his paws in the sand and managed to remain standing. Merlin said, Hello there. I can tell you two have come from some time in the future. I'd love to know how you came to be here and why. Sonny had to do all the explaining because Hector was staring open-mouthed at the wizard and couldn't utter a single word. Merlin took all the information in including the part about Lizzie looking for a bearded dragon. Merlin looked knowingly towards the sea and said Lizzie was on her way back and she had found a bearded dragon called Whiskers, who was overjoyed at being asked to live near the castle. Is Lizzie flying towards us now? Sonny asked. Merlin nodded. A happy glint came into his eyes, and he asked the dogs if they would like to fly with him on his dragon and meet Lizzie in the sky. Sunny put her paw on Hector to stop him from sitting down in surprise again and said they would love that. Thank you. Merlin let out a low whistle. A moment later, the purple dragon appeared in the sky, flew down to them and settled on the sand. Merlin helped the dogs onto the dragon's back and secured them in place, tucking their wizard robes around their legs. Merlin sat behind them and asked the dragon to take them across the sea in a southerly direction. The dragon opened its wings and rose smoothly from the ground, up 
and up they all went, until they were high above the castle. The dogs looked down at the people inside the castle and waved to them. Some people waved back, as though seeing wizard dogs flying on a dragon was something that happened all the time. The purple dragon flew them across the wide blue sea. The dog's ears flapped in the breeze. Hector and Sonny couldn't stop smiling at each other. What an amazing adventure they were having. Very soon they saw Lizzie flying towards them on a bearded dragon who had purple wings. She waved to Merlin and the dogs and flew closer to them. Merlin told Lizzie he was very impressed with her magical abilities and knew her powers would get stronger and stronger. The four wizards flew over the sea for a while longer and then headed back to the castle. They landed on the grassy area where Hector and Sonny had first seen the flying hats. The dogs were helped off the dragon. They both yawned. It was time for them to return to their own time. Hector and Sonny thanked Merlin and Lizzie for the magical adventure. Merlin said they could come back any time they wanted to and gave them the words of a spell that would bring them back. The new friends said goodbye to each other. The dragons and their wizards rose from the ground and flew away. Hector and Sonny watched the dragons flying further and further away. Then they barked three times and were instantly back in their own time. Their purple robes vanished and their hats blew away in a strong gust of wind. Hector and Sonny's owners became unfrozen and carried on walking towards the castle, which was now in ruins again. Sonny sighed happily and said going back in time had been an incredible adventure. Hector agreed. He raised his nose and sniffed the air. He said, There's another adventure waiting for us out there, Sonny, and I think we'll be going forward in time one day. Sonny nodded, not surprised by his words at all. She said, As long as I'm with you, Hector, it doesn't matter where in time I am. And as long as we can always return to our lovely owners after an adventure, then I'm a very happy dog indeed. Hector said he felt the same way. The two best friends walked at the side of their beloved human friends, feeling like the luckiest dogs in the world. Chapter 11 Hector and Sonny Go to Mars <laughs> It was a beautiful afternoon in late summer and a cocker spaniel called Sunny was lying on the grass in her garden and enjoying the warmth of the sun on her fur. Her best friend Hector, a golden retriever, was at her side. He wasn't lying on the grass though. He was sitting up and staring at the sky as though searching for something. Sunny sat up and gave her friend a long look. She said, Hector, 
Is something wrong? You keep looking at the sky. You've been doing it all day. Have I? Hector replied, not taking his gaze away from the sky. Yes. Is there something interesting up there? Sunny looked upwards. All she could see was the clear blue sky. Hector said, There's nothing interesting to see yet, but I've got a feeling there soon will be. Sunny looked away from the sky and at Hector's furry face. There was a knowing look in his eyes. It was a look she recognised, and she'd seen it many times before. Sunny placed her paw gently on Hector's paw and said, Hector, can you sense another adventure coming our way? Hector turned his attention to Sunny and said, I'm not sure. I can feel that something exciting is on the way to us, and it's got something to do with the sky, but I can't see anything unusual there when I look at the sky. <sighs> he sighed lightly. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I've lost my adventure-sensing powers. Sunny gave him a reassuring smile and said, you haven't lost your powers. If you think there's something exciting on the way, then I believe that there is something exciting on the way. Let's look at the sky again. The two dogs gave their full attention to the sky. They waited for something interesting to happen. They didn't have to wait long. Sunny said, Hector! What's that silver thing flying through the sky? Where? Hector asked. Sunny raised her paw. Over there. It seems to be going really very fast. Hector's furry eyebrows rose. Oh, yes. Now I see it. I wonder what it is. The dog stared at the unidentified flying object. Hector's eyes narrowed. Sonny, I don't know what that is, but it's slowing down now and is heading towards us. He peered closer at the flying thing. Just a moment. I think it might be a spaceship. Hector was right. It was a spaceship. It wasn't a big one, though, and it headed straight towards Sunny's garden. The dogs moved to the side and watched in amazement as the small spaceship landed on the grass. It was a bit bigger than the dogs. A plume of silver smoke came from the bottom of the ship and covered up its lower half. The smoke slowly vanished, and the dogs saw an open door. Two animals were standing in the doorway. Hector and Sonny recognised one of them. It was Sidney, a squirrel with silver fur. He had helped Hector and Sonny go on many magical adventures. The other animal was a big Labrador puppy. He was wearing a silver spacesuit. The squirrel and puppy waved to Hector and Sonny and said hello. They jumped out of the door and jogged over to the dogs. Sidney said, Hello again, you two. It's lovely to see you again. I hope our surprise landing hasn't startled you too much. Hector smiled and said, Hi there, Sydney. I've been expecting something exciting to happen all day, but I never thought it would be a spaceship landing in Sonny's garden. He looked at the puppy and said hello to him. Sonny said hello to the puppy too and asked if he'd been on a long journey in his spaceship. 
The puppy said his name was Coda, and he hadn't had a very long journey because he'd come from Mars. Hector blinked. Mars? The red planet where no one lives? The one that takes months to travel to? Sonny looked at Hector in admiration. He knew such a lot of interesting things. Coda shared a smile with Sydney and said, I haven't come from the Mars that you know. I've come from a future Mars. The dogs were too confused to speak and stared at the little puppy in total bewilderment. Sydney explained Coda had come from the future, where time travel was now possible. I travel through time portals quite often, Sydney said matter-of-factly. I've been to the future Mars today. I thought about you two whilst I was there and wondered if you'd like to visit Mars as well, so I asked Coda for a lift here. Hector shook his head. He said, Sonny and I can't travel through time and go to Mars. It's impossible. Sonny looked at her dear friend and reminded Hector how they had travelled back in time recently on another adventure and how they'd gone to many enchanted worlds through magical portals, all thanks to Sydney and his amazing powers. Hector gave Sonny a small, embarrassed smile and said, Just for a moment there, I'd forgotten. Anything was possible, especially when Sydney's around. Sydney grinned at the two dogs and said, Well, what do you say? Would you like to travel to Mars? Hector and Sonny barked in delight and said they most definitely would like that. Coda moved closer to the dogs and handed them a silver jewel each. He told them to put the jewels onto their dog collars and when they pressed them, spacesuits would appear which would fit them perfectly. Hector and Sonny put the jewels on their collars, pressed them and a second later they were both wearing silver spacesuits that matched Coda's. Hector asked if they would need helmets too. Coda said no because the air on future Mars was now breathable. Oh, and there's something else you need to know about Mars, Coda said. There aren't any humans on it yet and it's only animals who live there. Wow, Hector and Sonny said at the same time. Sydney yawned and told the three dogs he would leave them to their Martian adventure, because he was ready for a nap. The sleepy squirrel waved goodbye, and then vanished into thin air, something he did quite often. Coda led Hector and Sonny over to the spaceship, and told them to jump in. Sonny said, Won't it be a bit of a squeeze for us inside it? With a twinkle in his eyes, Coda said she needn't be concerned about that. Hector and Sonny jumped through the open door and into the spaceship. It was much, much bigger on the inside. Sonny and Hector saw several corridors leading away from the door. One led to a kitchen, another to a lounge, and one to a playroom. Coda jumped in after them and explained it was Martian engineering that made ships larger on the inside and also a touch of magic from some enchanted jewels that had been found deep beneath the red surface of Mars. Coda explained, When animals settled on Mars years ago, they explored the many underground caves and caverns it was a cat who first found the special jewels. 
she was a scientist, and after experimenting with the jewels, she discovered they had magical powers and could be used for many things, including making our spaceships bigger on the inside. I'll take you to the science hub when we arrive on Mars and introduce you to Dr. Julie. She's a descendant of the cat who first found the precious items. He grinned and added, Dr. Julie is an expert on the enchanted jewels. And also, she has the perfect name for the work she does. Coda asked the dogs to follow him to the control room. Once there, they all settled down into their seats and the puppy fired up the engine. The spaceship zoomed up into the air and high above the street where Sunny lived. Higher and higher they went. Coda told them they would travel through a time portal soon and it would take them straight to Mars of the future. Sonny and Hector grinned at each other and looked out of the large windows. They saw Earth below and watched as it got smaller and smaller. A shimmering silver circle soon appeared in front of the ship. Coda said it was the time portal. He steered the spaceship through it, and for a few seconds, all the dogs could see was a sparkling silver mist. They went right through the time portal and arrived in another world, a world full of magic and wonder. They looked out of the window and got their first glimpse of Mars. It was a beautiful, dark red colour, and blue streams and rivers flowed across its surface. As they got closer to the planet, Hector and Sunny saw a small town with houses made out of red bricks. Each home was surrounded by a garden and inside the gardens were a variety of animals. They spotted some hedgehogs mowing their lawns, and a couple of sheep reclining on lounges next to a small swimming pool. Flying cars flew back and forth over the houses. The dogs grinned when they saw a pizza delivery van heading towards a public park where some guinea pigs were having a picnic. Coda flew the spaceship over the houses and towards some half-circle buildings that were made out of glass. He told Hector and Sonny those were the science buildings and they would find Dr. Julie inside one of them. Coda brought the spaceship to a smooth landing near the glass buildings. He looked at Hector and Sonny and said, Sydney told me that you have to bark three times to return home, but if you want me to give you a lift back in my ship, just let me know. Hector and Sonny said they would do. Coda smiled and said that was a great way to travel. I'm going for my afternoon nap now. Go into the nearest science building and a dachshund called Jed will take you to Dr. Julie's lab. She's a ginger kitten with white ears. Have a wonderful time on Mars. Coda pushed a button to open the door. He waved goodbye to the dogs, got out of his seat and headed towards the back of the ship. Hector and Sonny jumped out of the door and padded over to the nearest science building. The doors opened automatically and they saw a friendly-looking dachshund standing there. He welcomed them warmly and said his name was Jed. Hector and Sonny said hello and told him they had come from Earth. 
Sonny added. We've come from the past. I don't know how many years in the past, though. Jed waved one of his little paws, smiled and said that didn't matter at all. When they told him they wished to see Dr. Dooley, Jed said he would take them there immediately. The Daxon said, Her lab is at the far end of the building. Her my little legs get tired very quickly, so let's travel there by hoverboard, shall we? He tapped on a crystal watch on his paw and three silver hoverboards appeared in the air. Jed hopped onto one of them. Hector and Sonny copied him and hopped onto the other two. Jed set off smoothly along the corridor, and the boards beneath Hector and Sonny automatically followed him. The three dogs travelled along the winding corridor past rooms of science labs. Inside each lab were animals in white coats standing at tables. Some were performing experiments on liquids in glass tubes and others were tapping away on tiny computers that floated in the air. Jed, Hector and Sonny reached the last room. Jed pointed to a ginger kitten with white ears who was sitting at a table and examining some sparkling items in front of her. Jed told the dogs it was Dr. Dooley, and she loved having visitors to her lab. Hector and Sonny jumped off the boards. As soon as they landed on the ground, their boards vanished. Jed said, Cheerio, and rode away on his hoverboard. Dr. Julie noticed the visitors and gave them a friendly hello. She invited them closer and said, Ah, going by the material of your dog collars, I can see you have come from the past. She looked closer at them. But I suspect you two are different from the other dogs on your planet. I can sense that you've been on many adventures of a magical nature. You have twinkles of magic in your eyes. Sunny smiled at the kitten and said, Yes, we have been on many adventures before, but we can't quite believe that we're now on Mars. We're very pleased to meet you. I'm Sunny, and this is my best friend, Hector. Hector smiled at the kitten. He looked at the sparkling items on the table and asked what they were. Dr. Julie explained, These are my latest finds. I don't know if you're aware, but my ancestors were some of the first to arrive on Mars, and they found some magical jewels beneath the ground and began experimenting on them. She chuckled and purred at the same time, which was a truly delightful sound and it made Hector and Sonny smile. The kitten continued talking. Since that time, my family have all been jewel experts, which explains our family name. I found these jewels last week, and I'm about to do some experiments on them. I want to make a new kind of flying car out of them, one that no one has ever seen before. Dr. Julie gave the dogs another long look and asked if they could help her with her experiment. Hector and Sonny 
instantly said yes and asked what they could do to help. The kitten said, Close your eyes. Place your paws on this large silver jewel and use your imagination to picture the most amazing flying car that you can think of. The jewels do contain a lot of magic, but I suspect your imaginations contain just as much, if not more, magic. Hector and Sonny felt very special to be asked to perform such an important job. They took a deep breath and placed their paws on the silver jewel. It felt warm and a little bit fizzy. The dogs closed their eyes and imagined the most amazing flying car ever. After a few moments, Dr. Julie said they could move their paws and open their eyes. The dogs did so and looked at the silver jewel. It didn't look any different. Sonny asked if their magic had worked. The kitten's eyes glimmered in glee and she nodded. She told the dogs to stand back a little. The dogs took some steps back and kept their attention on the sparkling silver jewel. The precious stone started to grow. It rose off the table and grew bigger and bigger until it was much larger than the table. The jewel slowly changed shape and became longer and wider. Two shiny wheels appeared on either side of it. An engine popped into view at the front of the jewel. It purred and chuckled, making the same delightful noise that Dr. Julie had done a few minutes ago. The silver jewel slowly changed into a car, complete with two large wings on either side of it. There were comfy seats inside it and a pair of fluffy dice hanging from the dashboard. The beautiful car rotated slowly in the air and shimmered and glimmered. It was the most amazing flying car that the dogs and the kitten had ever seen. The silver car floated to the ground. Its doors opened. Dr. Julie smiled and said, I wasn't expecting wings. What a wonderful idea. Would you like to fly it around the planet? The dogs were too stunned to speak. Then Hector looked at Sunny and said she should fly it. Sunny said Hector should fly it. They laughed at each other and played a quick doggy version of the game Rock, Paper, Scissors. Sunny won the game. She got into the driver's seat of the car and said to Hector, I'll fly for a little while, and then you can fly. I don't want you to miss out on this experience. Hector said she was very kind and the best friend a dog could have. He sat next to her and asked Dr. Julie if she was coming with them. The kitten said she couldn't because she had work to do. She asked if they could come back later with the car. She wanted to examine it and then make many more copies of it. The dog said they would. The kitten smiled and waved goodbye. Sunny carefully flew the silver car away from the lab, along the corridor and towards the door. 
The wings of the car slowly flapped, causing a warm breeze to flow over the docks. They flew over Jed the Dachshund, but he didn't notice them, because he was fast asleep in his chair. Sonny steered the silver car out of the science building and asked Hector where they should go first. Hector impressed Sonny with his knowledge of Mars and said they should visit an extinct volcano called Olympus Mons because it was supposed to be the biggest volcano in the solar system and the highest point on Mars. They saw something in the distance that looked like a flat-top mountain, and Hector said it was the old volcano. Sunny flew the car towards it. When they got closer, they were amazed by the sheer size and beauty of Olympus Mons, and thought they had never seen anything so extraordinary in all their lives. They were so enchanted by the beauty of the extinct volcano that they didn't utter a single word as they flew around it. Sonny landed the car on the top of Olympus Mons and told Hector it was his turn to fly. They changed seats. Hector put his paws on the steering wheel and said he couldn't believe he was actually flying a car around Mars. Sunny smiled gently at her lovely friend and said, Me neither, but we are. I'm glad we're sharing this adventure together. Where shall we go next? Hector said he wanted to see everything, or as much as they could before they became too tired. He flew the silver car away from the volcano and over fields full of tall plants that swayed gently in the Martian breeze. They gazed in wonder at ribbons of water that flowed down the side of tall mountains. They waved to a rhinoceros who was swimming in a lagoon at the bottom of the mountain. Hector and Sunny flew around the planet for a while longer, and when the sky began to change from red to blue, Hector said, It's nearly night time, Sonny. The sky turns light blue here at night. There's something amazing I want to show you. More amazing than anything else we've seen? Sonny asked. Hector gave her one of his knowing smiles and nodded. He flew the car back to the old volcano and landed on top of it. The sun had dipped below the horizon, and hundreds of twinkling stars now filled the sky. Hector searched the sky, looking for something. Sonny wondered what he could be looking for this time. He soon found something. He raised his paw and said, Sonny, look over there. Sunny looked at where he was gesturing. Her eyes widened in surprise. She was too amazed to speak. Hector chuckled lightly and said, Two moons, Sunny. Mars has two moons. Look how beautiful they are. The stars look brighter here than they do on Earth, don't you think? Sunny nodded. She sighed happily and gazed at the beautiful moons of Mars. 
The two best friends watch the Martian night sky for a little longer, lost in the amazing awesomeness of it all. After a while, Sonny began to yawn. Hector did too. He said they should return to Dr. Dewley and asked Sonny if she wanted to fly the car again. Sonny said she was too tired and would he mind flying? Not at all, Hector replied. Hector flew the car back to the science lab, through the door, and along the corridor to Dr. Julie's lab. She was still at the table where the magic jewels were. He landed the car next to the kitten's table and helped his tired friend out of it. Dr. Julie said hello and asked about their journey. The dogs told her and said they were now very tired and ready to return home. Dr. Julie asked if they needed any help getting home. The dog said no, thank you, and explained it only had to bark three times and they'd be home. They thanked Dr. Julie for their unforgettable journey in the flying car. The kitten gave the car an admiring look and said she would have a trip in it later. She said it had been wonderful to meet them, and who knew, perhaps they would meet again sometime. Hector and Sonny said goodbye to the kitten. They waved and then barked three times. Hector and Sonny travelled through time and returned back to Sonny's garden on Earth. Their silver spacesuits vanished from them. The two tired dogs sat on the sun-warmed grass and looked at each other. Did that really happen? Sonny asked. Did we? Really travel to Mars? We did. What an amazing adventure, Hector said. <sighs> Yawn. I think I'm ready for an amazing nap now. The silver jewels on their collars floated free and over to one of Sonny's secret hiding places in the garden. They dipped down into the soil, and though they had disappeared from view, the dogs knew where they were if they ever needed the magical jewels again. Hector and Sonny settled down some more on the grass, smiled at each other, and closed their eyes. They drifted into a deep sleep. Their dreams were full of majestic Martian mountains, glorious fields of swaying grass, and a pale blue sky with two beautiful moons. Chapter 12 Hector and Sonny Go to Hollywood It was a beautiful summer's evening and a golden retriever called Hector was walking through the park with his owner. They had already been for a walk in the park earlier that day so having another walk was a very special treat for Hector. But the park looked different now. The path was lined with small lights and garlands of fairy lights covered the trees and twinkled brightly. 
there was a magical feeling in the warm evening air. Hector and his owner walked towards the large playing field. There were many people sitting there on blankets, and some of them had dogs with them. Hector wondered what they were all doing there at that time of night. At the far end of the field, there was a huge silver screen. It looked like an enormous television set, and Hector was puzzled to see it there. It was all very peculiar. They walked through the sitting people, and Hector barked out a hello to those dogs he knew. And when he saw new friends, he gave them a cheerful bark too. Hector's furry face filled with joy when he saw his very best friend, Sunny, up ahead. She was sitting on a large tartan blanket with her owner. The beautiful Cocker Spaniel saw Hector, jumped up and wagged her tail furiously in welcome. Hector politely barked at his owner and asked him to walk a little quicker, please, because he needed to talk to Sunny immediately and find out what was going on in the park that evening. His owner must have sensed the urgency in Hector's barks because he jogged over to Sunny in record time. The two owners said hello to each other and began to chat about what a lovely evening it was. Sunny grinned at Hector and said, Hi Hector, I'm so glad you're here. I didn't know if you were coming tonight. It's a perfect night for it, isn't it? Hector frowned and said, Hmm, a perfect night for what, Sonny? What is going on? Why are there so many people here? And who put that giant television screen over there? Sonny glanced at the silver screen and then back at her friend. She told him that the park was holding an outdoor movie event that night. When she saw Hector's confused expression, she explained, Think of this field as a huge sitting room with a big television. And instead of sitting on the sofa, we'll be sitting on blankets. Hector's dark eyes widened in surprise. Wow, I've never been to an outdoor movie before. Can we all sit together? What movie is it? Is it a comedy? I love those. Or is it a detective one? I love those too. I always thought we would make great detectives, Sonny. Sonny chuckled softly and said, <laughs> I don't know what the movie is yet, but yes, we can sit together. There's plenty of room on the blanket for all of us. The two friends sat on the tartan blanket and looked at the silver screen. The sky grew a little darker and stars began to appear. Sunny whispered to Hector, It feels very magical tonight, doesn't it? Hector nodded. The soft sound of music came from the screen and a hush fell over the audience. The movie was about to begin. Hector and Sonny shared an excited look and snuggled up closer to each other. And a familiar face appeared on the screen. It was a famous action movie star called Hugo, a golden Labrador puppy who went on many adventures and was always finding hidden treasure somewhere. Hector and Sonny grinned at each other. They loved Hugo's movies. Dogs around them began to cheerfully bark. It seemed they loved Hugo's movies too. The movie began with Hugo lying on a beach on a sun lounger with a drink of water in his paw. He was taking a well-deserved break from his work as a treasure hunter. But then, a green bottle washed up on the shore. Hugo sees it 
and runs over to it. Inside the bottle, he discovers a treasure map. Hugo knows his holiday will have to wait, and off he goes on another exciting adventure. Sunny sighed wistfully and whispered to Hector, I wish we could be in a movie with Hugo. Hector nodded and said he did too. At that moment, the action on the screen froze, and so did the world around Hector and Sonny. The two friends smiled at each other. When time froze, it only meant one thing. They were about to go on another adventure. But where would they go this time? A silver-furred squirrel called Sydney magically appeared at their side. Sydney had helped the dogs go on many adventures before. He said hello to them. He told them Hugo was a friend of his, and would the dogs like to be in a movie with him? Hector's mouth fell open. He was too astonished to speak. Sonny answered for both of them and said yes, but how would they get into the movie? Sydney answered, I'll take you to the place where Hugo's movies are made. It's called Hollywood, and many movies for dogs are filmed there. Sydney scampered across the grass and towards the silver screen. Hector and Sonny ran after him. Sydney jumped right through the silver screen. Hector and Sonny did too. They landed in a different world. A world full of magic and wonder. Hector and Sonny saw streets lined with tall, glittering buildings that had huge doors that slid to the side. Dogs dressed in different outfits were going into the buildings. They spotted some Dalmatians dressed as police officers, a group of pirouetting poodles wearing tutus, and three pugs clad in silver spacesuits. Sydney explained that the buildings were film studios and movies were being made inside them. Hector and Sonny walked slowly along the street and took in the wide variety of dogs dressed in different outfits. Huge cameras on wheels were being moved in and out of the buildings and faint calls of action drifted through the air from different areas. In the distance, the dogs noticed the word Hollywood in large white letters set on a hill. There were a lot of dogs bustling about and Hector and Sonny didn't know where to look. Sydney waved to someone behind them and a moment later, Hugo, the famous action star, jogged over to them. He was wearing his treasure hunting outfit and had a brown hat on his little puppy head. Hugo grinned at Sydney and gave him a high five. Sydney introduced Hector and Sonny to the famous puppy and explained why they were there. Sydney asked Hugo if the dogs could be in his movie. Hugo took his hat off, smiled at the dogs and said, Sure you can. I'd be delighted to have you in my new movie. I'm filming it today. Would you like to join me? Hector and Sonny's mouths fell open. They were completely starstruck and couldn't say a word. With some effort, they managed to nod in response. Hugo grinned and said, Great! I'll ask my writer to put some extra scenes in the movie just for you two. He let out a whistle 
and a smiling puppy with chocolate-coloured fur bounded over to them. She was a cocker spaniel just like Sunny. The puppy grinned and waved her paw at everyone. Hugo introduced the puppy and said her name was Jura and that she was the best writer in the business. Hugo asked Jura to write some extra scenes for his new pals and to make them treasure hunters like him. Hector and Sonny giggled at being called his new pals. Jura said of course, and then asked Hector and Sonny if they would be willing to leap over fallen trees, climb mountains and explore caves. Hector and Sonny nodded vigorously. They were willing to give anything a go. Jura nodded and ran over to a small desk, sat down and began to write at an impressive speed. Sidney the squirrel told Hector and Sonny it was time for him to leave. He reminded them to bark three times when they wanted to return home. In a flash of silver, Sidney disappeared. Hugo said, Whilst we're waiting for Jura to write those extra scenes, let me take you to the costume department. You'll need to wear something similar to me in the movie. Is that okay? Hector and Sonny nodded again, still too starstruck to speak. The famous puppy led Hector and Sonny over to a building. They went inside, and Hector and Sonny were amazed to see lines and lines of outfits. The costumes filled the whole building. Hugo walked on a little, stopped at a rail, and rifled through the outfits. He soon found the perfect treasure-hunting outfits for Hector and Sonny. He handed them to the waiting dogs. Hugo then picked up a pair of sunglasses for Hector and said, You're such a cool-looking dog, and I think your character would wear these. And Sonny, I think this new neck scarf will highlight the intelligence in your eyes. Hector and Sonny giggled again at the compliments coming from their favourite movie star. When Sonny and Hector were dressed in their outfits, Hugo took them back outside. Jura, the writer, was waiting for them. She read the new scenes out to Hector and Sonny and explained what they would be doing. Hector and Sonny listened carefully and did their best to look as confident as they possibly could. Hugo, Hector and Sonny went into the film studio where the movie was being made. It looked like a huge forest and had realistic-looking trees, a river and a mountain at the far end. The director of the movie walked over to them. He was a little pomchi called Ollie. Hugo introduced his new friends and told Ollie about the extra scenes. The director welcomed Hector and Sonny and asked them to get into position. Hector and Sonny gave him a blank look, so Hugo explained that the next scene was going to be set by the river. He was going to leap over it, and then Hector and Sonny should follow him. Hugo jogged over to the river. Sonny noticed the nervous look on Hector's face and whispered to him, You've got this, Hector. You can do this. Hector whispered back, oh, I don't think I can, Sonny. I'm not a movie star. I'm just a dog who loves gravy and sleeping. Using her paw, Sonny gently raised Hector's sunglasses and looked into his beautiful eyes. She smiled at her lovely friend and said, 
Today, Hector, you are a movie star. One who looks very cool in his outfit. I know you'll do a fabulous job. I totally believe in you. Hector's heart filled with love at his friend's kind words. He grinned and said, Thanks, Sonny. With you at my side, I can do anything. Right, let's have some fun. They jogged over to Hugo. The director shouted, Action! Hugo leapt into motion and jumped over the river. Hector and Sonny followed his lead and jumped over it too. The three dogs went on a quest to find some hidden treasure. They explored the dense forest, climbed over fallen trees, crossed a bridge made of rope, and then scaled the tall mountain, which, thankfully, wasn't that tall at all. The treasure was discovered inside a wooden chest that was hidden deep within a cave. Hugo stood to one side and allowed his companions to open the treasure chest. Hector slowly took off his sunglasses and Sunny straightened her blue neck scarf. It seemed the sort of thing that treasure hunters would do at such an important moment. Hector lifted the lid of the chest, and Sunny reached inside it. She pulled out a rolled-up piece of paper that had turned pale yellow with age. Sunny gave it to Hugo, but he shook his head and said she should unroll it. Even though Sonny was very excited at what was happening and wanted to giggle, she remained in character and slowly unrolled the paper. There were pictures and symbols on it. They didn't make any sense to Sonny or Hector. But they did to Hugo. He took his hat off, smiled wisely at the paper, and said, I can't believe we have found such a treasured artifact. I've been looking for this for years, and so have many others. What is it? Hector asked, also remaining in character. Hugo paused dramatically, and then said, It's an ancient recipe for the most delicious gravy ever made. This recipe has been lost for hundreds of years, but not any longer. We will share this with the world. He smiled at Hector and Sonny, paused dramatically again and said, I wouldn't have found this without your help. Thank you, my friends. Sonny and Hector smiled at Hugo and then looked at the recipe with great interest because that's what real treasure hunters would do. The director called out, That's a wrap. Excellent work, everyone. Hector, Sonny, you were amazing. Hugo thanked the dogs and said it was time for his nap. He said goodbye and walked away, yawning a little. The director asked Hector and Sonny if they would like to be in some more movies because he was always looking for extra actors. Hector and Sonny shared a grin of excitement and said, yes, they would love to. The director took them over to a different filming studio 
and introduced them to a couple of French bulldogs called Vincent and Winston, who were about to shoot a scene in a comedy movie. The director said, Hector, Sonny, could you become the shop owners in this scene, please? I'll have someone bring your outfits over. When Vincent and Winston come in, keep handing them different items to what they've asked for. Make it as funny as you can. Don't we need a script? Hector asked. The director smiled and replied, You two are natural actors. You have star quality. I saw that as soon as we met. You don't need scripts. You have the talent to make it up as you go along. Hector and Sonny gave him bashful smiles and said, Thank you. They changed into different outfits and took up positions behind the counter. The director called out, Action! And the scene began. Vincent and Winston walked through the door of the shop at the same time and managed to get themselves stuck. It was all part of the act. Sonny and Hector ran over to them and managed to get Vincent and Winston unstuck but got themselves in a tangle in the process. More comical misunderstandings occurred, including... Hector chasing after some runaway apples and getting jammed under the counter, and Sunny wearing her hat back to front, no matter how many times she tried to put it right. She ended up wearing it on her tail instead. The dogs had a wonderful time making up funny things to do, and their co-stars, Vincent and Winston, kept breaking into laughter over their funny antics. The scene was soon brought to an end. The director wiped tears of laughter from his eyes and told Hector and Sonny they were natural comedians. He said, How do you feel about singing and dancing? Could you take part in a musical movie next? It's set in a park and the actors will keep breaking into songs and dances. What do you say? Hector and Sonny shared a look, nodded at each other, and told the director they could do that. Great. Thank you, the director said. We'll be shooting on location in the local park. I'll take you there in my director's buggy, but... You'll need a change of clothing before we go. Can I leave you to do that on your own? Pick something sparkly and glittery. I'll meet you outside the costume building in ten minutes. The director waved goodbye and headed over to a group of scriptwriters. Hector and Sonny made their way back to the building where the costumes were stored. They nodded hello to all the dogs they met along the way, feeling very much like movie stars. Once inside the costume building, it didn't take them long to find the perfect outfits for a glitzy musical. Hector chose a pair of sparkling blue trousers and teamed them with a green shirt which had silver sequins on the cuffs and collar. Sonny wanted to wear a tutu, but couldn't decide which colour to choose. Hector suggested she put them all on and see how she felt. Great idea, Hector, she replied. You are so clever. Sonny wiggled into seven brightly coloured tutus and then twirled around in front of a mirror. 
She grinned and said, I look like a dancing rainbow. Hector said she looked wonderful. Sonny said he looked wonderful too. They skipped towards the exit and did a few twirls and whirls along the way to limber up for their dancing scenes. Near the door, they saw a line of sparkly capes and decided to wear a cape too, just for the fun of it. The director was waiting outside for them in a vehicle that looked like a golf buggy. He admired the outfits they were wearing and said they had great style. Hector and Sonny jumped into the buggy and off they went. The director drove them away from the movie studio, along a road and into a huge park. They heard the sound of jazzy music coming from a huge grassy area. Looking closer, they saw a wide variety of dogs performing many kinds of dancing. Each dog was wearing something sparkly, and their outfits glimmered and shimmered in the sun. The director parked his buggy near the dancing dogs and waved to a Yorkshire terrier who was wearing a long gold dress. The terrier danced towards them, her dress sparkling and twinkling in the sunlight. The director introduced the dog to Hector and Sonny. This is Glitter. She's the best dancer in Hollywood and has been in hundreds of movies. Glitter waved the compliments away and said, I wouldn't say I'm the best. I just enjoy dancing so very much. When the director asked if she could find room for Hector and Sonny in some of the dance scenes, Glitter smiled kindly at the two dogs and said, of course. She asked them to follow her. Hector and Sonny jumped out of the buggy. The director said filming would start soon and the dogs should forget about being filmed and just have a good time dancing. He drove away to another part of the park, where dogs with cameras were setting up their equipment. As they walked towards groups of dancing dogs, Glitter said, You can join in with as many groups as you like. Do what feels best for you. And when it's time to sing the songs, you can join in. You'll soon learn the words. I'm the main character in the movie, and I'll wander from group to group. In the movie, this is my first day in the park, and I'm making lots of new friends who happen to love dancing and singing. We end up putting on a show together. The music changed tempo and became more upbeat. Glitter said the scene was about to be filmed. She told them to have fun, waved and hastened away towards the entrance of the park. The music got louder. Sonny and Hector grooved over to a couple of dancing chihuahuas and asked if they could join them. The chihuahuas made room for them and the dogs began to boogie and twist to the cheerful music. The chihuahuas sang a song called Wag Your Tail Like You Just Don't Care. A few moments later, Glitter joined them and had a dance too. After that, Hector and Sonny twisted and twirled 
over to a group of German shepherds who were jigging and jiving. They made room for Hector and Sonny and taught them the words of their song, which was called Barking Up the Right Tree. It wasn't long before Glitter joined them and she danced right next to Hector and Sonny and kept smiling at them. The cameras were rolling and capturing the dancing on film. But Hector and Sonny were too busy dancing to notice. They were having an amazing time. All too soon, the director called out, That's a wrap. And the dancing came to a slow stop. Hector and Sonny smiled at each other. Glitter walked over to the two dogs and praised their dancing skills. She said, Can you stay for our wind-down session? We always have one of those after our dances. It helps us to relax. <sighs> She let out a sudden yawn, chuckled softly and said, <laughs> Excuse me, my yawns take me by surprise sometimes. Ooh, she yawned again. Sunny yawned too. So did Hector. Glitter clapped her paws together and turned to face the rest of the dogs. She told them it was time for their wind-down session. A chorus of yawns filled the air, and once again, Hector and Sunny yawned. Glitter asked the tired dogs to lie down on the grass, close their eyes, and take some deep, Relaxing breaths. Hector and Sonny found some room next to some sleepy St. Bernard's and settled down next to them. They closed their eyes and took some long, deep breaths. Glitter led the dogs in a series of slow breathing exercises which caused them to become more and more relaxed. Sunny opened one eye and looked at Hector and said, We'd better return to our owners before we fall asleep right here in Hollywood. Hector opened one eye and nodded. He whispered, We'll have to bark very quietly. I don't want to disturb anyone. The two movie stars barked three times as quietly as they could. The world around them faded and they were back with their owners who were now unfrozen. The two dogs settled down on the soft, cosy blanket and smiled at the image of Hugo on the screen. He felt like a friend to them now. Sunny yawned and said, oh, I've had a wonderful time being a movie star. Me too, Hector said. I loved all the movies we were in, but I was half hoping we could have been detectives too. A wistful look came into Sonny's eyes. Oh, imagine that, Hector. Imagine if we were detectives solving a case. What a lovely thought. Hector gave his best friend one of his knowing smiles and said, 
I've got a feeling that we will become real detectives very soon. The smile on Sonny's face filled Hector's heart with love. He couldn't wait to go on another adventure with his best friend. But that would have to wait for a while. The two tired dogs shared one more smile, closed their eyes and fell asleep. Their dreams were full of the magic and sparkle of Hollywood. Chapter 13 Hector and Sonny Become Detectives It was a lazy Sunday afternoon and two dogs called Hector and Sonny were lying on a rug in front of a flickering fire. They were at Sonny's house and listening to her owner reading from one of her favourite mystery books. Sonny's owner had a very soothing voice and the dogs often fell asleep while listening to her stories. But not that day. The mystery happening within the book had them hooked and they couldn't wait to find out what would happen next. Would the clever detective solve the mystery? If so, how? Sonny's owner came to the end of a chapter. She closed the book and placed it on the table next to her. She smiled over at the resting dogs and told them she was going to make herself a cup of tea and wouldn't be long. She stood up and left the room. Hector, a friendly golden retriever, looked at Sonny and said, I love mystery stories. I wonder how this one is going to end. Sonny was a cocker spaniel with beautiful blue eyes that sometimes turned green and sometimes grey. She said, I can't wait to hear the ending. Hector, I wish we could be clever detectives solving a mystery. Wouldn't that be amazing? <sighs> she let out a wistful sigh and smiled softly. Hector's nose twitched. He sat up straight and sniffed the air. A familiar look came into his eyes. Sunny sat up and grinned at her friend. Hector, are you getting one of your feelings again? Are we about to go on another magical adventure? A slow smile spread across Hector's handsome face. He nodded and said, <laughs> We certainly are. I don't know what kind of adventure yet, but it's going to happen very soon. Is it going to happen here? Sonny asked. Or do we need to go outside? If so, I can let out one of my special barks to let my owner know I want to go out for a walk. Hector was only half listening to his dear friend because he had spotted something unusual appearing on the wall. He raised his paw and said, Sonny, look. Sonny looked at where Hector had his attention. A new door had appeared right next to the living room door. It was silver and had a picture of Hector and Sonny on it. In the picture, the dogs were wearing trench coats and hats, just like the detective in the books wore. Sonny gasped. Oh, it's a magical doorway. I wonder where it leads and why do we look like that in the picture? <laughs> She suddenly started laughing. Of course, it must be a door that leads to a magical world where we're actually detectives. It can't mean anything else, can it? 
Hector gave Sonny an admiring look and said he was impressed with her detective skills. Sonny said, Thanks, Hector. Are you ready to go on another adventure? Always, Hector replied with a grin. The world around them froze, and even the flames in the fire stopped in mid-flicker. The dogs bounded over to the magical door. Hector opened it and they stepped through the door and into another world, a world full of magic and wonder. They were inside an office. There were two large desks beneath a huge window, and behind the desks were chairs that looked the perfect size for two detective dogs. There was another door opposite the chairs, but it was a normal one and not at all magical. Framed photographs of Hector and Sonny were on the walls and showed them shaking paws with a variety of animals. A glass-fronted fridge stood in the far corner and was filled with jugs of water and tasty snacks. In the other corner were two large cushions, ideal places to take a nap. There was also a coat stand where two dog-sized trench coats were hanging and hats balanced on the top hooks. Sonny said, Wow, Hector, look at this office. It must be ours. I wonder if those photos on the walls are of the animals we've helped. There are a lot of them. We must be very good detectives in this world. She walked over to the photos to get a better look at them. Hector ran towards the chairs and said, Look at these. I wonder if they spin around. He leapt onto one of the chairs, put his paw on the desk and gave himself a push. The chair began to spin around. Hector let out a whoop of delight. Sunny looked over at her spinning friend and laughed. She ran over, jumped onto the other chair and began to spin around too. At that very moment, the normal door in their office opened and their first client stepped through it. Hector was too busy spinning around to notice, but Sonny did. She brought herself to an abrupt stop and gave the client a small, embarrassed smile. When Hector still hadn't noticed their visitor, Sonny put her paw on his spinning chair and made it slow down. Hector finally came to a stop. He saw the client and let out an embarrassed chuckle. He said, oh, Sorry about that. Uh, we were just testing out the chairs. May we help you? In front of them stood an auburn furred puppy wearing denim shorts, an orange t shirt, and a baseball hat. The puppy said, is this the Hector and Sonny Detective Agency? Hector immediately said, Oh, I don't know. He looked at Sonny. She looked at him. Hector cleared his throat and said, <clears throat> Yes, yes, it is. And uh, we are Hector and Sonny. Can we help you with something? The puppy sighed. Oh. I don't know if my problem is too small for such important detectives like you two. I don't want to waste your time. Sunny jumped off her chair and walked over to the puppy. She pulled out a chair for him and asked him to sit down. Once he was seated, she said, No problem is too small for us. Why don't you tell us your name first? And then, what your problem is? She returned to her chair and waited for the puppy to speak. The puppy said, My name is Rufus, and this is my problem. 
he pulled out a puzzle cube from his pocket. It had lots of mixed up coloured squares on it. Rufus continued talking. I'm trying to put the same colours together, but I just can't do it. I keep the cube with me all the time, and I've spent the last few weeks trying to solve it. Whenever I get some spare time, I take my puzzle out and I have another go. Do you know how to solve this? And can you show me how to do it, please? Sunny slowly shook her head. She'd seen the puzzle before, but didn't know how to solve it. Hector, however, knew what to do. He told Rufus that he'd seen the puzzle completed many times by some human friends of his, and they had shown Hector what to do. Hector had never tried to complete the puzzle himself, but he was sure it couldn't be that difficult. Hector moved over to Rufus and sat at his side. He took the cube and began to move the segments this way and that. Rufus watched his every move with great interest. Much to Hector's relief, he completed the puzzle in less than four minutes. Rufus was astonished and asked Hector to show him the moves again. Hector happily did so until the puppy was certain he would remember them. After solving the puzzle himself a few times, the happy puppy was ready to leave the office. He thanked the kind dogs and walked over to the door. He put his little paw on the handle, but then hesitated. Sonny instinctively knew there was something else on his mind. She went over to Rufus and softly asked if he needed help with anything else. Rufus turned his puppy eyes to her and said, I've lost my mum's best socks somewhere in the back garden. I love hiding socks in the garden, and I always remember where I put them, but not this time. I can't even remember when I lost them. Mum said it was okay, and that she has plenty of other socks, but I would really like to find them. Could you help me with that? Sunny broke into a wide smile and told Rufus she was an expert when it came to finding lost socks and hiding them too when needed. She asked if it was okay for them to visit Rufus's home and search the back garden. Rufus smiled and said yes and added that his home wasn't far away. Hector and Sonny left their offices with their client. It was too warm to wear their trench coats, but they popped their hats on and felt very much like professional detectives. As they walked along the pavement towards Rufus's home, Hector noticed a double-decker bus driving past. There was an advertising poster on the side of it. Hector grinned and pointed it out to Sunny. Sunny laughed when she saw it. It was an advertisement for their detective agency, and their smiling faces looked out at them from the poster as the bus drove on by. They soon arrived at Rufus's house. He quickly introduced Sonny and Hector to his mum, who was pruning some roses in the back garden. When she found out why they were there, she said, Oh, really? There's no need to find my socks. I have plenty more. Sonny replied by saying she knew how important socks were and that finding a lost pair shouldn't take her that long, hopefully. Hector kindly told Rufus and his mum to stand to one side and let Sonny do her thing. 
Sonny stood at the centre of the garden and carefully looked around it. There were some places that weren't at all suitable for hiding things in, and some places that were perfect. She slowly walked around the garden and examined those places where a pair of socks might be hidden. Alas, she didn't find anything. Then she remembered something Rufus had said in their office earlier. She strolled around the garden again, and by using all of her new detective skills, she worked out where the missing socks might possibly be. Sunny walked over to a tree and looked at the grass around the bottom of it. She ran her paw through the longest part of the grass. Ah, uh -huh. there was something soft and woolly there. She looked closer, moved the grass to one side, and found a pair of pink socks. She picked them up and said, Are these the missing socks? Rufus's mum clapped her paws in delight and said yes. Rufus was astounded and asked Sunny how she knew where to look. Sunny waved her paw at the patch of flattened grass in front of the tree. She said, This place is in a shady area and is the perfect place for a puppy to sit if he's trying to solve a cube-shaped puzzle. You told us that you've been trying to solve the puzzle for weeks. Did you sometimes sit under this tree whilst doing that? Rufus nodded and explained he had sat there every day trying to solve the puzzle. Sunny smiled and continued explaining. <laughs> the grass where you've been sitting has become flattened, but the grass behind it, where I found the socks, is much longer. I suspect you came out here a few weeks ago with your mum's socks, planning to hide them. But before you could do that, you started to think about your puzzle again. So, you sat down, put the socks behind you, and focused all your attention on your puzzle. You completely forgot about the socks until you realised they were missing some time later. But by then, the grass had grown and covered up the socks. Am I right? Rufus's eyes widened, he said. Yes, you are. That's exactly what happened. I remember now. I was going to hide the socks in the branches of that tree because it's one of my favourite places to hide things. But then I sat down and thought I'd try to solve my puzzle again. When I realised I'd lost the socks, I looked in all my usual hiding places, but... Under the tree isn't one of them, so I never look there. He smiled at Sunny and said she was an amazing detective. Hector and Rufus's mum agreed. Sunny gave them a shy smile and said it was nothing. She gave the socks to Rufus, who then gave them to his mum, who then said she would give them a wash. Sonny said, Hector and I will be on our way now. There might be other clients who need our help. Rufus and his mum thanked the detective duo. Hector and Sonny said goodbye and walked out of their garden. They headed back along the pavement towards their office. They hadn't got very far when they were stopped by a monkey wearing a red jumpsuit and yellow shoes. He said hello to the dogs and asked if they were Hector and Sonny from the famous detective agency. 
The dogs nodded and asked if they could help the monkey. The monkey sighed and said he wasn't sure if his problem was too small for the dogs. Sunny said no problem was too small for them. She asked for the monkey's name and if he could give them more details about his problem. The monkey told them he was called Mateo and then he explained, I've got a 500 piece jigsaw puzzle at home, but I accidentally threw out the top part of the box which had the picture on it. And now, I can't remember what the picture was of. I think it was a forest, but I'm not certain. Can you help me put the jigsaw puzzle together, please? Have we got time to do that? Hector said they had plenty of time and asked if Mateo could take them to his home. The monkey's face filled with joy. And he said, yes, he could do that. He skipped along the pavement, swinging his arms happily. Hector and Sonny followed him. They soon arrived at Mateo's treehouse where he lived with his family. Hector and Sonny looked up at the tall treehouse and wondered how they were going to climb it. They were mightily relieved when Matteo told them there was a lift built into the tree trunk and it was big enough for them all to fit into. Upwards they went and soon stepped out onto a wooden porch that surrounded the cosy treehouse. Matteo took them inside and introduced them to his parents, his brother and his auntie. Matteo's family were glad to see Hector and Sonny because they had all tried to put the jigsaw puzzle together, but hadn't been able to manage it, no matter how hard they had tried. Hector and Sonny shared a concerned look. They were thinking the same thing. They really hoped they would be able to put the jigsaw puzzle together. Matteo took the dogs into the living room and over to a table, that was covered in jigsaw pieces. Hector and Sonny shared another concerned look. There were a lot of pieces. Matteo knelt at the side of the table and pointed to a small section of the puzzle that had been completed. He proudly said, Look, I managed to do that part of the puzzle and put together a picture of a koala. I think he's standing on a porch, but I don't think he lives in a treehouse like me. Sonny and Hector peered at the smiling image of the little koala. They looked at each other and started laughing. They told Mateo they knew who the koala was. He was called Coco, and they had met him a few months ago. They had been to his house too, and knew what it looked like. Mateo grinned and let out a cheer. The dog detectives sat on either side of the monkey and looked closer at the puzzle pieces. They described Coco's house so that Mateo knew what to look out for. With great concentration, the dogs and the monkey found the correct pieces that made up Coco's cabin and put them together. They soon discovered that Coco's family were also in the picture and were standing at Coco's side. They continued working on the jigsaw and slowly began to put the rest of it together. As they worked, Hector and Sonny told Mateo about their visit to the place where Coco lived, a magical place called Sleepy Forest. When the puzzle had been completed, the two dogs and the monkey stood up and took a good look at it. 
The picture showed the happy koala family standing on the porch of their cabin in the middle of Sleepy Forest. In the background were some of Coco's friends, including a sleepy sloth in a tree and a rainbow-coloured chameleon resting on a rock. Mateo's family came into the living room and admired the completed puzzle. They said Hector and Sonny were amazing detectives and thanked them for their help. The dogs said they were more than welcome and that it had been fun putting the puzzle together. They said goodbye and returned to the ground using the lift. Hector and Sonny walked along the pavement again in the direction of their office. Along the way, other animals stopped them and asked for their help. Hector and Sonny said yes to all of them and tried their best to solve whatever mystery arose. They helped a grey cat called Nick knack who had lost her favourite collar. After visiting her house and finding out what she'd done that day, Hector discovered that Nick knack had put her collar in the fridge by mistake and that she'd put the milk from the fridge on top of her jewellery box. Nick knack shook her head at herself and said, I am so sorry about that. I've never done anything like that before. It must be because I haven't slept well these last few nights, and I'm not thinking straight. Hector and Sonny always had a good night's sleep and offered the cat some bedtime tips and said snuggling down in their beds and listening to a bedtime story always helped them fall asleep. Nick knack said she would try all of those things and thanked the dogs. The cat yawned. Hector and Sonny did too. The dogs said goodbye and went on their way. The next animal who needed their help was an elephant called Eliana. She had lost her straw hat somewhere in town, but couldn't remember where she'd last had it. It was her favourite hat, and had been a present from her mum. Once again, Hector asked their client about her day and what she had been doing. Eliana couldn't remember that either, so Sunny suggested... They start at her house and retrace her steps. Sonny's plan worked, and after retracing Eliana's journey that day, they found her straw hat at the swimming pool. She'd taken it off to have a dip in the water because she didn't want to get it wet. With her hat back on her head, Eliana thanked the dogs and said, I am sorry about that. I've never lost my hat before, and I'm usually very good at remembering where I've been. It must be, because I haven't slept very well recently, and I'm not thinking straight. Sunny and Hector said she wasn't the only one who wasn't sleeping well, and they shared their sleeping tips again. Eliana smiled and said she would try those things that very night. Eliana yawned. Hector and Sonny did too. The detective dogs made it back to their office building without anyone else needing their help. The tired friends yawned all the way back, and when they entered their office, they agreed it was time to go back to Sonny's house. They hung their detective hats on the stand, took one last look at their office and walked through the magical silver door and back into their own world. As soon as they were back in Sonny's living room, the silver door disappeared and time unfroze. 
the sleepy dog settled down on the soft rug in front of the flickering fire. Sunny said, That was a wonderful adventure. I loved being a detective. Me too, Hector agreed. Maybe we'll go back to our office again in the future and solve more mysteries. Sunny said that was a lovely thought. She smiled at her best friend, closed her eyes and fell asleep. Hector closed his eyes and fell asleep too. Sunny's owner came into the room carrying a mug of tea. She looked at the sleeping dogs in surprise. They never fell asleep when she was reading one of her mystery stories to them and always stayed awake until she reached the end. How mysterious! She smiled softly at Hector and Sunny and returned to her chair. She was happy to let sleeping dogs lie. She read her book for a while longer, but the soft snores coming from the dreaming dogs made her feel so delightfully tired. She put her book down, leaned back in the chair, and gently drifted into a peaceful sleep. Chapter 14 Hector and Sonny Meet the King It was very early on a sunny day in May and two dogs were walking through a beautiful park in London with their owners. The dogs were called Hector and Sonny and they were the very best of friends. They hadn't been to London before and were very excited about exploring the city. As the group walked along, Hector said to Sonny, This park is enormous, much bigger than our one back at home. There's so much to see and do here. Sonny nodded. I agree, and this city is much bigger than our town back home. I love having days out with our owners, don't you? I wonder why they've brought us to London, though. Do you think there's something special going on today? Hector looked left and right and said, Hmm, there is definitely something going on. The humans are very happy and they're wearing their holiday clothes. Some of them have brought picnic hampers into the park and are sitting on blankets. A dapper-looking dachshund walked towards the dogs. He smiled at them and said, Hello there. You must be here for the coronation celebrations. I am too. My owner is very excited and she was awake even before the sun rose in the sky. Hector and Sunny stopped walking and gave the Dachshund their full attention. They asked what a coronation was. Hector and Sunny's owners stopped to talk to the owner of the Dachshund. The Dachshund explained, There's a man called King Charles III who lives in a palace not far away. Today is a special day for him and he will get to wear a really special crown. His wife will get a crown too. It will happen inside a lovely building called Westminster Abbey. And it'll be shown on lots of huge screens around London and around the world as well. There are some screens in this park, and that's where I'm going now with my owner. 
We want to find the perfect place where we can watch the coronation. Sunny was a curious dog, and she asked the Dachshund more about King Charles. The Dachshund answered as many questions as he could, but his owner was keen to find somewhere to sit, so he said farewell to Hector and Sunny and added, I hope you get to see the king on a screen somewhere. Hector said to Sonny, I know we've only just heard about the king, but I really hope we get to see him. He grinned. What if we got to meet him too? What if we got to talk to him? Wouldn't that be amazing? Sunny said it would be utterly amazing. Then she noticed a familiar look in Hector's eyes and said, Hector, are you getting one of your feelings? Will we be going on a magical adventure soon? Hector's look turned thoughtful and he said, I think there is an adventure ahead of us, but I'm not sure if it's a magical one yet. But I do know it will be a special adventure. They continued strolling through the park and noticed more happy people setting up chairs and blankets on the grass. Everyone was in high spirits and the sound of happy chatter filled the air. Hector and Sonny got to meet many other dogs as they walked on through the park, and they said hello to them. The other dogs were very excited about the coronation, and their tails wagged enthusiastically about the upcoming event. Their joy washed over Hector and Sonny, and filled them with happiness too. Hector said, Sonny, I think there is magic in the air today, but it's a different kind of magic. One that's made from joy. There's so much of it that I feel I could reach out and catch some of that magic in my paw. He swiped his paw in the air and pretended to catch some magic in it. Sonny chuckled. Hector, you are so funny sometimes. The group walked on and soon reached the exit of the park. They left the park and walked along the busy streets of London. Fluttering flags and colourful bunting adorned lampposts and shop windows. Trees were festooned with red, blue and white ribbons and balloons bobbed on strings tied around their branches. Light laughter and happy chatter came from all directions as people walked along looking for the ideal place to enjoy the festivities. The sun shone down warmly and there wasn't a single cloud in the beautiful blue sky. It was the most perfect of days. The dogs and their owners continued walking along the streets and saw a group of street performers on a corner who were entertaining the crowd with their joyful music. The watching crowd jigged from side to side. Hector and Sonny couldn't resist having a little jig too. They watched the performers for a few minutes and then carried on through the colourful streets. The dog's owners seemed to be heading somewhere in particular and Sonny said, I wonder where we're going? Hector replied, I think our owners are looking for the right place to watch the coronation. I hope they find somewhere soon. I don't want to miss anything. To Hector's relief, 
their owners brought their dogs to a stop outside a huge majestic building. There were a lot of people gathered in front of it, but there was a special area that was just for dog owners, and it had lots of full water bowls on the ground, along with some soft dog beds in case any tired canines needed a rest. Hector and Sonny settled into the area, had a drink of cool water, and then began to chat with the other dogs around them. They soon discovered that the building behind them was Westminster Abbey, the very place where King Charles would receive his crown. Hector and Sonny shared an excited look, and their eyes twinkled with joyful anticipation. Hector said, What an amazing time we're having, Sonny. I don't think this day can get any better. The dogs continued to chat with the other dogs, and their owners talked with the other owners too. A few minutes later, a giant screen near the dog area flickered to life, and the crowd got their first view of the interior of Westminster Abbey, with its stunning stained glass windows, polished pews and vases overflowing with spectacular flowers. The dogs and their owners watched the screen intently, their eyes wide with wonder as they took in every detail of the amazing building. Hector and Sonny soon realised that nothing was happening inside the abbey and so began to look around them again. They wanted to remember every detail of the historic day. Sonny moved closer to Hector and whispered, Hector, there are some unusual looking dogs over there doing something peculiar. Hector whispered back, What do you mean by unusual looking? And what do you mean by peculiar? Have a look for yourself and tell me what you think, Sonny replied. She told Hector where to look. Hector looked at where Sonny had indicated. He saw two Jack Russell terriers weaving in and out of people's legs. They were sniffing the ground as though searching for something. The dogs were wearing blue coats trimmed with gold braids and had little gold and blue hats on their heads with holes for their ears to flop through. Hector looked back at Sonny and said, They seem to be looking for something. What do you think they've lost? Sonny said she didn't know, but hoped it wasn't anything too important. The dogs in blue jackets came closer, and when they began to sniff the ground near Hector and Sonny, Sonny couldn't stop herself from politely asking, if they were looking for something. The dogs looked left and right and then asked Hector and Sonny to lower their heads. Hector and Sonny did so and in a quiet voice, one of the dogs said, We work for the royal family. I'm Robert and this is my colleague Rita. Something very valuable has gone missing from the king's crown and we're trying to find it. Hector and Sonny's eyes widened and they asked if they could help the royal dogs look for the missing item. Hector said, We once had jobs as private detectives and we found a lot of missing items. Well... It was Sunny here who found them. She's amazing. Sunny smiled shyly and said, Hector is just as good at finding things too. 
Robert and Rita smiled at Hector and Sonny and said they could do with all the help they could get, especially from experienced detectives like Hector and Sonny. Rita asked if Hector and Sonny could go into Westminster Abbey with them so that they could explain more about the missing item. Hector said, We would love to, but we can't leave our owners. They would worry about us. Sonny nodded and added, We have left them before when we've been on magical adventures, but time always becomes frozen when we go on adventures and our owners aren't aware that we've left them. Robert and Rita were amazed by the mention of magical journeys and said they would like to hear more about them, but it would have to be at another time because they had to find the missing item as soon as possible. Rita said, Could you uh, freeze time now, please? Hector said, We've never been the ones to freeze time before. We've always had help with that, he sighed softly. <sighs> Perhaps uh, we can't be of any use after all. Sonny's face was furrowed in concentration and Hector knew she was having deep thoughts. After a few more moments of deep thinking, Sonny said to Hector, Do you remember earlier saying that there was so much magic in the air you could catch it in your paws? Well, yes, Hector replied. But it wasn't actual magic, just the feeling of magic because everyone was so happy. Sunny smiled gently at her best friend. What if the feeling of magic is all that we need? What if we really believed there was magic in the air and it was something you could catch and hold in your paw? And then... You can make time stop. Why don't you try, Hector? I believe you can do it. I really do. Hector's heart swelled with pride at Sonny's kind words, and he said he would give it a try. His gaze softened, and he imagined that the air around him was full of magic. He raised his paw and pictured catching some of the magic and holding it lightly. He brought his paw to his mouth and said, Please freeze time around us so that we can help these royal dogs. And don't unfreeze it until I ask you to. Thank you, magic air. Blew on the imagined magic in his paw and set it free. Hector and Sonny and the royal dogs waited for something to happen. A few seconds later, time began to slow down and then... It came to a stop. Everyone froze and became as still as statues. Everyone except Hector, Sonny, Robert and Rita. The royal dogs shook their little heads in amazement and said they had never met anyone like Hector and Sonny before. The royal dogs turned around and headed towards the abbey with Hector and Sonny right behind them. They made their way into the abbey through a hidden doorway at the back of the building. Once inside, the royal dogs took Hector and Sonny 
over to a large area and started to tell them about the missing item. Rita said, The king's crown is hundreds of years old and it has lots of precious stones on it, including sapphires. But one of those sapphires has gone missing. The crown is normally kept at the Tower of London, but it was brought here early this morning in preparation for the king's coronation. But when it arrived, one of the sapphires was missing, and we heard some people saying it must have become loose and fallen out on its journey here. The Tower of London has been searched, and so has the vehicle that transported the crown to the Abbey. But no one has found the sapphire yet. We've been asked to look for it in here, and have already had a good look. Perhaps you two might be able to spot something we've missed. Robert described the sapphire and asked Hector and Sonny if they could help them look for it. Hector nodded and said they certainly would, no matter how long it took. The abbey was huge, and there were many places to look, but the dogs were determined to help their new friends. Hector set off in one direction, and Sonny set off in another. The two dogs walked slowly around the building and searched everywhere. Every nook and cranny, every polished pew and chair, and all over the plush red carpets. The royal dogs also searched the abbey again, their noses close to the floor. As Sunny walked along one side of the abbey, she became transfixed by the sunlight slanting through the intricate stained glass windows. Rainbows of reflected colours flowed across the ancient floor and over the many vases of flowers that were placed around the abbey. She looked at the beautiful flowers. Some of the blue ones reminded her of the flowers her owner grew in their garden at home. They looked very similar. Apart from that one in the middle, which looked a little different. Sunny frowned and moved closer to it. The centre of the blue flower was twinkling and shimmering in the sunlight, but the flowers around it weren't twinkling at all. Why was that? She looked at the flower some more and noticed something. Her mouth dropped open, her eyes widened, There was a twinkling blue gem right in the middle of the flower. Its delicate colour matched the soft petal surrounding it, making it almost invisible. Sunny turned around to face the others, waved her paw excitedly and said, I think I've found it. I think I've found the sapphire. The dogs jogged over to her and looked into the centre of the blue flower. The royal dogs broke into big smiles and said it was the sapphire and how clever Sonny was to have spotted it. They didn't know how it got into the flower, but that didn't matter now. All that mattered was that the sapphire had been found. Rita and Robert thanked Sonny and began to dance with joy. Hector and Sonny were so happy that the missing sapphire had been found that they danced with joy too. At that moment, a smartly dressed man walked into the abbey and saw the dancing dogs. He smiled gently at them and walked closer. The dogs didn't notice him for a while because they were too busy having a boogie. But when they did see him, 
they came to an immediate stop and stared at him. Hector asked the royal dogs who it was. They told him it was the king. The king? Hector said. The king who's getting his crown today? The man spoke. I am the king who is getting my crown today. His gentle smile grew and his eyes twinkled with kindness. You can understand me? Hector asked. Still smiling, the king said, It appears so. Though why I can suddenly talk to dogs is a complete mystery to me. I would also like to know why everyone outside appears to become frozen in time. I don't suppose you know the answer to that, do you? I only popped down here to make sure everything was in order before the proceedings began and was quite surprised, to say the least, that everyone had been frozen. But before we continue with our conversation, let me formally introduce myself. He gave his full name. It was a long name. Hector and Sonny gave their names, which were much shorter. The royal dogs didn't need to introduce themselves as they had met the king before but they didn't miss the chance to finally talk to him. They told him about the missing sapphire and how Sonny had found it. The king smiled at Sonny and thanked her warmly. Sonny was overcome with shyness and looked down at the floor as if it was the most fascinating floor she had ever seen. Hector wasn't so shy and told the king how he had used magic to freeze time so that they could help the royal dogs find the sapphire without their owners noticing they were missing. When he saw the king's confused look, he then explained about the magical adventures he'd been on with Sonny. Okay, the king replied slowly his eyes still full of confusion. Hector frowned and said to the king, I don't understand why you haven't become frozen in time like everyone else. His frown turned into a smile. Perhaps you're a magical king and my magic didn't work on you. The king chuckled and said perhaps he was. Or maybe he was just meant to meet Hector and Sonny on his coronation day. He said, In any event, why don't we take advantage of this extra time and have a chat? The four dogs were delighted with that suggestion and followed the king over to a comfy area on the carpet and sat at his side. The royal dogs talked about their jobs and how much they loved helping the king and his family. The king smiled and said his family loved having dogs around, and his mother had been very fond of corgis in particular. He had a couple of Jack Russell Terriers at home, who were very similar to Robert and Rita. Hector and Sonny spoke about their magical adventures, which greatly impressed the others. And then the king spoke about some of his travels around the world and the lovely people he had met. After a while, the king said he had better get along. He still had many things to do. 
He asked the dogs if he could give them a hug before he left. The dogs said yes immediately, and each one received a very special royal hug from the king. The king then collected the sapphire from the blue flower and said he would make sure it would be fixed firmly back onto his crown. He waved goodbye and left the abbey. The dogs watched him leave and then grinned at each other. What a wonderful surprise that had been for them. Rita and Robert said they had work to do too and thanked Hector and Sonny for helping them. They said goodbye and headed off in the same direction that the king had. Hector and Sonny left Westminster Abbey through the secret door and returned to their owners. Hector used the coronation magic in the air to unfreeze time. People resumed their conversations and the city came back to life. Hector and Sonny sat at the side of their owners and smiled at each other. What an amazing day they were having. The day wasn't quite over. The coronation proceedings began and were shown on big screens. Hector and Sonny watched the event and smiled when their new friend, the king, was crowned. They were delighted to see that all the sapphires on the crown were firmly in place. Later on, the crowds gathered outside Buckingham Palace and watched the king and his family wave from the large balcony in the centre of the magnificent building. The king searched the crowd, and when he saw Hector and Sonny, he gave them a big smile and an extra long wave. The two dogs waved back and wagged their tails so enthusiastically that they created a small breeze. As the sun began to set, and the day's celebrations drew to a close. The king gave one final wave to the cheering crowd and went back inside the palace. The joyous atmosphere gradually began to settle and people started to head home. Together with their owners, Hector and Sonny began their long journey home and left the twinkling lights of London behind. But before they turned away from the palace, they said, Good night and sweet dreams to the king and his family. Later on, as they settled down in their cosy, warm beds in their homes, Hector and Sonny thought about their very special day. Happiness and joy flowed gently through them, and they knew it was a day they would remember forever. Chapter 15 Hector and Sonny Meet the Jupiter Twins It was a warm, breezy summer's evening, and a golden retriever called Hector was sitting on a soft blanket with his best friend Sonny, a cocker spaniel. Their owners were with them and drinking tea from a flask, the group were at an outdoor concert in a grassy area not far from the centre of a city called Leeds. The event was amazing and it felt more like a party than a concert. Everyone was having a great time and the dogs agreed that the evening felt very special indeed. There was a break in the music 
and more people walked onto the grass and set up blankets. Two dogs and their family settled down next to Hector and Sonny. Hector was an extremely friendly dog, and he always made sure he said hello to everyone. So he introduced himself to the dogs, and then Sonny introduced herself too. The dogs smiled at Hector and Sonny, and said their names were Billy and Teddy, and they loved music. The dogs chatted for a little while, and then the music started up again. It was such a joyful tune that Billy and Teddy began to wriggle their bottoms and wag their tails in time to the tempo of the tune. Then they stood up and started to dance, jigging this way and that. Hector and Sonny grinned at their new friends, and they stood up too and joined in with the dancing. Soon, the rest of the dogs at the concert were on their four legs and boogieing away. Their owners joined them, and it wasn't long before the rest of the people at the concert were dancing too. Everyone had a wonderful time, and when the concert came to an end, Hector told Billy and Teddy about the park he often went to with Sonny. His new friends said they often went there too, and would look out for Hector and Sonny when they were there next. Billy said, "It's been great to meet you, Hector and Sonny." Teddy added, "It's been a lovely evening, almost magical somehow." Hector and Sonny agreed. The new friends said goodbye and headed off in different directions. As Hector and Sonny walked away from the concert, Hector said, "It does feel like a magical evening, doesn't it? As if something really wonderful is going to happen soon." Sonny smiled at her best friend. Hector, are you getting one of your feedings again? Are we about to go on another magical adventure? Hector's furry brow creased a little. He said, "I'm not sure. I can feel magic in the air, but it's a different kind of magic this time, and I'm not sure why." Sunny sniffed the air and said, "I think I can sense something too." <laughs> She chuckled softly. We'll just have to wait and see what happens. They continued walking along the streets of Leeds. The sun was slowly setting, painting the day with delicate hues of orange, pink, and purple. And casting its golden glow across the beautiful buildings of the city, the dogs and their owners walked by the town hall. The dogs looked at the tall columns of the building and the grand steps that led to a large door. They noticed some stone lions resting on bases on either side of the steps. Two on one side and two on the other. Hector said to Sunny, "Those stone lions look like they might come to life at any moment." Sunny smiled and said, "You are so funny, Hector. Stone lions don't come to life." Just then. Chimes sounded out from the elegant clock tower of the town hall. The bell in the tower chimed over and over again. Hector's nose twitched. He said, "Sonny, something peculiar is happening. I can feel it in my fur." Before he could say another word. The world around them froze in time, and their owners became as still as statues. The four stone lions twinkled brightly, and then, to the dogs' astonishment, they came to life.
they leapt off their stone bases and had a long, satisfying stretch. Hector and Sonny were so surprised that all they could do was stand and stare at the lions. The stone lions padded down the steps and had another long stretch. One of them said it was a lovely evening for a stroll around the city. Sunny couldn't help herself from saying, Do you uh, do that every night? The nearest stone lion jumped in surprise, looked left and right and asked, Who said that? Sunny waved her paw. It, it was me. Sorry. I didn't mean to startle you. You can see us? The lion asked. Sunny nodded. I can see you too. Hector waved his paw. The lion shook his head. How is that possible? You're supposed to freeze in time when the town hall clock strikes thirteen. Sonny said, Time has frozen around us before, many times, right before we go on magical adventures. The other lions moved closer to the dogs, their stone faces full of confusion. They asked Sonny to explain further. Sonny told them about the magical adventures she'd been on with Hector, and Hector added some details too. The stone lions began to smile and said it was very lovely to meet other magical animals. They told the dogs how, when time froze in the city, they would come to life and have a lovely walk around the streets. Everyone gave their names, and the first lion who had spoken to them said, Did you know there's a school of magic right beneath your paws? Hector and Sonny looked down at their paws. Then they looked back at the lion in bewilderment. The lion explained, The school is called the Leora Academy, and it's hidden beneath the streets. But you can get to it through hidden doorways around the city. One of those doorways is in a stone column behind me. He raised his paw towards the column, and as luck would have it, a door opened, and two children stepped out of it. The door closed behind them. The children had similar faces, but one was a boy and the other was a girl. They were wearing school uniforms and chatting about something. Hector and Sonny were so surprised to see the children appear that they became very still again. The boy and girl walked over to the lions and said hello to them. They asked if they were going on one of their evening strolls again. One of the lions said, We certainly are. Lily, Jake, there are some special animals we'd like you to meet. This is Sonny and Hector. He looked back at the dogs and said to them, This is Lily and Jake, Jupiter. They are students at the School of Magic, and as you might have noticed, they are twins. Why don't you say hello to them? Sonny said to the lion. Humans can't understand us. Lily walked closer to the dogs. With a gentle smile, she said to Sonny, I understood every word you just said. Can you understand me? 
Sunny smiled and nodded, and then she wagged her tail. Sunny sensed the kindness in Lily's eyes. She glanced at Lily's brother and saw the same kindness in his eyes too. Hector asked, Can you understand me too? Lily nodded. Jake walked over to the dogs and asked why they hadn't become frozen in time like everyone else. When Hector explained about their previous magical adventures, the twins grinned and said what a treat it was to meet such magical dogs. Lily said, Hector, Sonny, would you like to see our school? We can give you a tour of it now if that's okay with you. Hector's mouth dropped open and Sonny knew he was too happy to speak. So she answered for them both and said, We would love that, thank you. Jake said, You'll see magical beings at our school, like centaurs, fairies, elves, and even dragons. Are you okay with that? Hector found his voice and said casually, Oh, yes. We have seen magical beings before. He grinned, his eyes full of excitement. We even rode on the back of a dragon once, didn't we, Sonny? Sonny nodded. And once we went into a magical forest and met a kind koala called Coco who loves hot chocolate. The Jupiter twins were impressed and said they would like to hear more about the dog's adventures. The children led the dogs over to the column where the secret entrance was. Jake said the words of a magic spell, and the hidden door opened again. The inside of the column was much bigger than the outside, and there was plenty of room for everyone. Lily said the column was like a lift and it would bring them down to the main hallway of the school. Once they were inside, the door closed and the floor began to descend. Sunny asked the twins what they did at the School of Magic. Lily explained, We learn all sorts of magical skills here like potion making and spell casting. And sometimes our head teacher asks us to go on special adventures and help magical beings. You'll have to meet her. She knows absolutely everything about magic. She's called Dr. Howard. The lift came to a stop and the door slid open. A woman wearing a long purple robe was standing there, smiling softly. Her gaze went to Hector and Sunny, and she looked at them as if she had known them all her life. Her sapphire eyes twinkled with kindness and warmth. The dog smiled up at the woman and said hello. The Jupiter twins and the dogs stepped out of the lift. Lily talked to the woman and said, Dr. Howard, this is Hector and Sonny. We met them outside on the steps. They didn't freeze in time like everyone else because they're magical dogs. Dr. Howard knelt at the side of the dogs and placed a gentle hand on each of their heads. She looked into their eyes, her smile so very soft and full of love. She said, Hello, Hector. Hello, Sonny. I had a feeling that something wonderful was going to happen today. And now, here you are. I can tell that you are very special dogs and that there's a reason why you are here today. The dogs couldn't speak, 
They were lost in the kindness and love in Dr. Howard's eyes. They had never met anyone like her before. Dr. Howard straightened up and said, Lily, Jake, I have another job for you, and I suspect this is why our lovely new friends were walking past the town hall at the right time and on the right day. Please, everyone, do come into my office and I'll tell you more. Dr. Howard and the Jupiter twins walked along the hallway. Hector and Sonny padded at their sides and said hello to every single person and magical being that they had passed. Everyone at the School of Magic smiled back at them and gave them warm hellos. Sonny whispered to Hector, I feel as if we belong here, don't you? Hector nodded and let out one of his cute chuckles. Dr. Howard led them into her office, and the dogs were amazed to see that it looked like the inside of a log cabin, complete with a roaring fire. There was a large window on one side of the room, and through it the dogs saw fluttering flakes of snow. They gave each other confused looks. It hadn't been snowing a few minutes ago. Dr. Howard said to the dogs, I often use magic to change the inside of my office, and today I rather fancied a bit of winter coziness. The snow beyond my window is part of my spell. It's not snowing in the real world. Why don't we sit on these big cushions next to the fire? And I'll tell you why I need your help. Everyone sat on the soft cushions and made themselves comfortable. Dr. Howard began her explanation and said that a short while ago, the broomsticks in their storeroom had gone missing. The twins let out gasps of surprise. Hector and Sonny gasped in surprise too, because it seemed like the right thing to do. Dr. Howard continued. I have checked the storeroom, and I know that the broomsticks haven't been stolen, but merely taken by accident. But why? I don't know. And of course we do need them back as soon as possible. She smiled at the dogs. How are you at finding sticks? Hector felt the need to stand up, so he got to his paws, lifted his chin, and using his most serious voice, said, Dr. Howard, I am an excellent finder of sticks and have found hundreds of them. I find them everywhere, even in unusual places. My owner loves it when I give him the sticks, and we have a huge collection of them in our garden. Sonny stood up too, gave Hector a proud look, and said, I can confirm everything Hector has just said. He is the best stick collector in the whole wide world and even manages to pick up the most enormous of branches. Hector said that Sunny was great at finding sticks too and she was amazing at hiding objects as well. Perfect, just perfect, Dr. Howard said. Would you like to help? Lily and Jake find those missing broomsticks. Hector and Sonny said, Yes, we would love to. Their tails wagged happily in complete unison.
Dr. Howard asked them to start looking for the broomstick straight away and suggested they visit the storeroom to see if they could find any useful clues there. The Jupiter twins and the dogs left the cosy room and walked along the hallway towards the broomstick storeroom. Hector said to the twins, Are your broomsticks magical ones? Can you fly on them? The twins confirmed that yes, they were magical ones, and they flew on them all the time. Hector nodded and said, Sonny and I have flown on broomsticks. We found some magical sticks one day and turned them into many things, including broomsticks. Sonny chuckled and said that had been a great day. Lily and Jake Jupiter stared at the dogs and said they were the most amazing animals they had ever met. The group of four arrived at the storeroom. It was completely empty apart from a few tiny bristles on the floor. Lily and Jake proceeded to walk slowly around the room, looking for clues. Hector and Sonny followed them and used their noses to sniff out anything unusual. They weren't sure what would be classed as unusual, but continued anyway. After a few minutes, Hector raised his head and said, I can smell something peculiar near this wall. Sonny, can you smell it too? Sonny joined Hector and had a good sniff of the wall. She said, I can smell the broomsticks, but the scent is really strong here. And this wall smells magical somehow. Hector confirmed he had smelled the magic too. And there was something else. He had caught the delicious aroma of gravy. But it wasn't like any gravy he'd smelt before. And Hector had tasted a lot of gravy. Lily frowned. How peculiar she said. She ran her hand over the wall. Hmm. I can feel a slight fizziness here, as if magic has been used recently. Perhaps a magical portal was opened by the person who took the broomsticks. Dr. Howard says the sticks weren't stolen, so maybe this mystery person opened a portal to the wrong broomstick store by mistake and took them without realising they were the wrong ones. She shook her head at her words. I don't know if I'm making sense now. Jake said she was making perfect sense and the next sensible step would be to reopen the magical portal before the remaining magic disappeared. He looked at the dogs and said, If I tell you the words to use, could you try casting the spell to reopen the portal? It's not a difficult one. Hector and Sonny lifted their heads and said as confidently as possible, Yes, we can do that. Jake gave them the words of the spell. The dogs repeated it clearly while staring intently at the wall. The wall began to sparkle and shimmer. Then it started to fade away and a large hole appeared. The dogs and the twins peeped through the hole and saw a forest thick with trees on the other side of it. A winding path made from leaves ran through the trees. Lily said, I wonder 
if this is the same world that the mystery person came from. Sonny and Hector sniffed the fragrant air drifting towards them from the forest. They confirmed it was the same smell as before, and Hector added joyfully the gravy scent was still there. With a mixture of excitement and anticipation, the twins, Hector and Sonny, stepped through the portal and into another world. A warm breeze flowed over them, and the soothing sound of gentle birdsong drifted from the treetops. Using their impressive sense of smell, Hector and Sunny led the group along the winding path and deeper into the forest. Before long, they arrived at a clearing in the forest, and right in the middle of it stood a cosy cabin. Sitting outside the cabin was a kind-faced woman, her delicate features framed by a cascade of purple curls. She was surrounded by piles of broomsticks. She held one in her lap and gently applied a shimmering substance to its surface. She looked up as the children and dogs approached and her eyes filled with warmth. Lily waved to the woman and introduced everyone. She explained they had come from the Leora Academy, a school of magic. The woman smiled and said, My name is Willow, and I'm a tree elf who creates magical broomsticks. It's funny you should say you're from the Leora Academy. I know it well and was there a short while ago, collecting these broomsticks. I collect them once a year, because they need to be topped up with magic from time to time. And as I wasn't busy today, I decided to collect them a few months earlier than I normally do. I left a note in the storeroom for your head teacher to let her know I'd taken them. Jay. Gently explained that their head teacher had asked them to look for the missing broomsticks because she didn't know who had taken them or why. He added, There wasn't a note in the storeroom, but we might have missed it. Oh dear, Willow said, concern filling her eyes. I most definitely left one. I wrote the note just before I left and put it in this pocket here. She tapped a pocket in her dress and paused. She reached into her pocket and took out a folded piece of paper. She sighed gently. Oh, it seems I forgot to leave the note. I'm so very sorry to have caused Dr. Howard such trouble. And for all of you, too. You've gone to all this effort to track me down. Lily said, It didn't take us long. Hector and Sonny did most of the tracking. They could smell the magic on the broomsticks. She smiled over at Hector. And Hector said he could smell gravy, too. Willow laughed. Hector, you have an amazing sense of smell. I make a big bowl of gravy every morning and have cups of it throughout the day. I absolutely love gravy and can't get enough of it. Hector gave her a huge doggy smile and said, I'm just the same. I love gravy. Just. Love it. But your gravy smells different to the other ones I've tried. Is it a magical one? It certainly is, Willow said. You must try some, all of you. It's my way of saying sorry for the commotion I have caused your school. 
before I get you some gravy, let me send this note to Dr. Howard. I don't want to cause her another moment's concern. I'll add an extra sentence to let her know you're all here. She opened the paper and wriggled her fingers over it. Writing magically appeared beneath the lines already written. The paper folded itself and rose from Willow's hand. Willow asked the note to take itself to Dr. Howard at the Leora Academy immediately. She wriggled her fingers, and a circle of shimmering light appeared in front of her. Through the circle, the others caught a glimpse of Dr. Howard, sitting in her winter-themed office in front of the fire. The note fluttered through the opening, over to the head teacher, and landed on her lap. Willow closed the portal, took the resting broomstick off her lap and placed it on the ground. She said, Who would like a cup of magical gravy? Hector and Sonny said they would, thank you so very much. Lily and Jake said that whilst they did like gravy, They preferred it poured over something, like a pie or some vegetables. Hector gave them a long look of confusion. He just did not understand humans sometimes. Widow stood up and wriggled her fingers. Four chairs and a table magically appeared. She told her visitors to take a seat while she got the gravy ready. Hector and Sonny sat next to their new friends and asked the twins about the adventures they'd been on. Lily and Jake were happy to talk about their magical journeys, and when they had talked about some of them, they asked the dogs about their adventures. The new friends discovered they'd been on similar adventures, ones full of magic and fascination. Lily smiled at the dogs and said, I think this has been my most favourite adventure so far, and I've got a feeling that it's going to get even better. The others said they felt the same way too. Willow came out of the cabin with a large tray full of steaming bowls. She placed the tray on the table and handed bowls of warm vegetable pies and gravy to the Jupiter twins. Next, she placed two large bowls on the arms of the chairs where the dogs were sitting. She assured them the bowls wouldn't fall off because they had a touch of magic on their bottoms. Hector and Sonny tried very hard not to giggle at the thought of magical bottoms but couldn't stop little bubbles of laughter from popping out of their mouths. Willow took a big mug from the tray and settled back down in her chair. Lily looked at her bowl and asked what was so magical about the gravy. Try it and see, Willow replied mysteriously. Hector and Sonny lapped at the gravy until... Every last bit had gone. It was utterly, utterly delicious. Without doubt, it was the best gravy they had ever tasted. Ever, ever. As the warm liquid flowed into their tummies, a wonderful feeling of peace filled the dogs. They started to think about all the wonderful people in their lives, and their new friends, too. They thought about their cosy homes, the amazing parks they went to, and the fabulous adventures they'd been on. They sighed happily and smiled at each other. Lily and Jake ate their vegetable pies and gravy. When they'd finished, they declared it to be the best gravy ever. 
Lily smiled softly and said, It reminds me of all the lovely family dinners we've had, Jake, and the ones we've had at school. And thinking about those times has made me remember other fun times we've had too, especially on our magical adventures. She sighed, happily lost in heartwarming memories. Jake sighed too and his tranquil expression matched that of his sister. He was lost in lovely memories too. Willow explained that when she made the special gravy every morning, she always thought about the wonderful things in her life and about everything she was grateful for, and her happy feelings made their way into the gravy and made it extra special. The five friends spent a few minutes in contented silence, each one remembering heartwarming moments in their lives. After a short while, Willow asked the others if they would like to help her with something. I've almost finished adding extra magic to the broomsticks. Could you help me with the last few, please? And then They need to be taken on flight tests, and it's always helpful to have a few extra hands or paws to help me with that. The Jupiter twins said they would love to help Willow. Hector and Sunny said they would too, and shyly told Willow they had flown on broomsticks before. Willow smiled at the dogs and said she had never met such fascinating animals before. The rest of the shimmering liquid magic was applied to the remaining broomsticks, and then it was time to test them out. Hector and Sonny jumped onto the nearest broomsticks and took to the air. The others followed them. The group whizzed back and forth over the forest and swooped low over the rivers and high above the hills, having a wonderful time. They tested all of the broomsticks, and all too soon, the last of them had been tested and found to be perfect. Willow used her magic to create a portal back to the broomstick storeroom in the school. With a wriggle of her fingers, the broomsticks at her side flew through the portal and into the room where they lined themselves up. She thanked the twins and the dogs for their lovely company and hoped they would meet again soon. Lily, Jake, Hector and Sunny said goodbye to Willow and walked through the magical doorway. It closed gently behind them. Lily looked at the broomsticks resting against the wall and noticed something. She said to the dogs, Look, there are two extra broomsticks now, and they've got your names on them. The dogs looked at the broomsticks, and their hearts filled with love at such a kind gesture from Willow. Jake said to Hector and Sonny, This means you can come back here and then go on flying adventures with us sometimes. Would you like that? I know I would. Oh, absolutely, the dogs replied with the biggest smiles ever. Their smiles swiftly turned to yawns and they said they should be getting back to their owners. The Jupiter twins led the tired dogs out of the school and back to their owners. Lily and Jake hugged the dogs and said they hoped they would meet them again soon. The dogs said they were sure they would. The new friends said goodbye and the twins returned to their school. 
The stone lions came back from their wanderings, waved to the dogs and jumped onto their bases. The bell in the clock tower chimed out and the city became unfrozen. Hector and Sonny and their owners continued on their journey home. The sleepy dogs were silent apart from a few yawns. That night, as they fell asleep, Hector and Sonny's dreams were full of magical adventures. A kind tree elf and their new friends, Lily and Jake. And inside a school of magic, Lily and Jake Jupiter were dreaming about two wonderful dogs named Hector and Sonny. Chapter 16 Hector and Sonny's Bedtime One early evening in May, two dogs were walking through the park with their owners. One of the dogs was a beautiful golden retriever called Hector, and the dog walking at his side was a kind-hearted cocker spaniel called Sonny who happened to be his best friend. The last rays of the setting sun slanted across the path, casting a golden glow on the soft green grass and creating long shadows that stretched into the distance. The dogs felt the gentle heat of the sun flowing over them and a warm breeze gently ruffled their fur. The breeze travelled softly through the nearby trees and made the leaves rustle gently. As the dogs and their owners walked across the soft grass, Hector said, Sonny, I've had a marvellous day with you. I don't think I've ever laughed so much in my life. I love that new dance you made up and the funny song you sang about hiding socks. <laughs> he chuckled at the memory of Sonny dancing and singing. Sonny smiled and said, I've had a marvellous day too, Hector. You were an excellent stick finder today. I didn't think you were going to pick up that last one because it was so big, but you did it. You're like a superhero stick collector. Hector smiled at his friend. They talked some more as they continued on their walk. Their owners walked behind them, each holding some of the sticks that Hector had collected that day because they knew he liked to take them home and keep them in his garden. Hector let out a little yawn and said he was looking forward to his bedtime after such a busy day. Sunny yawned too, and said so was she. I love bedtimes, Hector. I love snuggling down in my bed and getting all cosy and comfy. <sighs> she yawned again. And I love getting ready for bed and sharing some special time with my owner. Hector nodded and said, I like cuddling up to my owner and listening to him talking about his day. He looked ahead at the expanse of grass in front of them and asked Sunny if she would like another run across it. No, thank you, Sunny replied. I'm too tired. I don't want to do any more running around today. Shall we start saying goodnight to our friends? It looks like some of them are getting ready to settle down for the night. Hector smiled and said, Yes, that's a good idea. Let's start with the squirrels. The two friends walked over to a group of squirrels that were gathered around the base of a tree. One of the squirrels had silver fur that twinkled in the sunlight. He was called Sydney, 
and he had helped Hector and Sonny go on many magical adventures. When Sidney saw the dogs, he waved to them and said, Hi there, you two. Did you want to go on another magical adventure? Ooh. A little yawn escaped from the squirrel, and he grinned at the dogs. Sorry about that. I've had a busy day. Hector smiled at Sidney and said, We've had a busy day too. Would you mind if we had a magical adventure another day? We're too tired to go on one now. He looked at Sonny and added, Unless you'd like to go on one, Sonny? If you do, I'll certainly go with you. Sonny's reply was a long, long yawn. And then she agreed with Hector that she was too tired to go on another adventure, but thanked Sidney for his kind offer. Sidney blinked tiredly and said, It's all agreed then. We can save our adventures for another day. I'm so ready for my bed. There's a hollowed out area further up this tree with lots of soft leaves inside it. It's so very cosy and snug in there. And it's one of my favourite places to sleep. Some of my squirrel friends are going to join me, and we'll watch the sunset together. <sighs> he yawned again. If I stay awake that long. Hector and Sonny said goodnight to the sleepy squirrels and wished them sweet dreams. The squirrels waved and then slowly climbed the tree and disappeared into several holes along the way. The dogs imagined the squirrels settling down on the soft leaves and watching the setting sun. Hector and Sonny carried on walking and saw birds returning to their nests in the trees. With a final flutter of their wings, the birds made themselves comfortable in their cosy nests and smiled softly. Some of the birds began to sing a gentle evening melody, which echoed through the park like a lullaby. Hector and Sonny wished the tired birds a good night and sweet dreams. The dogs said goodbye to other animals in the park, including some rabbits who were heading to their snug burrows and hedgehogs who were settling down beneath thick bushes. Other dogs passed by, and Hector and Sonny said goodnight to them, too. The sun slowly dipped towards the horizon, and the sky turned a beautiful shade of dusky pink. The two dogs and their owners walked leisurely towards the park gates. Hector and Sonny kept yawning. The group left the park behind and walked along the streets towards their homes. The first of the streetlights came on and cast a cosy glow across the pavement. People in houses switched on soft lights and closed their curtains. Hector sniffed the air and told Sonny he loved the smell of the evening air and thought it had a magic of its own because it held the promise of a restful sleep ahead of enchanting dreams. Sunny smiled at her friend and said, I feel exactly the same. I love going to sleep and getting lost in dreams. They walked along, and the warmth of the day slowly faded into the gentle coolness of the evening. The sky changed from pink to a dark shade of purple. The dogs saw the first star of the night twinkle into view in the vast sky. The dogs gazed at the star in wonder. Hector looked back at his best friend and saw the star reflected in her lovely eyes. 
she had a thoughtful look on her face, and he asked her what she was thinking. Sunny sighed softly and said, I was thinking how comforting it is when everyone starts getting ready for bedtime. How we know it's time to sleep and to let our bodies and minds rest. I love having lots of fun during the day, but I always look forward to my sleep and I always feel great in the morning. Hector looked at the darkening sky again and noticed more stars appearing. He told Sonny he liked how the stars and moon came out at night and watched over everyone as they slept. And even when it was a cloudy night, he knew they were still there. Soon they reached the house where Sunny and her owner lived. Sunny's owner passed the stick she was holding to Hector's owner and said she hoped he had enough room in his garden for them. They made plans to meet up again soon and thought they might take the dogs on a day out somewhere. Sunny smiled at Hector and said, Thank you. For such a lovely day, I've had a great time. Will you video call me later on the computer to say goodnight? Of course I will. I'll phone you after my bath, Hector replied. Will your owner tell us a bedtime story? I love listening to her stories. Sunny said, I'm sure she will. Have a lovely bath and I'll speak to you soon. The two friends smiled warmly at each other and said goodbye. Their owners said goodbye too. Hector and his owner continued walking along the street. Hector helpfully took one of the sticks from his owner and carried it. He chose the smallest one because he was too tired to carry a big one. Anyway, his owner seemed to enjoy having an armful of sticks, and Hector didn't want to spoil his fun. Sunny and her owner went inside their home and closed the door behind them. Sunny's owner took off her outdoor shoes. Sunny helped her to line them up on the shoe rack. They went into the living room. Sunny's owner switched on the lamps and closed the curtains. Sunny helped as much as she could. They settled down on the sofa together and Sunny rested against her owner and smiled. Her owner gently stroked Sunny's head and talked about her day. Sunny loved listening to her owner and even though she didn't always know what her owner was saying, Sunny gazed at her owner as if she was the most important person in the world and Sunny had all the time in the world for her, which she did. When her owner had finished talking, Sunny began to yawn. It was getting closer to her bedtime and she needed to settle down to sleep soon. Sunny had three beds in her home and she loved sleeping in all of them, but which one would she sleep in that evening? She jumped off the sofa and then proceeded to inspect each of the three beds until she decided which one she would like to rest in that night. Sunny decided on her donut shaped bed. It was so very soft and cosy, and she loved snuggling up inside it. Also, it was a great place to hide things. She often played hide-and-seek with her owner, using items from around their home. Sunny loved hiding things, and she knew her owner loved finding them, because she always laughed in surprise when she found them. The latest item that Sunny had hidden was a small bottle of shampoo that had been left on the stairs. She had picked it up and then tucked it into the far side of her donut-shaped bed. Her owner hadn't found it yet, 
but Sunny knew that when she did, she would be so very happy. Sunny peeped into the bed. Yes, the bottle was still there. Oh, and there were some socks there too that she'd taken from the laundry basket. She'd forgotten about those. Sunny pulled them out and gave them to her owner. Her owner smiled in delight and shook her head at Sunny. It was time for Sunny to do her wind-down yoga exercises. She had seen someone on the television doing yoga once and thought it looked like fun. Sunny had copied some of the moves and then made up some of her own. Sunny began by having a good stretch of her neck as she looked up at the ceiling. Then she reached out her legs one at a time and gave them a good stretch too. After that, she rolled onto her back and reached up as high as she could, her paws pointing towards the ceiling. She took some deep breaths as she moved into more yoga positions, feeling more and more relaxed with every breath she took. Finally, she got into her bed, laid on her back and dangled her head out of the bed so that it was lower than her body. It was one of the yoga moves that she had made up herself and it always made her owner smile. Sunny loved making her owner smile. Sunny finished her relaxing moves and then got out of her bed. She let out a long, tired yawn. She was almost ready for bed, but there was one more thing she needed to do, something very important. Sunny padded over to a laptop that was resting on a low table. She placed her paw on it and gave her owner a hopeful look. Her owner smiled and said, Yes, it was time to video call Hector and say goodnight to him. Sunny smiled and got back into her bed and settled down in it. Her owner brought the table and the laptop over and placed them in front of Sunny so that she could easily see the screen. Sunny's owner tapped on a few buttons and then, as if by magic, Hector's beautiful face appeared on the screen. On the wall behind him were framed photographs of Sonny and Hector together. Hector and Sonny smiled at the screens in front of them and barked out a soft hello to each other. They started to chat about their evenings. Sonny told Hector about her listening time with her owner. Then, how she had decided on which bed to sleep in that night. And finally, how she had done her yoga exercises. Hector smiled at his friend and said, I had a lovely listening time with my owner too. We had a long cuddle on the sofa and I listened to every word he said. I felt all warm and happy inside as I leaned against him. I love him so very much. I know he loves me because he keeps telling me so. Sunny nodded in understanding. She asked Hector what he had done after that. He grinned. I had a bath. A lovely warm bath with lots and lots of bubbles. I felt like I was sitting inside a bubble cloud. My owner used that bubble bath that smells of talcum powder. I smell lovely now. He sniffed his freshly washed fur and grinned some more. He told Sonny how his owner had put some bubbles on Hector's chin making him look like he had a beard. And then his owner had placed some on Hector's head, like a hat. 
Sonny giggled at the thought of Hector wearing a bubbly hat and beard. Hector said, I put some bubbles on my nose, and when I looked at them, they were all shiny and bouncy. I put some on my paw, too, and began to blow on them. They bobbed slowly away around the bathroom, and it was so peaceful to watch them. <sighs> he yawned. Sonny yawned, too. Hector said that when he finally got out of the bath, he wiped his face on the soft carpet first and then on the towel. Sonny frowned and asked why he didn't just use the towel. Hector replied, I don't know. It's just something I do. I suppose we've all got our funny habits at bedtime, haven't we? By the way, Sonny, has your owner found that shampoo bottle yet in your bed? <laughs> Not yet, Sonny said with a cheeky smile. Hector talked some more about his evening and how he was so very relaxed after his bath and then how snug and cosy he had felt when his owner wrapped him in a big fluffy towel and gently rubbed him dry. Hector smiled fondly at the memory and said, I've had some extra cuddles with my owner tonight, and when we walked into the living room, I leaned against him all the time. I love leaning against him and knowing he's right there. The two friends talked some more about their evening and how relaxed and peaceful they felt. Their tired eyes began to close and they yawned more and more. Hector gazed at his friend and said, I don't want this day to end, but I'm so very, very tired. Sonny said, I don't want it to end either, Hector. But think about those lovely dreams that are waiting for you in your sleep. All those amazing adventures you'll go on in those dreams. And tomorrow, you can tell me all about them. Hector gave Sonny a tired smile and said, I hope I dream about you, Sonny. I hope we go on the most amazing adventure ever in my dreams. Sonny said, I hope I dream about you too, Hector. Are you ready for a bedtime story now? Oh, yes, please. Hector replied with a dreamy smile on his face. I wonder which one we'll hear tonight. He thought about some of the calming bedtime stories that Sonny's owner had told them on previous evenings. Tales of magical unicorns in faraway lands. A monkey sailing the sea in search of treasure. A boy with amazing superhero powers. A dragon dancing on a mountaintop. And two fairies who flew through the night sky and gave out the most wonderful of dreams. He yawned again and wondered which imaginary world of wonder was waiting for Sonny and him that night. Sunny looked over at her owner, who was sitting in a comfy armchair with an open book in her hands. Sunny let out the softest of barks to let her owner know she was asking for a bedtime story. Sunny added another bark to say, Thank you. 
Sonny's owner put down the book she was reading and moved over to the laptop. She sat on the carpet next to Sonny's bed and waved to Hector. Hector tried to bark out a warm hello, but he yawned instead. He just couldn't stop himself. Sonny's owner thought for a few moments about which story would be perfect for the tired dogs that evening. She didn't need a book to help her, because her head was always full of stories waiting to be told. Hector and Sonny settled down some more in their comfy beds and waited for the tale to begin. Sonny's owner smiled, and then began to tell the dogs a story. It was about a magical cloud that floated down from the sky and landed in a garden. Two children stepped onto the cloud, and it turned into an aeroplane. The cloud plane flew the delighted children high above the mountains and over endless seas. The dogs smiled softly at each other on the screen as they listened to the lovely story. The bedtime story continued and the dogs felt their eyelids growing heavier and heavier. The gentle sound of Sonny's owner's voice combined with the warmth of their bed and the comforting presence of their friend on the screen created a soothing feeling of peace and tranquility. Good night, Sonny, Hector whispered, his eyes drooping. Good night, Hector, Sonny murmured in response, her voice barely audible. As Sonny's owner continued with the story, her voice remained soft and gentle, like a soothing melody that carried the dogs towards the world of dreams. The tale she wove was filled with magic and wonder, and it gently transported Hector and Sonny towards a deep, Deep sleep. Soon, Hector and Sonny were asleep, snug and cosy in their beds. Sonny's owner smiled softly at the sleeping dogs. She continued with her gentle story until she was sure Hector and Sonny were delightfully lost in sweet slumber. She leaned closer to the screen and whispered, Good night, Hector, sweet dreams. She ended the video call and closed the screen. Then she placed a soft kiss on Sonny's head and whispered, Good night, Sonny. Sweet dreams. She saw a shampoo bottle, half hidden behind Sonny, smiled and shook her head at her sleeping pet. She left the bottle where it was. Sonny's owner returned to her armchair and snuggled down into it. She picked up her book and was soon lost in the adventure taking place within the pages. She loved a good story, and often read before bedtime. She glanced over at Sunny, and wondered if she was dreaming, and if so, what was she dreaming about? Sunny was dreaming. In her dreams, 
she was going on another amazing adventure with her best friend Hector, and they were soaring above the sea in a cloud plane. And a few streets away, Hector was dreaming the very same dream. Hector and Sunny continued to sleep through the night. Soft smiles on their slumbering faces. Hector and Sunny meet Rex the puppy. The first day that Rex the puppy set foot in his new home, he knew he was going to love it there. Rex was one of 14 puppies when he was born, and he was always fighting for attention from his mother and his human owners. Rex was only small, much smaller than the rest of his brothers and sisters, so he rarely got a look in. The day that their big doggy family was visited by people from the outside world, Rex knew that this was his opportunity to find his new forever family. One by one, people came and cuddled and played with Rex and his siblings. All 14 of them scrabbled and yipped excitedly, desperate for the attention of the interesting new humans that they were meeting. All of the people were very nice, but there was one person in particular that Rex especially admired. While most of the humans came in pairs or brought their children along to visit the puppies, there was one lady who came on her own. She had kind eyes and a big smile. And the moment that Rex saw her, he knew that she was the person that he wanted to go home with. Thankfully, the feeling was mutual, and the woman with kind eyes loved Rex just as much as he adored her. They gently played together, and she let Rex climb up on her knees to lick her face. Eventually, Rex curled up in her lap and snoozed away sweetly after using up so much energy. The lady with the kind eyes was besotted there and then. Three weeks later, Rex was heading to his new home with his new family. Rex could tell that he and the lady were going to be the best of friends, and he sat in a comfortable bed in the back seat of her car. Little did Rex know then that he was going to make lots of new best friends in the care of his new loving family. When he arrived at his new house, Rex was introduced to his brand new fluffy bed in the corner of the kitchen and his sparkling clean water bowl and food bowl by the back door. There was a box of toys waiting for him to play with and he quickly got stuck in, finding a fuzzy squeaky pig that he delighted in playing with for hours. Rex was getting comfortable in his new home when he heard the doorbell ring. Somebody must be visiting. The lady with the kind eyes closed the door to the kitchen, keeping Rex inside, and went to the front door to open it. Rex couldn't understand why he had been left behind. He was desperate to meet whoever was visiting. Rex heard footsteps patter down the corridor back to the kitchen door, and he sat down on his bottom and waited like a good boy. His tail swished from side to side, sweeping the floor with his soft red and white fur. He heard the voice of the kind lady speaking to someone. I've got a surprise for you she said as the kitchen door began to crack open. Rex couldn't wait any longer, and he rushed forward and peeked his nose through the gap in the door, sniffing the air with his snuffly nose. A puppy? 
a new voice cried from behind the door. Rex wriggled his little body through the gap and pushed the door open. He dashed forward and found that two people were standing on the other side. There was the lady with the kind eyes and the little boy. The little boy's eyes grew wide and he squealed with excitement. Rex jumped up at the boy, pouring at his legs. He was so enthusiastic to meet even more people. The little boy bent down to Rex's level and attempted to stroke Rex's fur. But Rex was hard to catch as he was so full of beans that he kept running around and around in circles and jumping up at everyone with exhilaration. The little boy and the lady laughed with joy as they watched Rex's eager display. The lady with the kind eyes laughed and said to the boy, Marlon, this is Rex. He is your new puppy. I love him proclaimed Marlon. Rex lay down on his back and Marlon started tickling his belly. Rex shimmied from side to side happily and kept knocking himself over with his super waggly tail. Rex felt so lucky to have two members of his new family, Marlon, the little boy, and his mother. Marlon was clearly just as happy as Rex was and declared that Rex would be his best buddy. They would go on walks together every day and Marlon would teach Rex lots of cool tricks. Marlon's mother smiled but explained, That's lovely, darling, but you can't take Rex for a walk just yet. He needs to get a little bit older first. When he's 14 weeks old, we can take him for his very first walk outside. Rex was disappointed that he couldn't venture outside straight away. But he could tell that the day of his first ever walk in public would be very special. In the meantime... Rex spent every day getting to know his new family. As promised, Marlon taught him several new tricks in exchange for delicious treats. Rex learnt how to sit down on command and give Marlon a high five. He learnt how to lie down and spin around on the spot. Rex was a quick learner. Rex adored living with his new family and every day was full of laughter and joy. As the weeks went by, Rex discovered lots of interesting things around his new home. He discovered that discarded socks were his favourite thing to collect and hoard in his toy box. He found that if he waited around in the kitchen long enough, while their mother was cooking, then he might snag the chance to gobble up some human food that fell on the ground. He even discovered that the best, freshest water in the house came from the toilet bowl. At least that's what he thought, until Marlon and his mother told him that was yucky and started leaving the toilet seat down. Every day, Rex was discovering new things, but he knew that there was so much more to discover in the outside world. As the day of his 14-week-old birthday drew closer, Rex became more and more agitated as he eagerly awaited the big day's arrival. He had been dreaming of his first walk outside since the day he was brought home to his new family and he could hardly wait. The night before he turned 14 weeks old, 
Marlon ushered Rex to join him as he climbed into bed. Rex hopped up onto the end of Marlon's bed and curled his little body up into a comfy position. Marlon gazed at Rex, all cosy and snuggled up, and ruffled the fur on his back. He whispered, Tomorrow is a big day, Rex. You're going to go for your very first walk outside. I'm going to take you to the park. And it's going to be so much fun. You don't need to be nervous. Rex looked up at Marlon with his puppy dog eyes. He knew that Marlon would take good care of him. But he was a little bit nervous about going somewhere he'd never been before. However, he knew that with Marlon by his side, he would be fine. Rex woke up the next morning full of energy. He whizzed and wove around the house, trying to burn off all his built-up energy. Today was the big day, and he couldn't wait to get going. Marlon and his mother watched Rex race around the house, and they laughed. Marlon's mother commented, that it was a good job that Rex could go for a walk and a run outside now. He was getting far too restless, stuck inside the house. Rex waited and waited. And eventually, Marlon and his mother were ready to go. Rex, it's time for a walk, Marlon's mother yodeled out into the house. Rex ran as fast as his little legs could carry him to find her. When he reached her, he noticed that she was holding a long blue rope in her hands. What could that be for? Rex wondered. Marlon's mother taught him how to attach the blue rope to Rex's collar while Rex sat down patiently. Apparently, the strange rope device was called a lead, and it would make sure that Rex didn't run away or get lost while they were outside. The lead felt strange to Rex at first, and he kept tripping over it and getting it tangled around his little legs. But once they all stepped outside of the house, and walked out into the street, Rex quickly got used to it. Despite his eagerness, Rex was still slightly nervous about being outside for the first time. He had never seen these streets before, and the last time he had seen a car was when he was sitting inside it, being brought home. Watching lots of fast-moving cars whoosh past them was a little unnerving. But Marlon reassured Rex and kept him moving forward. Rex looked around and took in the amazing sights of the outside world. The cars and the people passing by the tall houses and the lumbering trees. The concrete pavement felt funny beneath his little paws. He was used to pottering around on fuzzy carpets in the house or the soft grass in the garden, so concrete felt pretty rough underneath his tiny paws. The world outside was also noisier than Rex was used to. All of the vehicles on the road vroomed and zoomed, and bicycles rang their jingling bells and whirred the spokes of their wheels. Pigeons cooed from up on the roofs, and squirrels chattered from the branches of the odd tree in the front garden. 
The air was filled with the humming of life and the bustle of people. Rex was beginning to realise that it was much more peaceful back at home. Just as Rex was starting to think that maybe the outside world wasn't as great as he had cracked it up to be, Marlon's mother guided them all across the road and towards a large iron gate with tall hedges on either side. She pushed the gate open and it squeaked and creaked heavily as they all walked through. When he saw what was on the other side of the gate, Rex couldn't believe his eyes. Ahead of him was a ginormous field of grass surrounded by trees and plants. The loud noises of the street behind them faded away, and instead, here, it was peaceful and serene. The only sounds that Rex could hear were the buzzing of bees in the flower beds, tweeting birds soaring through the air, and the wind rustling through the trees. There were other humans and their dogs playing in the field with toys that Rex had never seen before. The toys flew through the air at super-fast speeds, and the dogs all chased after them, jumping and catching them in their mouths. Some dogs ran around together, chasing one another and rolling around in the blades of grass. Others cheerfully potted around, sniffing the flowers and digging at the roots of the tall trees. Rex felt exhilarated. It was like a utopia for dogs. Rex tugged and pulled at his leash, yearning to break free and run around. Marlon and his mother could see how much Rex was itching to be let off the leash. They walked Rex around the edge of the park and over to a quiet spot of grass. Here, there were fewer distractions and there was more space for Rex to roam around freely. Rex sat perfectly and patiently staring at his family, begging them to let him loose. His tail wagged back and forth with anticipation, and he panted with enthusiasm. Marlon's mother leant down and unbuckled the leash from Rex's collar. Now, Rex, she explained to him calmly, go have fun and explore. Just make sure that you stay close by where we can see you. Rex's eyes sparkled with cheer and he looked around, unsure of where to begin. There were so many things he could do and so many other dogs to meet that he didn't know where to start. Rex began to bound around the grass feeling the soft earth beneath his paws. It felt so much better than the hard concrete pavement they had been walking along before. He bounced and tumbled around the field, feeling his legs flop about with childish abandon. As Rex ran around the grass, he felt like he had so much space to move. All he had experienced so far in his life was the fenced-in grass of their garden. But here, at the park, there was more grass to run through than Rex could have ever imagined. He felt free. He looked around the park and saw so many new animals to meet. There of course, were lots of other dogs to befriend. But there were also lots of new flying bugs, 
bustling birds and prowling cats. As Rex ran past the trees, he spotted something rummaging in a bush. He stopped in his tracks and waited eagerly. All of a sudden, two tall, fluffy ears poked up out of the leaves and a little pointed white face peered out from the bush. The creature snuffled its nose and twitched its whiskers. Then, spotting Rex, it turned on its big feet and ran off into the trees behind, wiggling its fluffy pom-pom tail behind it. It was a bunny. Rex had never seen a bunny rabbit in real life before. He was so excited and eager to say hello that he chased after the bunny rabbit excitedly. He gallivanted through the grass and bounded through the bushes, running and running until his feet stopped feeling the soft blades of grass beneath them anymore and instead felt dusty bare earth beneath his paws. Rex stopped in his tracks and looked around him. He had lost sight of the bunny rabbit, and he wasn't in the open air of the field anymore. Instead, he was under the cover of the trees that lined the outside of the park. Uh-oh, Rex thought. He had gotten too carried away and run off out of sight. Rex span around, trying to recall which direction he had come from. But every tree looked exactly the same. He couldn't see the park anymore. Rex sniffed the ground and tried to pick up his own scent to work out his way back, but he just found himself walking around in circles, chasing his own tail. Rex started to think that he needed some help and howled out into the trees, hoping that Marlon and his mother would hear his call. He waited a few seconds and listened. Then, right on cue, he heard the soft pattering of footsteps on the forest floor. However, when he looked through the trees, expecting to catch sight of Marlon and his mother coming to his rescue, he saw something entirely different. Two dogs came bounding through the trees towards him. One was a large golden retriever, and one was a smaller cocker spaniel with reddish-brown fur and eyes the colour of the sky. The golden retriever carried a stick in his mouth and dropped it at his feet as they reached Rex's side. The cocker spaniel cocked her head to one side and asked, Are you all right, little pup? The golden retriever explained that they had heard a call from within the forest asking for help. Rex sniffed and explained that he was lost. It was his first time outside of his house and he had run off away from his family. He'd gotten so carried away. He wanted to find his way back to his family, but he couldn't remember which direction the park was. He told the dogs that he had tried to track his scent, but with no luck. The golden retriever flickered his ears and sniffed the air. He replied, We'll help you find your way back, little pup. My nose never lets me down. The golden retriever promptly placed his nose to the ground and began sniffing away. 
After a few moments of snuffling around the forest floor, he pricked up his head and declared that he had picked up Rex's scent. Rex almost leapt for joy. Thank goodness for these kind dogs who had turned up to help him. The golden retriever led the way, and Rex and the cocker spaniel followed behind. I'm Hector, by the way, the bouncy golden retriever introduced himself. Then the cocker spaniel added, and I'm Sonny. Rex smiled and told them his name too. It's nice to meet you both, he said gratefully. The three dogs trotted through the forest with Hector's nose as their guide. They wove in and out of the trees, and soon Rex could see where the trees were parting and spotted the luscious green field beyond them. He could hear Marlon and his mother calling out his name as they searched for him, and Rex picked up the pace running past Hector and towards the trees. He reached the edge of the field and saw his beloved family nearby. Rex felt so relieved to be reunited with them. He thanked Hector and Sonny for their assistance and they assured him it was no problem at all. Rex was very lucky that they had heard his call. Rex didn't want to say goodbye to the impressive older dogs. He was sure that he could learn a lot from them. But he knew that he should return to his family before they grew worried. Rex asked Hector and Sonny eagerly, Do you come to the park often? Sonny declared that they were always around somewhere, exploring, burrowing and hiding things in the ground. Maybe you could come on an adventure with us sometime, Sonny offered, and Rex nodded his head vigorously. He would love nothing more. Hector and Sonny also promised to show Rex around the park sometime so that he never got lost again. Rex was in awe of the pair of friends. They were so confident and clever, and very helpful too. Rex hoped that he would grow up to be just like them when he was older. Rex heard the happy voice of Marlon come from behind him and he turned around to see Marlon running across the grass towards him. Rex, Rex, you're here. Marlon called out with his arms stretched open wide. Rex pounced into Marlon's arms, and Marlon held him close. They were both relieved to have found each other again. Marlon asked Rex where he had been. He and his mother had looked for him everywhere. Rex turned and gazed at Hector and Sonny, and Marlon followed his gaze. Marlon sighed in realisation. I see. You've been busy making some friends, he smiled. Marlon thanked Hector and Sonny for looking after little Rex, and then he led Rex away and back over to their mother. Rex glanced over his shoulder and called out a goodbye to Hector and Sonny before they ran back off into the trees no doubt in search of a new adventure for the day.
Marlin's mother cuddled Rex in her arms and reminded him not to run off again. Rex promised that he wouldn't. Although, if he hadn't ventured off, he would have never met Hector and Sonny, so at least something good had come from it. Rex assumed that he would be put back on the leash for running off, but instead, Marlin's mother pulled something out of her pocket. It was a circular toy. It was bright orange, and she bounced it on the ground and caught it again. Rex instantly became fixated on the bright, bouncy toy and crouched down. She bounced the toy again, and Rex attempted to snatch it in midair, but missed. It was quite a slippery little thing. Then, without warning, Marlin's mother stood up tall and launched the toy across the grass away from them. Rex spun on his heels and raced across the grass, chasing after the toy. The circular toy hit the ground and boinged back up into the air. As it hurtled towards the ground again, Rex picked up his speed and launched himself in front of it. He leapt up into the air and caught it in his mouth triumphantly. Rex felt so proud of himself and ran back over to Marlin and his mother, carrying the toy proudly in his mouth. He placed it down on the ground in front of them and wagged his tail panting with pride. That was so fun. He wanted to do it again, and again, and again. In fact, Rex played with the toy, which he came to learn was called a ball, over and over again, until he became very tired. Eventually, he laid his little puppy body down at Marlon's feet and rested his eyes sleepily. Marlon's mother scooped him up into her arms and cradled him like a baby. They all walked over to the park gate and back along the streets to return home. Rex had had such a fabulous time on his first ever walk outside. So much of a good time that he was too exhausted to walk back home. As soon as they reached their house, Rex lapped up almost a whole bowl of water and then curled himself up in his comfortable bed in the kitchen. He closed his eyes and began to drift off happily, dreaming of adventures in the forest with Hector and Sonny, and looking forward to playing in the park with Marlin and their mother every day from now on.